Over the last 1,000 days of this Let's Play, I transformed this meadow into an industrial complex disguised as a snowy ski resort. And over the next 1,000 days, I moved to the other side of the mountain and built a whole host of new factories and systems, all focused around a brand new road system with real working trucks. I'll be building infinite liquid storage, biodiesel factories, applied energistics, two storage systems, hyper enchanting libraries, incredible mob farms, and even an illegal netherite factory that doesn't require going to the nether. And I do a whole bunch more than that too. And if you want to play along the FXNT Create mod pack I'm playing can be downloaded directly from CurseForge and I've also offered an updated version of this world as a world download to my patrons and the links to both of those are in the description below. Let's create. As usual at the start of each phase I add a whole bunch more mods to make life more interesting and these are the ones that I've added. Applied Energistics 2 for better inventory management, Waystones, Enlightened, the Construction Wand and Trowels Fork. But there is a problem with the Construction Wand and I think my test world's the best place to show you this. See the top tier of Construction Wand is the Infinity Wand and it just doesn't have any durability and it only costs a nether star to make. And you might think that's expensive but they're pretty easy to get hold of. And when you combine this with the Destruction Wand core which is just two diamond and pickaxes, a little bit of glass and a block of diamond, it becomes something that I think is just way too powerful for a modded let's play. Look at this. It can just dig absolutely ridiculous holes with ease. It's incredibly fast. It doesn't take any durability damage and you can just destroy and destroy and destroy as much as you want, which I think is too much. So I'm not going to be crafting that one, but I probably will grab myself a diamond wand and use this for building. I've also added waystones, which will allow you to travel from one place to another because as these let's plays as the areas get bigger and bigger and bigger and your items and further and further away from you it becomes pretty tedious just getting around so i think this is going to be a good way forward and speaking of just having items all over the place i've added applied energistics 2 with the wireless terminals add-on and this means that we can have our storage all in one place and be able to access it from anywhere in the world or in any dimension and that sounds good to me i've also added the trowels fork mod which allows you to basically place random blocks which is going to make my building a lot quicker and easier so that's good and finally i've added the enlightened mod which is an end overhaul which brings a whole bunch of new blocks and biomes including this nuclear furnace and nuclear bombs as well although i don't know how they work and i don't really know if i want nuclear bombs on my world but we'll see how that goes and if you like the sound of this mod pack you can get it from curse forge from the link in the description below and if you want to play on this world there's a world download available for the end of the last phase which you'll need to be a patron for so check out my discord anyway that's enough of all that before we get cracking on this area there's a couple of things i need to do over the last 20 episodes episodes I built this snowy ski resort town which so far doesn't have a name and during the course of those episodes I built this farm and over here we've got a couple of farm dogs one there and one just over here and I haven't named those either and this farm dog is going to be called Bandit and this farm dog is going to be called Chili and that's in reference to the Bluey series which my son absolutely loves and they were commented by Dalsarian so thank you very much for that. I hope I said your name right. And in terms of this area the snowy town is going to be called Arctic Fox Industrial Site which was commented by Gamecrafters2022 and it was mentioned by Discord as well so if there's more than one person's mentioned that then thank you very much but that's the comment I'm pulling it from. So that's that area pretty much complete now. All right, now we can get on with the new things. So back over in this new area, there's a few things I need to do. If we're going to be using Applied Energistics 2 in order to store all of the items which are currently all held at the Store and Send building, then I'm going to need to find a meteor in order to start grabbing some Surtis Quartz. And although I'm not planning on building that storage system just yet, I'm going to need a Singularity. And in order to get one of those, we need a Matter Condenser and we need to fill that with 256,000 items. And in order to find a meteor, which is where we're going to get our Surtis Quartz from, I need a Meteor Compass which means I need a charger and a normal compass and that doesn't sound too difficult to build but before we do that I actually need to go mining and so far in this let's play I've been doing all of my mining below Hill Valley the problem with mining under here though is that a lot of it is absolutely surrounded by deep dark now there's not so much of it in this area up here but I thought it might be worthwhile building a new mine over at our new area and in today's video the main goal is to build a liquid storage system and I intend to have big old areas of infinite amounts of liquids right here underneath this which all needs flattening and I think that means that's a great place to start our mine because I need to flatten it out anyway so it's time to get out the mechanical drills
And here we go, a two by two chunk area of drills. That is 32 by 32. That's a whole bunch of drills. There's a pig on it. And I've got a rope pulley right here. All I have to do is connect that to that. And it's going in the wrong direction. All I have to do is connect that to that. And now it's going to go down. This is going to destroy. Well, geez, destroy everything. It's destroyed itself. No, it's just gone invisible. Can I can I reload the chunks and see it? No, it's just going to be invisible. Right. Well, I fiddled with all of my graphic settings and I just can't. Oh, no, it's back. Or is it stopped? No, it's stopped. Why is it stopped? Why did you stop? Oh, it's this rail. Rail's immovable. It should be able to go again now. Go. There we go. And now it's invisible again. This is going to take a really long time at this speed. There we go. Maximum speed. Well, it didn't get very far down before I had to stop it because the entire thing's filled up with water and that's entirely filled up with storage. I'm not sure my four sponges are going to deal with this, but fortunately for me, there's a new mod. Just need a couple of sticks and a diamond. Get myself a diamond one. Let's just stick a whole bunch more chests on here. Now, if I stick some dirt along this wall like this, I can just place dirt blocks the whole way across here and hopefully get rid of all of that water. He's using a whole bunch of durability, though. I have got rid of all of the water. Jeez, this mod's paid for itself. I don't know what you're thinking. You've got to get rid of all of that dirt now. No, I don't. I've got drills, mate. Invisible drills. The best type. Invisible mining drills. Off you go. Well, it's definitely reached the bottom. And there's a whole bunch of silverfish down here as well. And it looks like even all of these chests must have filled up because there's blocks everywhere. And now I'm kind of stuck down here because my jetpack can't fly high up enough. Okay, so now we've got a ginormous hole. Oh, jeez, and I'm falling back down. Oh, no, I didn't really do that. <clears throat> as I was saying. Now we've got a gymungus hole. It is time to do some nining down there. That means that... Oh, oh no, I've fallen in again. No, stop it. That means I don't need any of this anymore, but I do need a way to get all of this storage back up there. Oh, and I've just crashed the server. Well, I didn't crash the server, but I did crash my client, and the error was could not send contraption spawn data. Pack it too big. So I, I, I think this is probably a little bit on the large side. Two chunks by two chunks should be a little bit more manageable. Right, let's get the items out of here and up there. Oh, no. Okay, so the next thing I've done is added a whole bunch of storage drawers at the top up here, and we've got a bubble column going all the way down to the bottom, which goes a very, very long way, and I may have spilt a bit of water, but it'll disappear. And right down at the bottom here, we've got a chest, which pushes items into there. They go across the item drain, straight up the bubble column, and there you go. They've arrived in the chests. So, all I've got to do now is get all the items out of those chests into that one. How hard could it be? There we go, and they just pop off straight onto there, and I can probably get away with doing a couple of these at once, really filling up the belt. There we go. Ah, uh, but then that happens, and then they're not going to go anywhere. We'll just do one at a time until they're empty. That's fine. All the items are going up the bubble column, so that's good. And wow, we got a bunch of stuff. We got 83,000 cobblestone, a whole bunch of deep slate, loads of dirt, 64 diamonds. I've still got plans for these drills, and I know I can't go down any further because there's deep slate there, but I can go across. All I've got to do is get these from facing that way to get them facing that way. So I believe with the mechanical bearing placed on there like that and a valve handle like this, I should should be able to turn it there we go almost let's change that to 90 degrees then there we go <laughs> now they're all facing upwards <laughs> wonderful and now i can use a sticky mechanical piston on there with a few of these extension poles and i should hopefully be able to just wind that across there like that i can oh good and now it's all the way to the other side of the room ready to start digging again Okay, here's the next part of my genius plan to get many, many things. So now our massive big drill array has a couple of chests on it with some funnels sticking out that are coming out from these conveyors, which go 32 blocks down there. There is a piston on the back of it with a 32 block shaft. And then we've got a bunch of conveyors coming down here, which should hopefully bring all of the items into these storage drawers, which are now down here. And that's for good reason. As much as I could pump them all up to the top, that was just temporary. And I need to sort out a more permanent system later on. The other advantage of having it down here is I can take all of this cobblestone and all of the cobble deep slate and I can use this little smeltery thing here to turn that into stone and deep slate because I'm always really short of both of those. It doesn't seem like many items are falling out of here, to be honest with you. It's slightly concerning. They're also not falling on the floor, so they must be going somewhere. But when it came back, it dropped a whole bunch more out. So maybe this isn't the best system in the world, but it'll do because it's only going 32 blocks and it's coming back again. Is my little cobblestone smeltery system working? Oh, I need to spin those around. There we go. Now all the cobblestone and the cobble deep slate can come out. 
out and get smelted, which might be a problem with it being on those item drains because they don't seem to be doing anything. So let's just swap those out for some belts instead and hopefully that should work now. Oh, and by the way, yeah, I completely filled all of the floor space in with glass where there's no bedrock to stop things spawning down here because even though this has got sky axis right now, this is all going to be underground soon. So coming back to this then, this kind of, this little thing on the end is a little bit pointless. I need this to be able to go a lot further and realistically, it might as well just come back and dump all of the items once it's done it. So instead of doing what we did then, let's just throw on a big old vault on the back of this. That's hopefully enough storage to do a 32 block run. And if I put these funnels on the bottom here like this, but don't glue them on, will it work when it comes back? Let's let it break a few blocks. And then when we bring it back, is it then going to deposit all of the items onto the belt? Yes, it is. Hurrah, that worked. Oh, that's good. Look at the speed of them coming out and they're all getting taken in there. Oh, that was wonderful. So with this side coming to an abrupt end because of the lava, it's time to move it to this side. So I pushed it across with another piston. I've now added a piston pole that is 128 blocks long and all I gotta do is give this thing some power and while that's going along there I'm gonna grab myself some diamonds Wow, and that's already got to there with me just digging those diamonds out this thing is speedy I think it can go faster yes it can <laughs> will you be quiet shush weakling so there we go job done all diamonds collected everything finished all of the items out we've got a whole bunch of diamonds from that we got a whole bunch of diamond deep slate ore we got a few other ores as well as well as some lapis and some zinc and some redstone so i'm gonna go back to hill valley crush a bunch of those ores and a bunch of those diamonds and see exactly what we got but for diamonds at least i've gone from having seven blocks of diamonds to now having 39 so now that we've done a bunch of mining and my backpack's nice and full it's time to get ourselves a compass and first of all we're going to need a regular compass and then we're going to need a charger so that we can turn this into a meteor compass but unfortunately this needs power it needs ae and i don't have any ae and in order to create ae i'm supposed to use one of these vibration chambers which needs fluids crystals and all that sort of stuff but of course i haven't got any of those because i need this compass to get those so how am i going to power it well that's actually quite easy back up the bubbles i go and down to the basement i need this power station and i need to use the create crafts and additions mod to create an alternator some large connectors which require gold rods and i need some wire spools oh, okay zinc sheet and while i'm at it i might as well make a few of these rods so let's have a few of the iron ones then i need an iron rod four of them four of them and four of them okay so capacitor let's make one of those let's make some copper spools and while we're at it we might as well make our gold ones as well and i think i've got everything else i need so we just need 12 auto crafters capacitor at the bottom copper spools there i sheet all around here like this a single andesite alloy at the top and an iron rod in the middle now it just needs power if i stick that there and whack one of those on there there we go power wow that's fast and there we go we'll have an alternator so back down here then i'm gonna link these together on this side here stick my alternator on there and you see that generates fe which is very useful then all i've got to do is stick that there i guess pull one of those on there and i guess another one of those can i put one on top there there we go and then link that to that then there we go that's powered now so if i stick the compass in it's it's being electrified there we go and we've got a meteorite compass fantastic oh we can power all of this stuff with create okay so this meteorite compass will point me to a meteorite but if it's spinning around like that that means i'm nowhere near close enough and there's a good reason for that if we come outside and look at the map you can see i've explored a whole bunch of area around here and of course that means those chunks have already been generated so there can't be any meteors there that means i need to disappear off outside of the areas we've already loaded and then check my compass and the shortest distance to head out out of the area that i haven't loaded is this way let's go find some new far away lands well i'm definitely loading new chunks here you can see i'm loaded in slowly but surely but my compass hasn't found anything yet so i'll keep going oh my goodness what is that horrible mosquito things oh my good a tarantula hawk ah did, you, you need to go there we go i got it did i get anything i did i've got some tattered tarantula wing and a lot of poison road runner i mean i don't want to kill it but i want to see if it drops anything come here oh it does it dropped road runner feathers right meteorite oh and it's located one. Oh, good we just need oh there it is <laughs> it's right there no oh, no it's surrounded by bad things pull out my silk touch pickaxe that's got vein mining on it let's grab all of this sky stone 
There we go. We've got a whole bunch of it. Now, this is the stuff we're after. This is bud inserters quartz, and there's four different types we need. That's just a certus quartz block, which is no good for us at all. And what we really want is the flawless ones. These flawless ones will just continue growing certus quartz forever. It's a little bit like a budding amethyst, whereas the damaged ones and the chipped ones, well, they'll break over time and they'll be no good. Now, the problem is they're a little bit similar to budding amethyst, and that is that if you try and move them with silk touch, you'll get them, but then they become slightly damaged. So then your flawless ones become slightly damaged, and that means that they will eventually break down over time and become useless. However, I have the carry-on mod, which means I can pick up anything I want and take it anywhere I want. Now, there are a few of these, and we are a long way from home, so it's going to take me a few trips back and forth to put these where I want them, but I can take these and not have to worry about them breaking. The other thing, of course, is this mysterious cube, and apparently if I break that, huh, well, without silk touch, I guess. There we go. We get the inscriber and press things, which is going to be very useful. Then, of course, then you've got the actual buds on top as well, which you can break, and when you break these, when they're small like that, you'll get dust, but when they're big, you'll get the whole cluster and you can turn that into certus quartz. So I guess now I've got a whole bunch of backwards and forwards in to do. Or have I? So you don't forget, we also added in the Waystones mod. And Waystones can be crafted with stone bricks, obsidian, and warp stones. Warp stones are just amethyst shards with ender pearls and an emerald. And I've got three ender pearls. <laughs> oh man, I've got amethyst shards, I've got three ender pearls, and I've got emeralds. But I need four for one, and we need two of them to make... Oh geez, so I need, I need like five more ender pearls. So yeah, I'm going to be going backwards and forwards, and uh, if I find any ender pearls along the way, I'll let you know. Hello, chaps. You don't happen to have any ender pearls kicking around, do you? None of you are a cleric by any chance? Okay. Well, it just so happens, peeps, that I, uh, I've got a brewing stand. If you would like to make that your brewing stand, sir, Michael. No, you don't want a job. But Michael, I, I get your job. Oh, here we go. Now all I've got to do is trade everything. Oh, geez. Gold. I can do gold. You can have all the gold you want, sir. Glass bottles? I can do that. How many do you need, sir? You're a master and you don't sell underpearls, but I, I thought that's your job. You're a useless villager. You don't deserve to have a job. Any other villagers want to uh, sell underpearls, mate? You want a job? Any of you want a job? Hey, we got a new one. You don't sell it either. Now, according to the internet, there's apparently only a very small chance that a cleric can sell underpearls, so I guess we need to give someone else a job. Do you want a job, sir? Oh, you. You want to be a cleric? Because, oh, jeez. Hang on. Let me just defend you. You better sell underpearls after I've defended you. There we go. Nice. Let's do this again. Have more gold. Now. Now they should sell at X. Yeah, there we go. Ender pearls. I'll take them all. Why not? Lovely. Oh, good job. Let's make two of them. Then we just need stone bricks. I can do this. Uh, with a little bit of obsidian, we should be able to make one, two waystones. It feels cheaty, but it feels good. Right, now I'm going to take this block back over there. Hmm, I'm equidistant between both. But I'll go home, put a waystone there, and then come back, put a waystone over there, and then I can do the rest of them. And for now, I think I'll probably grow this quartz in this hotel, since we've got a bit a room in here. Thankfully, I thought ahead and didn't bother decorating hardly any of the rooms. And I think we'll put it up here somewhere for now. Now, what I'm going to do is stick this waystone down here and we're going to name it Hummingbird Hotel. And now I'm going to fly all the way back to the Meteor and put another one there. And here we are back at the Meteor. So let's get this waypoint put down here. We'll call it Meteor. That's done. Let's grab one of these. Another flawless one, please. And then hopefully if I click on that... Oh, it just puts it next. Can I... Oh, please tell me I can actually... But I can I can do that, but I I can't take it with me. Oh man, what's the point? <laughs> Right, okay, fine. Well, there's just one left now, as well as a skeleton. Hey, get away from me, certain quartz you. So I might as well see if I can actually take this back. I can, all oh, that's good news. And I guess then uh, I might as well smash these two little budding bits off here and do my last trip back. It didn't take too long. And here we go. The last little one is coming through, and I've put these apart like that so they can grow a little bit better. We've got three flawless ones, which are fantastic. They'll just keep growing. And then we've got flawed one, a damaged one, and two chipped ones. And I believe we can fix them up, but I don't think you can ever get them back to flawless again. So these are going to be my favorite ones, but I kind of want to go out and get another meteor now and do even more. Before I do that, though, I'm going to take this other waystone back to Hill Valley because I'm always going back there and then I can use that as a teleport location. But then considering I'm now working in that direction, I should probably have one over there too. So I need one more render pearl. And we'll just pop that there. Rename that to Hill Valley. Wonderful. Lovely. And have I got any ender pearls in here anywhere? No. 
and sadly, none of my morons are a cleric. So I think I might go back to that meteor site and drag that villager back here and pop them in here as well as my own personal little ender pearl supply. So I've got a bit of travelling ahead of me. And we'll give ourselves a head start by going straight to the Hubbingbird Hotel. And now, where was that villager? You come in with me. Let's go. Oh, hang on, before we, before we go, I want that. That's mine. Thank you. Now we can go. Why are villagers so small when you carry them? Okay, new villager. You can go in there. You can have your workstation back. And I should probably give you a bed. There you go. Just like home. Give me some more of those. Thank you very much. 16. I'll take them. And for now, I think we'll just pop this down at this station because there isn't really anywhere else for it to go. We'll call this new area. I would say names in the comments, please, but we don't really know what all of this is going to be yet, so uh, you might want to hold off on that. So now we've got our lovely quartz growing. I'm going to go off, find myself another meteor, add more to this collection, and I think... Oh, this is so much easier. Life's so much better now. Hopping back to Hill Valley. Just hopping here. Hopping. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> Down in my mines, I came across a bunch of geodes, and I did put one on the map, but I don't think that's the one I'm going for. Aha, here it is. And now what I can do is I'm going to take all of these clusters back to that hotel as well and then we can grow amethyst fortune pickaxe with vein mining that should make this really easy i don't think i need all of them but a handful would be nice and there we go we've now got eight amethyst geodes over at the hotel and i can even automate this with create but i don't think we'll do that in here and look they're already growing that's fantastic now i can head off and find another meteor i have no idea how these seals got here because the water's all the way down there unless these are those flying seals that you've never heard of we have a location and i guess it's going to be underwater it apparently it is here apparently that's not ideal oh there it is how do you get underwater meteor right now what have we got here chipped damaged floor damaged certus damaged oh geez not a single flawless one so i guess from this one i'll just take that and i'll just mine all of these no point in flying all the way back home with these right okay next meteor right then oh i have located one and we've got one this time so i'll take that one back to the hotel grab all of this sky stone and then maybe go find another one well i've been flying a while and we have located another one i'm all the way over here and it looks like it's dead ahead there it is well that's convenient it's pretty much already open oh it's surrounded by hoglins excuse me why are you not turned into zombified hoglins oh there we go Come. Excellent. Two more chip flawless ones. That means we'll have six in total, and I think that's plenty for a little farm. And here we go, the very last one. That is one, two, three, four, five, six flawless ones altogether. A bunch of flawed ones, and we're already growing a whole bunch of stuff on here. So I better get them set up as a little farm quick. And I'm going to build it down here in the basement underneath the snowy area, just temporarily until we can get something better set up at our new area. So a Certus Quartz farm then, or an Amethyst farm. This is my creative test world, and this is what I've come up with. We've got our flawless Spurtus blocks there with some smart observers behind with redstone links on corresponding to some drills with some sequence gear shifts above and each one of these is set to turn to 360 twice because that's how long it needs to actually break the Spurtus quartz. And if we put the random tick speed up to let's say a thousand we should see this grow in very slowly. Go a bit more. Five thousand. There you go. You can see as soon as it grows full size it breaks it and the hopper mine carts underneath don't do it. Oh, it does, oh you don't get it. Huh. I guess drills don't make it drop the item back to the drawing board okay plan b and this is a little bit more compact and this time we're using pistons instead so now if one of these grows it should ex oh <coughs> yes, just stick those on the back of those there like that there we go so now when the certus quartz grows what i didn't no, 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 what Hmm, try some removable blocks. Now when the Certus Quartz grow, nothing. Oh, okay, I'm not deterred. Okay, this system requires no power at all. We're just using normal pistons and normal redstone signals, but unfortunately, again, it's still not dropping the items, which is weird, because if I do it with Amethyst, you get the shard. So I just assumed the same thing would happen with Certus. And checking this with the random tick speed turned up. Yeah, there, there you go. The hopper mine carts are getting the stuff and they are going in there. And whilst it's only using one side of the block, we which is a little bit inefficient. Over time, you'd end up with a whole bunch of it. But it really doesn't like doing it with the Certus stuff. It just breaks it and it doesn't go anywhere. But I'm not deterred. Here we go. I think I finally got it. So what we've got now is a whole bunch of deployers and each one of these is holding a pickaxe, which we can put on breaking on. And now when one of them gets a signal, it's going to break the Certus quartz. And the good thing about this is the deployer actually picks it up, drops it through the chute and it goes in there. So let's take all of that out of there. Turn on the random tick speed and let's see this in action. So I think this little system should be absolutely fine and pretty easy to make on the server. 
that should be the Surtis Quartz farm fully in now. I think this should work. I haven't enchanted any of the pickaxes yet, but they should last a reasonable amount of time. But just to check, test it, let's throw one of those down. And it, it, it didn't fully break. Why did you not fully break it? Uh, okay, try that one. That one worked. That one worked. Anyway, we've got a whole bunch of Surtis Quartz in there now. So we'll see how it goes. And if I need to modify it in the future, I can do. Right now, though, I'm going to do an Amethyst farm, which is pretty much the same as this one. And there's the Amethyst farm done as well with the Smart Observers, the normal pistons, the redstone links, the hopper minecarts, the hoppers, and that produces amethyst shards. So after a whole bunch more mining and a full evening of the server running with these things, we ended up with not very much. A reasonable amount, but not loads. And there's a reason for that. In terms of Amethyst, we've got what could be expected. This has actually been running fine, but because it's not using Fortune, we're only getting a small amount, but we only need a small amount. Whereas this, I've had to replace all of the sequential gear shifts with clutches and put inverted filters on there because when I came back to it this morning, they were all fully grown and they hadn't broken properly. I've also taken the time to enchant all of these pickaxes now with Fortune 3 on unbreaking. So we're getting even more drops and I've got a nice taste bunch of diamonds now on top of what we got already so we're doing well which must mean it's time to teleport over to the new area and i'm going to start by sorting this landscape out around here flattening it properly and then building a big old liquid storage system and i'm going to use a lot of this space down here i started by silt touching the grass to top up my grass supplies and then removed the water elevator filling it with sand and destroying the glass and because i no longer had a way to get out of the mine i added another waystone down there so that i could teleport up and down easily next i grabbed my my main mining contraption to get rid of the rest of dirt and stone at the top of the hole and then I lowered the area down one block with the power drill and got rid of the rest of the dirt. I leveled the area one block below that with the construction one sent to fill with dirt and then filled the top level with gravel again with the construction one. Back down at the bottom of the hole I set up a system to cut deep slate and cobble deep slate into different variants and I waited a long time for them to process but eventually I was able to build a ring around the lower area of the mine using deep slate bricks and then use the construction one with the random setting turned on to build up the sides of the hole. After placing thousands of blocks and repairing the construction one several times the sides of the hole were filled in so then i created a brand new mining contraption to dig out a new hole for an elevator just to one side i then decorated the sides of that all the way to the top again and finally added a trim around the edge of the giant hole with the deep slate pillar block and that brings us to now well, that's probably enough building for now. We've got a giant hole as we had before, but now it's decorated thanks to the construction wand. And I have another hole here, which is going to be for an elevator. But before we carry on, I want to go and check on our quartz situation. And now that I've got a whole bunch of amethyst and some certus quartz too, there's a couple of things I want to build. And one of those is the growth accelerator, but that will make these grow a whole bunch quicker. The other thing I want to build is the matter condenser. It's just iron, glass, and a little bit of fluix dust, which we get from crushing fluix crystal, or we can mill it and get the same amount and we get that from submerging charged surface quartz redstone and nether quartz in any type of fluid or we can use a tesla core which is from one of the create add-ons or we can use a charger and we've already got a charger so i guess it kind of makes sense to do it in there so let's just whack a load of those in i can only do one at once oh it's quick though there we go that should be plenty so i just need some redstone some quartz and some water we'll have a little infinite water source there 16 of those 16 of those and 16 of those and we we should see some sparking going on. Yeah, well, there we go. We got a whole bunch of it. Nice. 32. Now, I wonder, if I stick a barrel and a hopper there and our charger on top of that, can I then feed this quartz in through this? I can. And then when it does it, does it go into the it doors? Oh, good. So I can automate that. And now I'm going to go and crush those fluids crystals. Throw all of those into there and they should all get crushed and they should go down there. Excellent. So let's craft ourselves a matter condenser. And this is also going to require power. Okay, let's just stick a hopper in there. There, throw in some cobblestone and it is going in but it's it's not doing anything it's just deleting it at this moment in time which is not ideal okay before we get carried away with that then i'm going to make one of these energy acceptors and in order to do that i need quartz glass which means i need the dust and some more glass and stick those clusters in there and see what happens nothing at all in that case then can i crush these ah they'll go they'll go in yes ah there we go there we go We've got half a stack of that now and if i put the energy acceptor there 
and then connect those device online so hopefully this is powered now but I, I can't tell ah to make a singularity it requires that you put a storage component in the top slot of the condenser right okay so we need a storage component jeez and how do I make those oh no I need logic processors but I'm not ready to do that yet oh jeez that means I need an inscriber and old oh, printed silicon and then I've got a oh, jeez grab an inscriber then pop that there it's doing it thank you very much furnace does coal silicon silicon press silicon Fancy printed silicon. Those two in there. Bit of redstone. Kind of one of them. This is a lot more advanced than I was planning on being today. Oh, and I don't need the charge stuff. I can just use the normal stuff. Oh, that's handy. Ah, there we go. That's only a 1K storage component. And it's going to go up to 8,192. And this needs 256,000. Right, we've now got 8,192 stored energy. If I put cobblestone in there now, it goes in, but it did nothing. Oh no, I, I've just made a whole bunch of matter balls. Yeah, I think I need a bigger one of those. I think I need a 256k one. And that's going to be really expensive. Give me a minute. Well, I did my best, but my best isn't good enough. I've made a whole bunch of these things and I've even got one 64k storage component and two more 16s, but I need three of these to make 128 and then three of those to make a 256, which is a whole bunch more than I can actually produce because I've pretty much run out of quartz, which means I'm now waiting on this thing. These growth accelerators then, surely they can't be too difficult to make and see what happens with one. But now we've got none of the purple stuff left at all, but we've got one growth accelerator. It also can make plants grow faster as well it's online and that one's already broken and that's given us six of those which means we can probably build another one did that just go again it did oh man now we're in the money Woohoo! it's exciting boring no it's not it's very exciting boring no shut up you're boring now we've got enough of these to power this entire thing now we are powered. We're growing quartz a whole bunch faster now. This is amazing. Well, while these are growing nice and quickly now, that means that very, very soon I'll be able to make up the rest of all of these things that we need. Because right now, I need to get that building done. So in order to get started, I need to build a building around this hole. And there's a few things that I need to put inside at various levels. And I can't really do the elevator until I've got the building. So I guess I'm going to do the building first. But before I get started with that, I'm going to need a whole bunch of concrete. So I'm going to create a machine that's going to do it for me now this might not be the fastest system in the world but it's working we're getting concrete coming through and these are the colors i've chosen cyan and light gray and i'm using the fans we're already using from there to save some money which is lovely not money well materials you know what i mean su more than anything su mate i beg your pardon so I started by crafting up a whole bunch of tough and concrete variants, covering up the giant hole with variants of tough using the construction wand as a foundation for the building. The building I'm using for inspiration is quite a simple design, so it shouldn't be too difficult to emulate in Minecraft, and I started with a light grey concrete, building up the first corner and then the front wall. With a combination of cyan and light grey concrete, as well as quartz for the white trims, getting the front wall in place with the help of the construction wand was pretty easy, until I got to the big windows, which I made a mess of using framed blocks, more quartz and some grey stained glass. But I'll come back to those later. Next, it was time to move around to the side of the building that would be used for loading and unloading into the warehouse. Again, taking heavy inspiration from the photos I had, I put everything in place and then continued to the final two sides of the building, which were very similar to the first one. With all of the walls now in, I ripped out the large window, simplified the design, and then moved on to the roof, which again I kept simple, using industrial metal plating with zinc lamps around the edges and a handful of fent blocks, girders, and mechanical fans to give it a little detail. And that brings us to now. Well, I was nearly done, but then I decided that it was a really good idea to turn this into an accidental mob spawner by putting no lights in there and then a creeper went off which isn't exactly ideal but i suppose that means i've got the opportunity to build it again stop it Chew. I need to get in, guys. Can you, like, just despawn or something, please? Well, anyway, aside from the fact that we can't get inside, I would consider that pretty much done. And I honestly don't think I've done too much of a bad job, although it is absolutely massive compared to what I actually need. And considering this is going to be a liquid storage building, I'm not actually going to be storing any of the liquids inside. Obviously, the outside leaves a lot to be desired, and around here we've got some access doors for some more vehicles, a little bit like what we've got over at the store and send. But obviously, this one's going to be for liquid and not items. So I've got a whole bunch of work to do outside for the yard area, but I really need to get inside and sort that out area too. But yeah, chopping in torches, anyone? Okay, let's... Oh my goodness, how many creepers is that? That's so many creepers. 
Do you know, I think I think just despawning them, despawning them. Ah, no, let me go. If I TP away back over to the Hummingbird Hotel and then just fly back, hopefully they'll despawn by the time I get there. And look, it's empty now. All of the visitors except one have disappeared, which is fantastic. So you can go. Thank you very much. And I'm just going to spam a whole bunch of torches around here for now until I've actually got some internals in this place and we can light it up properly. Oh, that should be plenty. But before we get carried away with the internals, let's go check on our Certus Quartz. You've just been back there. Why, did, why didn't you check it then? I don't know. Shut up. Amazing Quartz Machine. What do you have for me? They don't look like they're, they're offline. Huh. Why are they offline? But it was online when I left. How does this always happen to me? Do we need more power, mate? Okay, in that case, let's get rid of that and get rid of that. And let's put a big one of those on there instead. And let's just do that and that. Come back online. Are they going to stay online? They do seem to be staying online this time. Maybe we could speed this up, generate even more power. And now it's generating 360 instead of 96. Right, reconnect that. And it's still, it's only using 96, but it's got plenty. So I'm going to assume that that's going to be all right. Do a little bit of AFK over here and see how it goes. Well, that's a little bit more like it. Right, let's take a bunch of these and stick them in that system that, I, oh geez, I broke it in a... And there we go, that's going to sit and make this lovely charged Certus Quartz for us, and then at some point later on I can get back to making our stupid thing that I can't remember the name of. Right, anyway, more building. Let's hope this thing actually continues to run while I'm away this time. So the first thing I'm going to do while I'm over here is delete a bunch of my hard work and tear out most of the floor in order to put in a more suitable floor for a warehouse. And we're going to do that from this point here, I think would be a good line to make all of that warehouse and all of that, like, obviously stuff. Right, now we've got that in there, now I need a wall. And now we've got a decent sized factory area. Probably needs a ceiling and some girders and some other factory looking stuff, a little bit like this picture. Well, I don't think that's a bad start to this building. It's kind of what I was going for. We've got a couple of little offices at either side of the building with nothing in them yet and a little platform above that to store things. And they've got some industrial line catwalk railing round. We've got some lights. We've got girders. We've got posts. Pretty much everything we need. And the Create Deco Pack has these industrial line catwalks. And I really like them. But the problem is they're totally bugged out on this pack. So when I select it and don't press any buttons at all, they just spam wherever I'm looking, which is not ideal. Very difficult to build with and then if i try and get them back they just vanish i don't get the items back and yeah it's just a big problem really so unfortunately even though they're one of the best looking things in the create add-ons packs i can't use them right that's this side of the building done anyway apart from fluid tanks and things like that and systems to load and unload lorries full of fluids i guess but that's done for now next we need to think about how we're going to do all of these offices and this big hole and all of that sort of stuff but before we move on to a more building i need to come check on that Certus Quartz again because I'm a little bit concerned that this thing's going to start overflowing. Yeah, see, we're not far off. I could do with some more chests on here, really. And then to make sure we collect them all together so that I don't have to look through each chest, we'll just put a line of hoppers under those ones and then everything can filter into there. And now I've got all of this quartz. There's absolutely no reason I can't make the rest of those things that I need to make. Actually, there is one reason. I've only got four pieces of glowstone dust left and I need quite a lot of it for these. Now, I'd very much like a glowstone farm and all of that is is night vision and cinder flower. And night vision is just golden carrots and awkward potion and golden carrots are just carrots and gold. And I've got all of those things. But I probably haven't got time in this episode to make one of those. So I guess I'm going to be going back to the nether very soon to get some more glowstone. And when I say very soon, I mean now. And I could go through this convenient little... Oh no, because it's blocked on the other side. I can't go through that convenient little portal. In fact, I don't have a convenient portal at all. The only way I've got to go to the nether, it's either that one down there we just saw or the one over underneath the hot springs up here. I could really do with one of those at some point. For now, though, we'll use the hot springs. And here we are, back in the nether, ready to go get some glowstone. So I ventured out into the nether with my vein mining fortune three pickaxe, grabbing as much glowstone dust as I could find. On my way, I encountered a few mobs, getting an achievement for accidentally firing a projectile back at a gas, getting harassed by several blood sucking nether mosquitoes, and even landing in a piglin village, triggering the learned piglins achievement. Ignoring the angry mob and venturing on, I also achieved the hot tourist destinations achievement by having visited every nether biome, continuing to collect vast quantities of glowstone dust, as well as constantly being attacked by swarms of mosquitoes. A little later on, I discovered a skeleton camp with skeletons and wither skeletons and a handful of chests and barrels containing mostly junk. But I did grab myself a piglin head, at which point I thought heading back home seemed like a good idea, so I grabbed a few more stacks of glowstone dust on my way back and eventually arrived safely back at the nether lava farm. Well, I think nearly 7,000 should do it. 
Well, it's been another night on the server, and unfortunately our machine has completely stopped running again. But that's a good thing. But it's also because I'm an idiot. See, I put all of these chests and hoppers on the back of here. I don't know why I didn't just put in a storage drawer. And now we've got so many chests of this certain quartz that the deploys can no longer activate because they're full of items. So that's a very good thing. Yeah, I, I got all that to sort out, and then I'm going to make this thing. And then, oh, geez, I'll be with you in a minute. Good news, everyone. After taking a little bit of time to create a little room inside of this base, basement area because a tidy room is a tidy mind i was able to crack on and make all of the things that we needed to make in order to make a 256k me storage component which is what we need for our singularity and now i can finally craft it it's only taken me quite a long time and then i can put that onto singularity mode put that in there and now i believe all we gotta do is fill that up with 256,000 items and we'll get a singularity but what's a singularity foxy no -tell? Don't worry about it. We'll explain that later on, but not today. For this, we're going to need a smart chute, a rather large container with a few storage upgrades in it, and then I guess all of the things that I don't mind losing. Starting with all of my cobblestone. Just a few, 21,000 cobblestone, and it is going in. This is good news, very quickly. Well, now that's all of my cobblestone gone, I think cobble deep slate should be next. So let's just throw it all on the floor, just like that. And let's throw all of that in there. And I think I can get rid of all of this netherrack too. And that's the cobblestone nearly all gone. I've only just filled those boxes up. There we go, cobblestone's gone. Let's put in the cobble deep slate. And how are we getting on? 22,000 of 250, it's gonna take a long time. Pretty sure if I take these stories draws over to my new mine here where we can probably fill them up all over again but before i do that i'm going to stick a new waystone down here called temporary ae2 so i can get in here nice and quickly i'm going to wait for that to run out because it's nearly gone oh we've got a red line now and now i'm going to stick the nether rack on and go and get some more Seventy-seven thousand stone 68,000 deep slate does that mean i've oh all of my cobble's been smelted huh maybe i should do some more digging time to get the machine back out again send it that way or that way or that i don't, I'm just gonna dig. Um, what? Um, um, what? I'm not 100% sure how that happened. What's that? No, oh my, there's so many noises. I don't know what they are. That's another one just woken up. Oh my goodness, what's that? There's another one in there. How are they? How? How are they go? Go away, stop it. Why are you clapping? I can't, I can't reach him. I need my bow. And then your little clappy, smelly thing. Let's get rid of you. Who's gone? Oh, no, he's not, he's there. Stop it. Well, you're dead. What about that warden? What are we going to do about those? Oh, no. Dundag. Stop it. Oh, jeez, he's strong. Oh, jeez, he's very strong. Okay, that was a bad idea. Where's my teleporter? And uh, just um, up away. Oh, man. I can't believe that. I'll just be really brave and wait for them to despawn. That's the brave thing to do, honest. I just I just want to make a singularity, mate. Shut up. Shut up. You're not helping. Got him. He's there. He's going the other way. Where's the one that was down? There was another one. Has he gone to sleep? The other one. I'm only dealing with one. I need him to go a bit further that way. And then I can drill him to death. Hey, dude. Hey, come here, dude. Don't shoot me. Did he stay over there? No, he's following me. No, go the other way, you moron. Ow! I shoot you. But I think I'm high enough up that he can't get me with his range attack. So this could be the way we get rid of him. There we go. Oh, I can change my zoom level. What? Do you need to see all the way over there? No problem, mate. I had no idea. Right, anyway. Jeez, he's dead. And good news is that we can bring this machine back now because it's finished down there. And get all of those tasty drops. Just remember, don't do time lapses of drilling machines when you're drilling through the deep dark. It's not a good idea. The thing I don't understand is that we weren't near anywhere near a deep, like an actual city to have screechers. I didn't think you got screechers unless you were in an ancient city. That's just really weird. Ooh, what's not weird, though? It's all of the new diamonds. Okay, I didn't do anything this time. I was just setting another one up and another warden's come. I think those screechers, when they clap, make wardens appear because there was just a whole bunch of them clapping. But it's in the same place. See that clapping there? Stop it. Stop clapping. Very irritating. Was that him going to sleep? Yes, it was. Oh, thank goodness. Anyway, back to what I was doing. I was about to connect up our next one to go over to the next section. Go. And hopefully we're not going to get any wardens this time. 
Stop it! Shut up! You'll wake him up again! Go away! Stop clapping! You do need to get stopped! Don't! Oh, it is you clapping that does it! No! Stop it! Go away! Oh, jeez! You're making finding a singularity very difficult, sir. Huh, another one dead. Good. So in order to get a little bit more cobblestone, I thought I'd come over to my cobble generators and fill up some of these storage boxes. And apparently this is all full. And we're getting a few items in here that are not getting collected by the looks of things. Our train should be collecting these. I guess the other storage area is full. Oh, yes. Every single one of my storage tanks at my new storage facility is full. So we really need this new storage system in place to be able to take all of these things. But I need to do this one first. And I really need that singularity. So let's chuck on all of this new cobble deep slate you've got and see how much we've now got. We've got 84,000 in there. We're getting another 80,000 there. That's going to be 160,000, which means we're only going to be 100,000 short. Now, I've probably got that many in my backpack if I really wanted to speed this thing up. But realistically, we're not even ready for me to have that because the storage building that the new AE2 storage is going to be going in is this one here, which doesn't even... I did, haven't even started that yet. So I need to get this one finished, get all of the exterior done, and get all the liquid stuff done and then in the next episode hopefully we can start on that old oh, geez i've got i want it i need it now but i haven't i'm not ready so i guess i'm going to start with the new elevator that's going in here which will take us down to all of those lovely wardens oh joy and for this i'm going to need an elevator pulley i'm going to need a whole bunch of elevator contacts but apparently the recipe for those aren't working oh of course it's a redstone contact i need but i got rid of all my cobble <laughs> Oh, don't worry, guys. I've got an idea. Not worried. You are. You. I can tell how worried you all are. Desperately worried about my lack of cobblestone situation, but don't. And fear not. I have a plan. If I look in these storage vaults, where all of our storage is, there should be a whole bunch of cobble in all of these. So if I put that on there and a cobblestone filter in there and flip that round, here we go. I just have to stand here for a minute and grab ourselves a load of cobblestone. And if I was being really smart, I'd throw another one of these down here with another cobblestone filter and a chute underneath, and I'd start filling up another storage chest with cobble so I can put it into my machine. And if I was really, really smart, I'd double this up or even triple this up and grab as much as I can because there's a ridiculous amount of cobblestone in this one as well. Okay, so I've just about got the elevator in place now. It's decorated. There's a hole in the floor, but don't worry about that. We've got some controls there and I've even put a trap door in so we can get above it to get to the elevator pulley. But of course, that's going to need power. Also, there's a little bit of a window here. That's because that's going to be a second floor and I've also put in a con contact all the way down at the bottom of the mine so that it will know that that's a level. I also need to put... Wow, no, I, don't, I guess I can show you better this way. It's just there. What I was going to say is that I also need to put a contact in at this level up here. And if it's going to come up to this level here, then that elevator pulley is going to be in the way. And the contact's going to need to go, I believe, right there. Just like that. So if that elevator's going to come all the way up to this level here, the top of it's actually going to be flush with this, which means we need the elevator pulley through the roof, which is not really ideal deal but it's fine because we can cover it up but we do need power to it and currently there's absolutely no power to this area at all i don't have a power station we haven't got any lava we've not got any way of making power other than water wheels and a handful of coal that i've got in my backpack and that's really what this liquid storage system is going to be about if i haven't mentioned it already the idea here is that this is going to be an area that trains can come in and not only deliver liquids but also pick it up and take it other places as well and while we will have tanks of liquid in this facility here it's all going to be being pumped in from new floors that i'm going to be building underground below this elevator where we're going to have infinite amounts of them and the first one's going to be lava and then i want to do biodiesel because it turns out running these blaze burners on biodiesel gives them the same amount of power as a blaze cake which is better than lava so that's on my to-do list as well and it's weird because all of these little strings that i'm trying to pull together all kind of require each other and getting them in the right order is pretty difficult oh a phantom Hello, mate. Finally, you've arrived in my world. It must have been a while since I've slept. So let's get rid of you by having a snooze, mate. And if we're going to be having temporary power, I might as well just make something really ugly on the roof of this building. Why don't you build it inside the building? And then it can be self-sufficient. That's not a bad idea. You're a genius. Why is there still stars? No stars, blocks in the distance. No, it's stars, mate. Blocks. Oh, yeah. Okay, then if we're going to be having power inside the building that's slightly less temporary, then this building's going to need rooms and new floors. And how have I made that window not have any middle bit on it? I guess that's just going to be... A bit... Okay, this can be like a showroomy bit at the beginning then, and then we'll 
split it off maybe at this level here, and then that can be a top. I look, I, I'll be back in a minute. And a little while later, I've done some decorating. Well, I haven't done any decorating. I've just put wall ceiling and lights in, and floors, and doors, and stairs. If we go through here, you can see this little corner building here has a staircase up to the second floor, and the second floor has a nice carpeted floor. It's got a big room here looking out over there. If we go through here, we've got a little hallway that leads to the elevator, which needs sorting. We've got this room, which looks over the warehouse area there, and coming all the way through, through this door here, through this little hallway here, and through there, we've got a little overlook over that showroomy bit that I said about before. And then we've got a similar sort of staircase on the other side that takes us straight back downstairs onto the bottom floor again, back into this showroom area, which I think will be perfect for some water wheels right now. And the bottom floor is pretty much identical to the top floor, except for the fact that the flooring is not carpet, it's this polished calcite. We've got another little room here opposite the elevator that allows you to go into the factory area, I mean the warehouse, and then these double doors just lead you back into the main sort of, I guess, reception area. And while I was doing all of that, I was also siphoning off a whole bunch of cobblestone from all of these machines, and we've got uh, absolutely tons of the stuff by the looks of things. There's 127,000 just in that one. So we've got way more than we need to make ourselves a singularity. And that means that there is absolutely no cobblestone in any of these machines anymore. And that'll hopefully mean that some of the tanks have got a little bit more spe- oh. So I'm going to dismantle all of these bits, take these boxes, and start shoving them all in there. And that was probably a bad one to choose because it's not got as much in. And while all of that's filtering in there, I'm going to try and combine some of these because, well, it's daft that they're all separated. So if I put that there and that one there, and grab myself another smart shoot and put that there, they should all go into there. And there we go, that's one down. And we're only about 60,000 away now. And while those other cobblestones empty out, I thought I'd come in here and have a look at putting in some power, but unfortunately, these water wheels will only produce 4,000 SU, which is probably not going to be enough for the things I need over here. And I think realistically, we'll have a boiler in here at some point, using some of the lava that we're storing below. But right now, I don't have any spare lava to chuck into it. What I do have over here, though, in quite ridiculous quantities, a sweet bet No, not sweet berries. Where have they all gone? They must have gone in one of these. Blaze cakes. We've got 640 in there. And I know we've probably got about 6,000 of those altogether kicking about somewhere. And even though blaze cakes only last 160 seconds in a blaze burner. That's over 250 hours worth. Scratch that, we've got exactly 8,192, which is a very strange number because that's divisible by eight, which if you're into that sort of thing, you, 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 well, you know what it means. The good news is that's 364 hours worth. I'm gonna be running on hotcakes, mate. Blaze cakes, yep, that's what I said. No, you didn't, you said hotcakes. Same difference, mate. Well, I'm just about here with this big old steam engine. I've got some blaze cakes here. We've got a mechanical arm to take them and put them in the blaze. Burners. We've got some water wheels here to power the mechanical arm and also the pumps to take the water out of the thing that's powering the water wheels to put it in the boiler so that it actually works. If I just knock that down a bit, there we go. Everything should start kicking in and we should start seeing some very blue looking blazes. Whoa, oh, geez, too, too much power. A level 11? Okay, so we're being a little bit inefficient here. We've got way too much heat going on, not enough water and not enough size. Okay, so size now matches the water. We've just got too much heat. So what I can do, I think, is just get rid of a blaze burner and just bring that heat down a little bit to match. Okay, so now it's just the size which is slightly too big. That's close enough. A level 13 boiler running off blaze cakes. And you know how I said it was going to last us 360 hours? Well, that was for one blaze burner. And now we've got six, which means it's only going to last 60 hours. And I really don't need 213,000 stress units. I think I might make it a bit smaller. There we go. Level four boiler, 65,000, two blaze burners. That's over 180 hours worth of running time, which is more than 500 in-game days. So now that that's got power, I believe I just click on it. Oh, I haven't glued all of this together. So hopefully now it's going to be able to do it. There we go. It's attached. We want it on full speed. For an elevator, you'll die. No, 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 I won't. I'm invincible. You're not. Yeah, I am. I haven't died yet. You're having the game. Not in real life, mate. Because you haven't died in real life doesn't mean you're invisible. Pretty sure that's what it means. Okay, then. Let's try this elevator now. Second floor. Very quick. First floor. Very quick. Ground floor. All the way to the bottom. Oh, jeez. I am taking damage. It's fine. We're going down very quickly. And there we go. Oh, that didn't take too long at all. I just need to sort out some sort of step system. 
system to make that work better. And there we go. That's the floor's name. So that means if I go back in here, we've got ground floor, first floor, and mine. And I put that minus 10 because we are going to have floors in between, and I don't know what number they're going to be. What I would also like is to have a call button on them. And in order to do that, I need to get redstone links onto those contacts, which means perilously going across here again, throwing that in there, putting that, sticking that on there, put it in receive mode, and then trying to find a way to actually get down so I can do the filters. Okay, with that redstone link there in receive mode, and this one behind the wall here, I should be able to press that button, and there we go. It calls the elevator for me. That's amazing. But before I start fiddling even more with the elevators, I want to get this singularity finished, and we've got nearly 200,000 in there, and we've got 100,000 there, so we've definitely got enough for more because we only need 60,000 in there. So let's grab that, put it on there, and watch this thing fill up. And there it is, the singularity. And we're even storing more stuff now because I haven't taken the box off. I can't believe it. We made a singularity. But it's totally useless because I'm in no way prepared to even use it because it's going in that building there that doesn't exist. Kind of just feels like a bit of a waste of time, really. So I think I'm just going to craft this incredibly small TNT. Come to an area that I don't care about. Put that there. And I'm going to blow it up with this ender dust they accidentally crafted. So I don't need it anymore. It was a waste of time, wasn't it? Oh. What did I get? Two quantum entangled singularities. Perfect. Yeah, well, I wasn't really going to blow it up, guys. What you have to do, you have to blow up a singularity in order to get a quantum entangled singularity. And that means that then when I've got my storage system, I'll be able to talk to it in any direction, in any place in the world. So now that I've finished faffing about with singularities, it's time to get the real work done in here. Because this video is running on a bit. Okay, so a little while later on, I have now got two basements. The first basement is ready for lava, but at the moment it's a mob farm. Uh, it's, a, it's actually a very good mob farm, so that's something to think about. And the second basement is exactly the same, and this is going to be ready for biodiesel. Infinite biodiesel. And again, this, this is also a fairly successful mob farm. And now I've just got to get that liquid here, and, and rather than pumping it round on trains, I thought it might be a good idea to make a fuel line all the way from here, which is here on the map, through this incredibly long mountain range on the map, over to our power station, which is linked to our infinite lava, which is just under here. Now that's going to need a whole lot of pumps and a whole lot of pipe, but I think that's going to be easier than trying to set up either another nether-based infinite lava system or ferrying it over with trains because that's going to take a very long time and I want this to fill up relatively quickly for no particular reason other than I want to get this video finished. So I guess I should probably consider putting some pipes in here and then doing a whole bunch of digging. Well, the pipeline is now all in, and we've now got this hose pulley with three pumps behind it, ideally pumping this stuff in as fast as possible. But even though it's coming at full speed from an infinite lava source, it's still very slow. And while that is filling up, I suppose it'd be a good opportunity for me to spend some time actually working on the outside of this building and getting some, well, outside stuff done, I suppose. <laughs> Well, it was a very big space to fill in, and I don't think I've done too much of a bad job. We've got a whole bunch of tarmac going around the whole thing. We've got a cross in here, which isn't finished, that comes across the train tracks. And then we've got a few parking spaces, some railings around here, some lights, so it's not too mob infested, a container and some pumping things, because at some point or other, we will have a train stop in here to be offloading some fluid, and it pretty much just continues around the outside. Now, I've got these bays here for the lorries to pull up and collect and drop off whatever they need to inside of the actual factory and that's pretty much it. Lots and lots of chain link fences, lots and lots of this mud and deep slate and blackstone, but it was actually pretty easy to do with that construction one. So yeah, it didn't take too long at all, really. Speaking of things taking too long, the lava's still not done. And it might not look like it, but it's actually come a very long way. Sneaking into Cheeky Free Cam, we've got six levels of this almost complete already, and there's only 12 levels to actually fill in, so we're pretty much halfway there. That's not too bad at all. I have done some 
some work off camera. If we go in the back door here into the little warehouse area, we've got a whole bunch of fluid tanks and these all link to portable fluid interfaces to these doors where eventually trucks are going to reverse up. These garage doors are going to automatically open and the fluids are either going to come in or they're going to go out. But at the moment, it's very manual because I don't have any trucks yet. The other thing I've done in this building, except for not doing the interiors, is to put sliding doors on all of the lifts. If I send this lift to another floor, the door outside it now closes so that I can't fall down the lift shaft. But if I press the button, it's going to come back and that sliding door will open. And that means that if I'm on a floor that the lift isn't at, yeah, I'm, not, I'm just not going to fall down the lift shaft. And the other thing that I've done in the sub basement is to finally fill in all of the lava here. So we've got an infinite lava source, which is great because we're going to be using that for all sorts of things. We're also going to be using the thing that isn't on the floor below, which is our infinite diesel source. But at the moment, that's just a mob farm because I'm not producing any biodiesel yet. But eventually we'll be able to use that in place of our lava to power our furnaces. And when I say furnaces, what I mean is our boiler steam engine things, which this one is now 100% running off lava instead of blaze cakes. And it's working nicely. The only downside to these sliding doors is that they are a little bit visible from the other side, but as long as you don't look at that, it'll be fine. And that means that that's pretty much it for this building for the time being. There's really not much point in doing anything else here until we're ready to actually start pumping in some biodiesel, which means I can move on to the next project, which is going to be a really big one right over here. But before we get to that, I need to put out a public service announcement as you'll know, if you've watched the last couple of videos, I added Applied Energistics 2 to this mod pack. And that has some people in the comments very concerned. And that's for good reason, because Applied Energistics 2 can do quite a few of the different things that Create can do, such as fluid transfer and item transfer as well. And it can do it in a much more compact way. But I want to just put your minds at ease and tell you I'm not going to be using any of that, or at least I don't intend to use any of that. The only thing I want to use it for is for storage, because storage has been a massive problem on this server from from day one and create doesn't do anything to help with that we've been using storage boxes and chests and barrels and backpacks all over the place and i just want to get it all organized and into one universal system that i can just pull from when i need to and that'll stop me having things like these piles of chests and rubbish every time i do a build job anywhere or anytime i go adventuring and it'll stop me having to have five different backpacks that i'm always wearing and carrying with me for all of the building things that i need i'll just be able to have all of my things in one place nice and conveniently which will enable me to progress in this let's play a whole bunch better and a whole bunch more efficiently and that's the focus of today's video and it's probably going to take more than one video to complete but i need to completely wipe out this little hill area here and build a big old system that's going to be handling all of those applied energistics to and storage needs and this building's going to be a big one it's going to go from this corner here to that corner over there to that corner over there, to that corner over there, which is quite a substantial area. And that's just the actual building. I'm going to have a car park and loading area and all sorts of stuff outside of that as well. And it all needs to be the same level, and it needs to be the same level as what we're working with over there so that we don't have issues with our trucks or our trains getting over there. And this is all at Y158, which means I need to bring up this entire area a few blocks, as well as drop this down quite a few blocks. And this point here just happens to be the same level. So everything below this needs to come up and everything above this needs to come down. I've got a lot of work ahead of me before I can even think about building. Well, that's that bit flattened, which admittedly isn't all that much compared to the rest of it. And bringing the rest of it up is probably going to cost me more in these nuggets of experience than anything else. Well, probably dirt as well. But there is another option instead of just bringing everything upwards. And that is to dig it out lower down and then just fill in a roof over the top. Because in most of the things I've built, I've needed room for basement. For things like storage, vehicles that use train tracks underground, and even some farms and item transportation. So it might make sense to actually dig out lower down and then just put a roof on it. That makes sense, right? So digging down 12 blocks that's 10 blocks of my mining machine and then two for the top layer and the reason i want two for the top layer is in case i want to put gravel anywhere i don't want it falling through all i then need to do is throw down my mining machine and then just dig out a big old basement and it look is this full already please don't tell oh no it's not full it's nowhere near full mate
And to make this go a little bit quicker, I've replaced the redstone blocks with redstone torches because they were the things that were taking ages to break. And now this can whiz across the land and demolish many, many, many. Well, it seems to have got full again, but that's okay because it's on the final strip we're doing for now and we've dug out a whole lot. And as soon as it gets to this point here, I'm going to stop it, empty it all out into that vault again. Perfect. Thank you. Jeez, look at all this stuff. And I'm full of cobble, so I can't even pick the cobble up. I can get the coal. Jeez, it was full for a while. I didn't realise how full it was, but going all the way back across here, all of the items have just been spewing out onto the floor. It's really the coal that I want because that is very useful. Now, stop it. Oh no, phantoms are back. It wasn't me. I think it might be a good idea for me to go and have a sleep. Just empty all of this junk onto the floor in this factory here. No one would ever know. And I'm sure the cleaner will be around soon to sort all that out. Yeah. Oh, I've got an owl in me. An owl? Yeah, I've got an owl in me. Okay, let's just get rid of these floating trees quickly. Let's get rid of that. That one can stay, but there's going to be ground under that soon. Oh, jeez, and all the mobs are still here. Of course they are. In which case, before I empty this thing out, it might be a good idea to start putting some torches down. That should do it. That's a lot of torches. And now I just want to get all of the items out of there that are actually going to be useful for my backpack. As all of these other items go in. And the next layer, mini, mini, mini. And all of the good stuff's coming out here. Fantastic. And that's those ones done. And now the top set of chests. And this thing is nearly full. We might have to empty out a few more things from this. What if we say filter out anything but cobblestone and dirt? Because I really don't think we're going to need anything else in there. So now we've got a big old hole, a storage container full of dirt and cobble. And I'm going to need a lot of that dirt and probably a lot of that cobble because now what i gotta do is fill all of this in although i am tempted to do one more line under here do i really want to do it all over again yes i do oh jeez why do you do this to yourself i don't know something wrong with me well i'm getting right near the end here and i need to be a little bit careful that i don't go into my infinite lava supply because oh no we've got a, we've got a bit of space before then that's okay i've done some more torches by crafting them with all the coal that this thing got told you it'd be convenient and that should do it oh look at that perfect Perfect. Ah! But I need to sleep. Oh, the cleaner's bin. Took all my stuff from before. Here, have some more cleaner. Keeping you busy. One more floaty tree to get rid of. And a handful more torches, which is quite difficult to place with all these creepers and skeletons. Oh, jeez. There we go. A big old area for a very big basement. Now I just need to put a lid on it and get all of the items out of that contraption again into this, which is already full. So, one last time. Oh, it's full. It's too full. And because that got so full, I've had to add that one. And now I'm just thinking I'll just shove it all in storage drawers. It's going to take a while. That's a lot of cobble, and that's a lot of dirt. Jeez, at least I can have all this back now. I'll just shove those in there for now. And then I'm going to hop back to Hill Valley, head over to my crushing wheel, and throw in a ridiculous amount of iron ore that we got. There we go. Oh, hang on a minute. I can do that faster. No, no, wait, wait, wait. If I turn that all into blocks, it goes a whole bunch quicker. And now I can stand on this item drain, get rid of all of these extra levels I don't need, and fill up my experience bin tank thing. Now I can head back over to the new area. And finally fill in the top two layers of this thing. After filling in all of these holes, of course. Now, there's a couple of ways that I can do this. I think the first thing I should do is craft up as much stone brick as possible, grab my construction wand, and then make a line at this level all the way across the entire thing just with stone brick, because this will be our basement ceiling. Oh, you're decorating it. Well, I might as well have the roof not too ugly, I guess. It was this or cobblestone. And I think it's going to cost me a lot more of this than I was expecting because it's pretty much two stacks just from one side to the other for one line. That's going to be a lot of stacks of this. So there's something I can do about that, and that is to grab all of this cobble, take it down to the mine, attach it to our storage drawer supply, turn my smelting machine back on to turn it all into stone, and then modify this slightly to turn it all into stone brick. So these will just sit and make me stone bricks for a while, and that means that when I run out, I can come back here and grab a whole bunch more. And this area is force chunk loaded, so this should run without me being here, which means I can come back to this and slowly fill in the entire thing with stone brick. Is that, have I really run out already? <laughs> oh no, this could take a while. I've crafted up 19,000 of them. This should hopefully get me a reasonable way across here. I've got to keep my eye on that durability of this one now though. 
Oh, well, I nearly crafted up enough. That is all of the stuff I just crafted. That's a big old area of stone brick. Hopefully when I pop down here, we should have a few more to go with. Yes, we've got another 2,000 there. Excellent. And that's all of the stone brick filled in now. Oh, almost. Got to do this corner. Which means it's time for dirt. So same thing. Just run a line of it along here like this. Hopefully it doesn't turn into grass while I'm doing it. Otherwise that's going to upset my construction one. A lot of this I'm going to have to delete in future anyway as I start building these roads out. But it's fine. It's just a temporary. And I can do the same thing. And there we go. We now have a very flat platform. Of course, the edges are all going to need sorting out as we bring it further in this direction and then we take it over in that direction. But for now, we've got a good area to start building with. And that's used a whole bunch of my dirt. But fortunately, we did get 65,000 earlier on. And there we go. We're all topped up again. So now we've got a big old basement to be playing with if we need it. And a big old area up here to build our building. Now I've marked out a couple of areas on here. We've got the stone corners there, which is going to be the actual corner for this building and then this mud corners here they're going to be the corners for the yard for this place but it's not just going to be a big old square like that one over there it's going to be a really big old square well this might look a little bit odd and that's because it is the design i'm thinking out is a hexagonal mess and the idea here is that that section in the middle there would be where our main ae2 brain would be and then above this would have some layers with server racks and things like that all of these little rooms and bits around the outside would be where we've got all of the components being manufactured and stuff and i think it might work the only problem is the angle obviously if we're going to have angular rooms like this it's not really going to set itself up for actually having components and machines and things in there so it could be a bit of an awkward one to actually work in but i kind of like the design and i kind of like the layout and i've got an idea for a multi-layered multi-story version of it but it's going to use an awful lot of quartz now fortunately for me in my backpack i've got a whole bunch here i've also got another thirty thousand of it here and if we head on back over to hill valley i've got 2.7 million of it here and that's because of my original gold farm which is currently no longer chunk loaded because it it was just producing way too much quartz but it's in this factory through here up these stairs and it still works very very well produces an absolute ridiculous amount of quartz and gold so i'm definitely not going to run out the other thing this build is going to cost me an absolute ton of is framed blocks and that's because each of these diagonal bits is not going to be all square it's going to be using these framed slopes in order to give us nice smooth sides on the angles and that's going to be on the inside as well so it's going to cost me a fortune but fortunately again we've got an absolute ton of wood in here and this time heading back over to our snowy area we did have an absolutely ridiculous amount in here and i don't know whether it still is oh yes we've still got plenty in here so i'm gonna grab an absolute ton of whatever i've got most of which is probably cherry wood and then go and craft up an absolutely ridiculous amount of those frame slopes. And because this building is going to be probably one of the biggest, most complicated buildings that I've built on this series, I'm not just going to do a time lapse of me just completing the whole thing in one go. I'm going to do it bit by bit and talk my way through it because I've got some pretty exciting ideas as we go through this. First of all, though, I'm just going to chuck down a bunch of torches over here put myself a little sleeping bag down so I can sleep when it gets dark and then get out all of my useful tables so that I can craft whatever I need and I imagine a couple of junk chests over here are going to be useful as well there we go I'm prepared you don't seem prepared no I don't feel it either now one thing I want to try is this powered framing saw I believe this will automatically craft certain frame blocks for me without me having to really do much but this does actually need proper power like the AE2 stuff and I'm kind of hoping this vibration chamber from a Energistics 2 is going to help me power it, but I don't know if it will. The idea here being I can just put coal in there, that's going to generate AE, and uh, that doesn't, there's nothing for this. But I do have an energy acceptor, so maybe if I put that next to that and put that in there, it does nothing. Okay, put it on top of there, nothing. Put it on top of there, nope. What about putting a connector on it? No. In that case, then I'm wondering if I can plug this in over here at the factory. Not a factory, the liquid storage building yet, yeah, that one. Using another alternator. See, that's got FE, and possibly I can just sit that next to it. I can. There we go. So I wonder, can I just put logs in there and target that? Doesn't matter. Okay. Don't tell me i got to craft all of these up already by hand. Can I just put wood in there? No. Oh, great. In that case, then I better craft up as many of these frame block blocks. Frame cubes. Yeah, frame cubes as possible. But if I'm doing this, it kind of takes away the point of using the automatic thing, because, well, it's really easy just to craft those straight into those. Now, I'm kind of hoping that I 
I can fill those in there from a barrel with a hopper and just leave it running. It looks like I can. And then can I get them out again with another one? Yes, I can. Oh, well, at least that's something. So I'm going to leave that running over there while I go and start building this building. And at least I know over time that's going to fill up and I can keep coming back here to restock. Okay, there's the bottom layer in place now, but there's a problem with this design that I've discovered, and that is that with this foundation layer here, which has got the deep slate on the outside and the quartz on the inside, it's fine when we got the diagonals like this, but when we get to a flat section, being able to actually decorate the inside would mean actually bringing these out another block on each side, significantly reducing the amount of space I've got in each of these rooms, which is a problem. Now, yes, potentially I could use frame blocks there like that in order to save a little bit of space space and while that would work i can't then place a block there although i could if i got rid of one put one there if i needed to so i guess i can save space that way but it's not really ideal realistically this is only going to be an issue for the first layer because all of the other layers above this until we get a little bit higher up at least we're going to be using these quartz block on the inside and the outside just because it's a whole bunch easier so yeah i think i'll use these wall boards for now to disguise the bottom layer on the inside which means putting a whole bunch more frame blocks down and a whole bunch more quartz so let me talk you through my idea here this is going to be like the entrance building and inside of here it's going to have things i'm not sure what things yet but there are going to be things in it oh, duh. and you're going to come through this corridor here and there's actually going to be walls there and there with doorways in them leading to rooms around the outside which is where we're going to be producing our ae stuff continuing through we get to a hallway which goes all the way around the outside and has access on each one of these exit points and right in the middle we've got our place where basically the brain of the system but then you'll notice we've got these walls which are quite thick and hollow and the reason for that is i want to have plenty of places to be able to run cables and pipes throughout the in insides of this building whereas i don't really need that on the outside so they can be a lot closer together now it is probably a little bit overkill here because we've got a lot of space but don't forget everything works in squares so in order to get pipes to run down here like this i'm going to need a fair bit of space although i could probably make it a little bit thinner which i might do actually I might bring all of this bit in one more block and that still gives me plenty of space on the inside of here but it gives me a whole bunch more room in these rooms on the outside as well and there we go that's those little bits sorted out there making the side rooms a little bit bigger so why have I done it all just one layer of course this thing's going to be relatively tall well I can either use the construction one to bring all of the layers up one at a time is that going to work with the frame blocks <laughs> no of course it's not or the other thing I can do is just take a schematic of the whole thing and then just print all of the different layers with the schematic cannon, which is probably what I'm going to do. Other questions you might be asking. Hey. Other questions you might be asking are why have you got all of these little white squares everywhere? Well, they're chunk borders. I want to make sure all of this is chunk aligned so that I can make the absolute most of the layout and not have to force load too many chunks when this thing's running. Because if this is going to be my universal storage system that I'm going to be able to access anywhere in the world in any dimension, I'm going to need it always loaded. Okay, it's time for the schematic and quill. So I guess I want to go all the way from there. Hopefully it's going to reach all the way over to here. Is that the whole thing? I think it is. Nice. That's a big old area. Five by five chunks. So now I need to position it, which is not an easy thing to do. Oh, well, that's not right at all, is it? Just about there, I think, should do it. Spot on. Throw that in there. Put in my material checklist. Figure out what I need. Really? Flowers? I don't think I want those. I need way more of those than I've got. But hopefully there's a whole bunch ready over here. Oh, yes. Mini. So with a little bit of gunpowder in there and setting this on to skip missing blocks, which is already on, I can just click go. And hopefully this won't take too long. Although they generally do take a while. But while it's going on, I might as well start filling in the blocks that I know it's going to miss and then texturing the ones that I know I can texture. And there we go. Before too long, that second layer is in now and I think this needs quite a few more layers. Oh, geez. So it's going to take me a little while. But what if the schematic cannon was more like a machine gun? It builds a whole bunch quicker like this. I mean, personally, I don't understand why they put a delay in it. All you got to do is go to the mod menu, gameplay settings, schematic, schematic cannon, and change the delay, which was on something crazy like 20, to maybe one. Although I think five is more reasonable, which is not quite as machine gun-like. I think it's a little bit less cheaty. Anyway, this time I'm doing two layers at once, which means that this structure is going to be done in probably about three hours.
Well, instead of continuing to texture this, I've just let the schematic cannon build it up. You can see that I've stopped doing these at this level here and continue to those. And this is the last level for the first layer. That's right, I said first layer. What we've got here, this middle section, is going to have some funky stuff going on in between the layers, around about this level here. And then it's going to have another one of these above all of this, and it's going to have some more of those, but in different positions spun around somewhere else. So there's still a whole bunch of stuff to do, including texturing, all of these walls but at least i'm starting to feel the scale of all of this a little bit now and the good thing about this is we've got plenty of room for two floors in here but yeah there's definitely a plenty of room for plenty of things in here although i think it is going to end up being a little bit of a maze on the inside so i guess what i need to do now is texture all of these untextured blocks get the roofs on these things make sure i'm happy with the design and then do it all over again Slowly but surely, I feel like I'm getting somewhere. The entire building is now filled in with texture, although it's probably not the final result. As you can see down here, I've attempted to put a window in, and I think we'll probably play with that around the other areas. We've got a red trim on this one, a light blue on this one, a grey one on this one, and a yellow one on that one over there. And it might not look like much, but honestly, it's taken a ridiculously long time to fill in all of those frame blocks. I started this at 9pm. It is now half past 11 p.m. and you can see all of the frame blocks on the inside are textured as well i haven't got a floor in yet but i've thrown a few torches around because i accidentally turned this into a massive mob spawner which isn't ideal and coming through into the center somehow somewhere possibly if i can figure out how to get around there the center is just there's nothing in here at all and it's very dark towards the ceiling but the ceiling's not going to be like that if we come back out to one of these hallways you'll see there's a few different lines on the wall and that's going to indicate the floors so for instance and excuse the block palette because well, that's what i've got on me at the moment would have the bottom floor around about this level here we'll have that ceiling would be around about that level there we'll have a one block high crawl space and then the next floor would be around about there and then that ceiling should technically be there but i guess it'll have to go there it's dark i know it's dark so we've got room for two floors in this building as well as a whole bunch of pipes and contraptions and stuff in between and don't forget these walls are hollow as well so we've got a whole bunch of room between these for plenty of cabling and stuff to be shimmied around without affecting the look of the building so my next job is to craft up a whole bunch more frame blocks a whole bunch more quartz blocks and basically build all of this all over again on top of that that said i am going to have a contraption between the two layers to make it look kind of interesting i've made a mistake i've made two actually this is not tall enough it's two blocks short and that's the simplest thing to fix the other problem is the entire thing is off by one block See, in order to do the next bit in the middle, I need this thing to have a one wide middle, but it's got a two wide middle and that's going to make things very difficult. So I'm going to need you to use your imaginations. Imagine this flywheel was much bigger, i.e. the same size as this. And imagine there were three of them stacked on top of each other and imagine they were all rotating in different directions. In order to make them line up with the building, they would all need to be pivoted from the center and they would probably be rotated with a mechanical bearing. But mechanical bearings sit on one block and while you can have four together they don't all work together which is a big problem however i think i've got a solution for that but first of all i need to fix this roof problem and the problem with the roof is that i need crawl spaces let's imagine this is the bottom floor we're going to be stood here we'll then have the next ceiling at this point here a crawl space between and the next floor is going to be there you've done this once already yeah but there's a problem because the next ceiling should be here where those blocks are but it'll have to go there which means this floor is going to be short and there's no room at all to put pipes and cables and things like that in the ceiling before we get to the roof so i need this entire thing to go up two blocks and if you're a big fan of the series then you'll know that's really not a big problem and it's not going to require any rebuilding at all all it needs are copious amounts of glue which is oh the deer is too big oh geez how big can i make it too too big to hear okay very copious amounts of glue then And that should be everything for the roof connected. Then all I need to do is stick a sticky piston there with a crank on it. A couple of extension poles coming out the back. 
And if I wind it down to touch the roof, I can then wind it back up again. And with myself on it, there we go. The entire roof is up two blocks. That was easy. But now I've got to fill in those gaps in between, which means I need the cannon back out again. And selecting those two layers there should enable me to copy those and just place them up above them. Oh, oh geez, we've got a mob farm in there already. Go away. Stop being a mob farm. Go away. Also looks like I've done this wall completely wrong compared to the rest of them. But I can fix that later. And there we go. That should fill in the gap nicely. Let's put it in the cannon and then check the materials and not get creepered. Apparently I'm missing a whole bunch of stuff. Well, of course I am. Why wouldn't I be? Go away. It's working. So now I just need to untexture this layer below because it's wrong. Which is getting more and more difficult with the height that this thing's becoming at. Jeez. And there we go. That's everything for those two missing layers added in and complete and textured, which means it's now time to deal with that second problem, which was the spinny things on the roof. But I've got a plan. First of all, I need to mark out the chunk borders and the centers, which I've done. And I don't really need to do that. It's just helpful. And the next thing I need is my narrow gauge and a sight track. And I should hopefully be able to make a loop around this thing relatively easily. So if I put a track there and there, and there and there, and there and there, and there and there, I should hopefully be able to make four circles and they need to be proper circles and that looks almost circular to me it's not far off there are a couple of straight bits but i can't really avoid that with it being a too wide middle but that looks very circular now whether this will work or not i've no idea but i'm gonna find out what why whether what works it it mate what's it it okay so i've got a little proof of concept machine set up here on a little train there it let's just assemble that get it into the right spot and hopefully now if i drive this around that that's gonna stay level with the side of the roof ish potentially going a bit fast i mean it would want to go very slowly but it's difficult to tell i, I need a, i need a driver come here driver i'm a fly no you're a driver now mate you've got a job okay little fly show me if my machine is going to work now he's gonna go hopefully oh, oh geez it's nowhere near big enough that thing not even close and it even oh, it's going off the edges in some places and not in others hmm it kind of sort of work no suitable pa it's right in front of you you moron I don't think this is going to work. Okay, fine. It was just an idea. In that case, then, we're just going to embrace a total lack of symmetry and make it look really interesting. That's my plan. It might be weird, but it's going to be okay. What? We don't even know what you're doing. You kind of do. That. But ignoring the industrial iron plating on the inside, basically the big old gold ring that's going to spin round at the top there. And there's going to be three layers of it, and the middle one's going to go in the opposite direction. Which could look kind of interesting now that this is going to be slightly off center. But that's kind of the look I'm... Oh, it's weird. It's really weird. Being one block off the center really does... Oh, jeez. And why are my sides much longer than the... Oh, jeez. I don't, I don't think I've done my octagon a very good shape. The diagonals are much longer than the flat bits they're all flat you know what i mean which means the oh it's stored oh this isn't gonna work at all okay forget having fancy things going around then what a waste of time are you gonna embrace the anti-symmetricalismness of it yeah well i'm not anymore looks stupid mate okay so i've been playing around with a few things and as you can see behind me there's quite a lot going on we've got some textured redstone lamps that are on a clock which are lighting up the whole thing and instead of having this ring spinning round it's now going up and down in front of the lights very very slowly i wanted some sort of animation to make this feeling feel a little bit alive and give it a little bit of that sort of futuristic vibe and i think this kind of does the job it's kind of what i wanted i did really want it rotating but that's not going to work which means now it's time to take this entire bottom section and build the entire thing again above it oh man and this is going to be a big schematic a very big schematic hopefully it's not going to crash everything out actually making it but i think i just need it to there has that got everything in it looks like it okay and now all i've got to do is place it and get it in the right position so i'm gonna whoa pop it there jeez make sure it's lined up which it's it's definitely not at the moment it's off by a couple of blocks mate that's all there we go but i kind of want to rotate it as well i don't want these things being exactly where the other ones are so let's go to the rotate icon come down here and hopefully whoa there we go i can just spin the whole thing that's crazy that's so cool so let's get it in a place where it doesn't match the bottom layer 
that could be cool they kind of over overlap a little bit but they're not exactly in line with each other yeah i think that's good how's this gonna look from far far away i think it's gonna look pretty epic i can't get high enough up to see it though yeah we'll go for it what's the worst that could happen ah how's there a creeper on my roof what and a skeleton i'll oh, clear oh, that my roof's supposed to be safe materials checklist then how many am i gonna need for this nearly six thousand frame slopes a whole bunch of those which don't actually exist because that's actually these things together which the game counts as one block but you can't actually get them as one block so i can't give it that it's got enough cut deep slate so that's good it needs nearly three thousand stacked deep slate one thousand of the vertical oh my goodness me oh it oh geez i'll be back in a minute Well, aside from a few slabs, which I can't give it, I think everything's in place. And that's a whole lot of materials that we've got to work with. So I think we're good to go. So let's drop in some good powder, possibly increase the speed of this so I'm not sat here all day waiting. And then I guess click go. <laughs> Off it goes. Here we go, guys. We've got a whole new layer coming. took about 25 minutes with the schematic cannon at full speed and doing the maths that means that would have taken over eight and a half hours to do at the normal fire rate so that's why i speeded up so that you can get these videos on time and i'm not just sat here for eight hours doing a time lapse and clearly there's still a whole bunch to do here i've got a texture over 5,000 frame blocks i've got a whole bunch of blocks to replace and change out for the second layer's design obviously the schematic cannon managed to miss a whole bunch of blocks that I wasn't able to give it because they don't really exist like these ones here and of course everything needs floors and ceilings and hallways and windows and all that sort of stuff so there's a whole bunch to do so it's going to take me probably about eight and a half hours to get this top layer actually finished off and a few bits inside so I'm going to take some time get as much of that done as possible and I'll be back with you later 12 hours later literally 12 hours later and it's still nowhere near finished there's a whole bunch left to do but as you can see things are starting to at least take shape from the outside so let's go in and see what we've got going on we've got our little entrance hall here which has got nothing in it in fact that's the theme of this entire thing it's got nothing in it but it's kind of sort of decorated with the rooms and stuff and you can see we've got a bunch of colors in fact i've used every single color of concrete in this to try and color code things mainly because the entire thing is a bit of a maze so by color coding the walls i've tried to make it a little bit easier to understand what's going on around the outside we've got square rooms followed by a diagonal rooms this one's got a hole in it because that's going to be where the elevator is because there's no stairs in here and the red transitions into orange and this goes into a square room and then it goes into another diagonal room and then that transitions into yellow and we've also got another section here which is the yellow section and so on and so forth all the way around the building pretty much all exactly the same around the outside some of them have little storagey bits to the side these were all linked together but unfortunately these diagonal sections were too small to make rooms out of and bear in mind i've got to use this place to actually produce things so i needed to expand them which means the little storage wally bits have kind of disappeared a bit at least it has on this layer because don't forget we've got the inner layer as well we've got a hallway that goes all the way around this middle bit here and if we get to the bit where the door is we've then got these little sections that go around the little hallway around the entire center of this thing and then we've got a little bridge that comes out to this thing which is where the brain of our storage system is going to live and there's going to be all sorts of wires and stuff pumping down from that now put this over a little bit of a pit i'm going to fill this up with some sort of fluid in the future i'm not sure what yet maybe water maybe something else who knows i don't know yet and that's kind of it for this first floor so let's go up our invisible lift which doesn't exist yet and go to the crawl space in the middle which is one block thick which is a bit of an oversight because i actually can't get in it now i could do the trapdoor trick but i've got nowhere to put a trapdoor to actually get myself to that level so it's going to be very difficult filling that full of things in the future so we'll pop up to the next level which has got the next section of colors and this has got exactly the same layout of a 
rectangular room and then a diagonally room and that goes into another rectangular room and so on and so forth around the entire building. It does however have another middle and this has got glass going around the entire outside of this just as a little viewing platform to see what's going on there. Again this floor is going to be mainly for producing things and having AE2 stuff in here just producing all the things we're going to need to actually finish this building. So going back to the elevator we've now got this space which is the area between both buildings and this has actually dropped down a couple of layers because I thought there's no point in having a one block high crawl space up here I might as well just extend the entire ah the elevator I might as well just extend the entire thing up to the floor of the next one so let's hop back up this elevator and go on to this level and guess what it's exactly the same but color coordinated with a rectangular room followed by a diagonal room followed by another rectangular room it's all very very similar however this one's middle is a lot different there's no middle middle center middle middle I, I, there's no middle bit on this one just a big old glass box and this is where all of the servers are going to be kept because applied energetics 2 keeps all of your storage digitally in little drives and this is where they're all going to live and this just happens to be straight above the brain of the machine which lives down there on that level there so it'll all be very easy to connect i haven't really done a massive amount in terms of color coordinating this or making it interesting but we will have some big fans and stuff above this to make it look like it's got cooling and whatnot but it's been 12 hours and i'm tired i don't want to do any more building just right now what i do want to do though is show you the final layer <laughs> would you believe what the final layer's got in it where's my elevator gone there it is oh i can't I can, but i'm not <laughs> but i've been doing this all day oh gee fine. the final floor has got a rectangular room followed by a diagonal room followed by another rectangular room again all the way around again and again it's got viewing platforms over the server room and it's got access to these little cubby holes here which is where we can have wires and electricity and all that sort of stuff coming down so it's yeah interesting is the way i'm going to put this but quite frustratingly it's so big and it's such a maze it's pretty difficult to get around and my idea here is to have an elevator that goes all the way up i've got another idea too you see i don't really know what to do with all of these diagonally rooms that come along here especially this front one that's sort of the front facing one of the building i was thinking just some sort of reception area or something like that but decorating in diagonal rooms is difficult because blocks don't naturally sit in a diagonal and you can't really make tables and bench and things easily on a diagonal with frame blocks. Now I could use mechanical bearings and things to actually skew them at an angle like we've done before. However, I thought this room might be better served as a teleportation room. A teleportation room? Yeah, teleportation room where it's got full of teleporters that take you all around the building and maybe other areas as well. And looking at these waystones, we've been building the normal waystone, which is relatively easy to do, but I kind of want to make these warp plates, which need warp dust, which is amethyst shard and ender pearls. And we can get plenty of the ender pearls from our village and I've got loads of amethyst now and the reason I want to make warp plates is because with those you don't need to click on them you just stand on them and you go somewhere or at least I think that's how they work let's go find out did you always look like that Michael you changed you have right anyway I need all your end pearls mate as many as you'll give me 12 really I really gotta wait for more well while I'm waiting I might as well go over to our other area and see how much nether warp we've got in stock because it would be quite good oh 57,000 of it that's good you see I'd like to have a whole bunch of this in stock so that I can trade it with Michael and claim back a few of the emeralds he keeps taking off me for all these ender pearls. Why don't you go to the end and build an enderman farm? Well, I will soon, just not today. I didn't want to go here. No, thank you. Take as much of this as you want. I've got nearly 60,000 of it, Michael. Another thing I'm very short of now is glowstone dust. So I'm going to buy a bunch of glowstone from him as well. Well, that should be more than enough ender pearls to get us going. So let's head back over to our temporary A2 area, scooch over to the little amethyst farm and grab a bunch of this. Oh, and what? Look at that. We've got loads of that now, so I'll take all of that. That must be, wow, we've got over 131,000 Certus Quartz now as well. So yeah, this is going well, although that is going to be moving to the new building very soon. So anyway, I mentioned glowstone dust and how I've hardly got any of it. See these coloured bands around all of these buildings, not just on the outside bits here, but also on the inside. Everywhere you see a coloured band like that or around the bottom of these have all been touched with glowstone dust. They're frame blocks. And if you use a glowstone dust on a frame block, it becomes a light. And that means these are now neon strips, keeping the entire area nice and light because this entire thing was a big mob spawner as I was building it and it became very irritating. Anyway, warp plates. I don't know how much we'll need, so let's make 32. So if I make a warp plate then and pop it down, how does it work? A tune shard. Bring this shard to another warp plate. Okay, oh, so do I need to make two of these then? So if I've got one of those there, do I just, do I click on it with it? Warp plate is not bound to another warp plate. Insert this shard into another warp plate. Oh, there we go. 
Oh, so it takes a second. Well, yeah, you can just basically hop from one thing to another without having to interact in any sort of way. There's a lot of effects going on there, but it's kind of handy. And after a bit of fiddling about, I think something like this should work. We've got access to all of the different colors and it doesn't look too awful even on a slant. We could just walk into any of these and we'll be able to teleport once they're connected. I think that'll work lovely. I've just got to do the same on this side for all of the other ones. So now all of the warp plates are in place and everything is linked up except for this very last one. So I've just got to do the black section so I grab those. I take that out of there, put that one in there, hop over to the dark grey section, hop out of the cupboard just there, and then I just need to go into the black section here, head into the cupboard, throw that down, put that in there, and then I should be able to just hop straight back. There we go. So they all just take me to whichever section I want to go. So let's go to lime green, and I just hop out the cupboard at lime green. Oh, that's excellent. And the other thing about these, although I think it might be a bit cheaty, is that you can send items through them as well. Hmm, that could come in useful for something in the future. Long range item teleportation to any dimension. Hmm. So I, now I just need probably a little bit of decoration in here and maybe some signs when I actually know what's going to be going in each one of the rooms. And I think that's kind of what I want to do next. I want to get all of this stuff over there and I definitely 100% want to get these farms over there, but those farms are not going to run unless we've got power over there. So let's hop back over to the new building. Let's go to the light blue section, which is over here, which is where our power station is going to be. Come out of the cupboard, go down here, and then we need to think about how we're going to offload the lava into here and then have a big old boiler system in here to actually produce the power and then how we're going to get the power out of there through into the rest of this building. And I'm not going to be running power as in create power in here. This building is going to be the only one in the world that's going to be 100% AE2 other than the create power station. But you've seen me build power stations a whole bunch of times so I think I'll get this basically set up and then we'll work on getting the lava over here. Power is just about in place now. I've got a steam engine, which has got water and lava being pumped in from underneath, although we've got no lava yet, but I've got a little storage tank there and a water wheel to provide that power just so that it never runs out and gets confused. And that all links into this chain drive here, which comes into a speed controller, and that goes into another chain drive, which goes into these alternators, which then go through these little wires into these energy acceptors. And above those, we're going to have some AE storage, like the power storage things. And it doesn't need to be like like this i can actually put those energy acceptors straight on the alternators but i thought it looked more interesting like this and in preparation for power i've done a few other things as well including putting a hole in the wall so we can get outside and this portable fluid interface that the trucks can come up to and well offload the lava and as you can see i've started putting in a road network i've also done the yard for our item storage building i've also updated the crossing that goes to our liquid storage building and over at the liquid storage building i've also done a couple of other things in here so what i've done is dug a hole in the floor with another hose pulley pulling lava out of our infinite storage pit and putting it into that tank so that a truck can come along here connect to that and fill it with lava and in order to get a truck going we've got to have rail so i put in a little rail network for the secret underground rail bits for the truck and i also did a whole bunch more mining because i was horrendously short of cobbled deep slate i'm still quite short of blackstone and i'm very short of mud which we need to make the rough mud so i can't really finish off the roads until i've got all of those ingredients but cobble deep slate's okay now because of the mining and i've set up this little cobblestone haunter to actually give us black stone so we're getting a bunch of that through here now as well so i just need mud and as you all know mud comes from putting water bottles on dirt or using create you can just put water and mud in a mixer now we've got a whole bunch of dirt just sat here doing nothing so that's not a problem and this is my liquid storage building so i guess we could make an infinite water source in here and do it in here somewhere i've got all of these rooms in this building just sitting here doing nothing so we can take power across here without it interfering with anything throw it into there disguise it a little bit so it's not so ugly but now all i need is a mixer with a bunch of water in it and something like this should do the trick we've got our dirt there we're going to send that across these item drains into the mixer we're going to send the mud out of there into this storage drawer we've got a pump which is coming from an infinite water source we just need power to that and power to that and there we go a little mud processing factory and now we're going really fast. This is good. Look at that. Just chugging out mud very quickly. This is wonderful. And I'm probably going to need several thousand mud. So I guess I'm going to sit here for a while and just watch this create mud. That's a lot of mud. And it only took two hours. 
There we go. Now all I've got to do is turn it into rough mud. If only these tables from the chip mod were actually automatable, that would be wonderful, but they're not. And back on my test world, I've added a data pack that basically creates a recipe to allow me to press mud blocks into rough mud. I mean, it would probably make more sense to do it with a mechanical saw, and then you could set the right filter on it and chip whatever type of blocks you want. And that kind of makes sense to me. And just a few minutes later, I have now made a data pack that has almost 7,000 recipes in it for all of the chipped items. So once this is finished, if I was to put in, say, acacia planks in there, and I want them to come out of these herringbone acacia planks, just get rid of the rest of that mod, then that's going to happen, which is amazing. And let's say I wanted these light blue concrete things. I can just throw some light blue concrete in there and they're going to come out. What about cobblestone? Yep, the cobblestone works. And even doors work with this. If I throw in some dark oak doors and put a dark oak door filter on there, we can get those as well. And not just one type, we can get any different type we want. If you're interested in this data pack to automate the chip mod with Create, then let me know and I might just share it with you. But for now, it's time to go back to my world and process a whole bunch of stuff. So back on the server, is this going to work? I've set up my mechanical saws for trodden blackstone, rough mud and trodden deep slate. I've set, ow, oh geez, that was painful. I set the filter on these to the right ones. Let's just flip them around and see what happens. Oh, wonderful. Look at it go. I'm crafting up the stuff without needing the workbenches. And I have got the stuff that works in the backpack as well. But that's just as irritating as doing it on one of the tables. This is much better. So a little while later, all of the roads are in and I've tried to blend it in with the grass a little bit using some gravel variants and some coarse dirt and even some of the spiky grass stuff. So that means we're almost ready to build a truck to get it over there to actually drop off the lava. But in order to do that, I kind of need to figure out how the yard area for this is going to be. And I don't want it all just to be tarmac like that one over there or like that one over there. I want this one to actually have walkways and paths and trees and things around it. So it looks kind of nice. So looking at the road network, this one is going to be for trucks that are actually going to be dropping items off for storage. And this yellow area here is going to be where all those are transferred into the system. The other side obviously being for where our lava is going to come in and that's just going to end up going into that little tank there. And the reasons these yards are so big is so there's enough room for the trucks to actually turn around, get in place and get out again. So I am going to need a reasonable amount of room here for the trucks to be able to turn around and get back out again, as well as pathways and all. Oh, geez, it's going to be difficult. So I'll be back with you in a minute. Well, it's not all finished yet, but I've done a few things around the area. For starters, I put a wall the whole way around the thing. And as you can see, we've got some yard areas with the tarmac. We've also got these little booths to basically control the vehicles coming in and out. You might even recognize this little cabin from earlier on in the season. In fact, it's from episode two, when I built my little starter cabin thing. It's been modified slightly to make it more appropriate, but I thought having a little site office that you would come to with deliveries and stuff was quite realistic. I've added in a little bit of path work around these areas with some doors to get into the buildings. We've got a little yard there, which I'll probably put some containers and things like that in there. And that's just the item storage side. Around the other side of the building, we've got something very similar going on with a little entrance way over here, which has still got a little bit of texturing to do on. We've got another yard. We've got some car parking spaces. And that means that I can now actually build a tanker and get it coming over here, delivering lava, getting our power system sorted. Finally, let's just slap on the glass in here. And my idea with this, although I think it's going to have to change to do it, is to have systems in place with mechanical bearings, allowing these to actually turn round. But in order to do that, I'm going to have to get power to the mechanical bearings and they're powered from the back, which means if I'm having one here as well for the other side, then they're both going to operate at the same time when I give them power. So this is probably too short. Probably needs to be another block longer, in which case all of this is going to have to change slightly. But that's fine. We'll get to that in a minute. First of all, I want to build a tanker. And I think I'm going to build it over here where I know it's going to fit and where I've got rail to actually start placing it. So let's pop down a station. And I guess it probably wants to be around about there. Put it into assemble mode to create a new train. And here it is. Tanker number one is ready for action. It has two lava tanks in there. It's got the little storage interface at the back here so we can reverse up and get it. And it's got a completely separate cab from the rest of it, which means that when I drive it, it actually looks pretty realistic. Check this out. So when I turn the tanker, look, the entire thing turns with it. The whole thing works properly. This is absolutely incredible. So I can pull into this yard. I'll turn around there to line up, come through the wall a bit. Yeah, I need to fix the tracks and the stations. And then it will just have to reverse up to here, grab the lava from there. And I think the back wheels need to be sorted out a bit better. I'm not 
sure about those back wheels really but it's fine for now and then once it's finished loading up it'll pull forward again so that it can get in line it will then reverse round the other way like that so that it can get going the way it needs to go and then it's gonna come no 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 you're doing it wrong no no forward all you gotta do is no and then it'll go forward out of here but but i haven't set those tracks up yet so i guess i should do that next oh look at it filling up with lava it's basically got two nine by nine tanks in the middle of it so it should be able to hold a fair bit although it's very slow coming out i might need to speed this up a bit so i'm gonna need a schedule and i'm gonna need a driver and i want these things to have proper drivers like the little conductors that we have rather than monkeys or animals or something like that so that means i need to go back to the snowy area which is works oh geez what have i done uh which is apparently totally broken all i can see is the entities but no blocks there we go eventually but anyway we've got a lot of these little chaps here waiting to be collected to be taken to a new area but unfortunately the train that's going to be bringing them here hasn't got any carriages yet so uh for now i'm just gonna grab one and take him over there hopefully the hole in the ground over there will be fixed by the time i go back there next time well i think i've sorted the schedule and underneath i've put in a whole bunch of track and a whole bunch of stations although i'm not sure if they're all in the right places yet but we're gonna find out in a minute so let's get the driver into the cab Oh, and I haven't given him any reverse controls, which means this isn't going to work at all. Oh, jeez. Hang on, sir. You're going to, you need to come... Oh, jeez. Now we can get him back on his seat. And if I give him his schedule, the first place he's going to go to is straight ahead, hopefully. So off you go. Is it going to work? He's going to go there. Now we should hopefully reverse there, collect some lava. Although I've only told him to wait there for a few seconds for now while we test this. Once he's been there for 10 seconds, he should come forward again. And then he should reverse back into the yard so that he can come out forwards. There he goes. Oh, it's not spinning in the middle anymore. I need to fix that. But oh, and uh, now we can't find his way. How can you not find your way? You need to go to lava exit. You're on that track there. And lava exit... It's literally here. Oh. <laughs> oh, I haven't put the track in the middle, mate. There we go. That should help. All right, have your schedule back then. Let's see if you can actually do it this time. So, yeah, he's going towards the exit. This is good news. And I think I've got him driving on the wrong side of the road. Now, in the UK where I live, we do drive on the left-hand side of the road, but I thought I'd do this on the right. But uh, clearly he's driving on the left. And there we go. He goes around that corner. He's going pretty speedy. Yeah, he's made it around that one. He's made it around that one. He should stop just before the barrier, hopefully. Uh, needs to go a block back. But yeah, okay, should wait there till the man says that he can go through. And then he's going to go through. He should pull forward around here, then reverse into the lava pump. And it's probably going to go way too far into it. No, he needs to go a block back. And then once he's finished there, he should clear off again. So it looks like we're going to be driving on the left in this world, which is absolutely fine by me. Because that's what it's like at home. You're copying Mr. Beardstone. He's just done trucks. Well, I know he has, but so have I. I did trucks. He, he copied my truck. Oh, jeez. Make sure you watch everyone's before you decide who's copying who, okay? Well, it's looking... Well, it was looking better there. Obviously, the barriers don't open yet, but they will. What about this bit here? Is this going to look okay now? And yeah, that's just about right. Maybe... Maybe it could be a little bit further back than that. But now we're getting lava in here. So the power station should kick into life in a minute. We've got lava in there. There we go. We are now generating power, which means we're generating electricity many many of it oh this is wonderful news okay he should be fixed now so i should be able to give him his schedule back and he should now turn in the middle when he turns turn in the middle when he yes turn you know what i mean reverse and there we go that's what we want to see and with a little bit of jiggery pokery down here i've now got these signals in place which now control the automatic doors so as he makes his way here and he turns up to face that way once he starts reversing past this point here this door should open with a bit of luck let's check it out there it goes look at that amazing and then once he's filled up and he pulls away again that's just going to automatically close which is wonderful now what i need to make it do is not crash into those trains when it's at the crossing so i need to sort that out and i want to sort these little barriers out as well well i think i've got these barriers working now although i have had a few issues with glue just randomly sticking to things it's not supposed to you see i've only glued the pole to that bit there nothing else but for some reason it keeps sticking to all of this and then all of that gets sort of inverted but here we go the lorry's here it's opening up he can drive through now and then it's going to close again in a few seconds. But there we go. And now it's closing again. And this time it doesn't seem to have got stuck to anything. So that's good. It's open. It's going to drive through. Very nice. And then it should... There we go. That's better. 
Oh, wonderful. Okay, I think I've sorted this rail crossing out. Although it's a bit of a cheaty way of doing it because rather than waiting for the train to actually leave for them to come up, I've just done it on a delay, which is fine. Let me demonstrate. If a train is on this section of the track, they should start coming down. That will also stop this van from being able to go past with a bit of luck. We should see the truck stop there until this is out of the way. If I move that out of the way, the truck can go. However, they haven't opened up yet. So I think I need to do a little bit more just to make sure that they don't go up until the train is gone. But I also need to make sure that the train doesn't go until they're down because at the moment, the area of track that it's actually detecting trains on is this green bit here, which is not very big. And if a train's coming very quickly down this section here, they're not going to have time to close before it's got there. Now, I could make the entire section a whole bunch bigger, but then that means having redstone links absolutely everywhere all over this place. So I think this is just a game, just Minecraft. It doesn't have to be realistic. We'll just make it as good as we can, and then that'll do. And what I need to do next, now that we've got some power, is get that power rooted around the building, stored up in vast quantities, and then start moving all of the stuff we've got for AE2 over here, and then start adding a whole bunch more to it. So each one of these is generating 360 F per tick i have no idea what that equates to in terms of ae but in order to store a whole bunch of it i'm going to need these dense energy cells and if we head over to our temporary ae2 area i've already got one of them behind there but i need to grab all of this stuff anyway to move it over there so i might as well demolish all of this get it shifted and then we can craft whatever we need to while we're over there All right, my first dense energy cell is going in. That's already got 1.6 million AE in it. And now I need to craft some more. There we go. Three more dense energy cells to go in there. And they should all start filling in very quickly. And I need to run that into all of the different buildings, in all of the walls and everything like that. But there's no point in doing that until I know what I'm putting in and where I'm putting it. One place that I know that it definitely needs to go is in here, where our brain of the machine is going to be going. And in order to make that, I'm going to need the ME controllers, which are these crazy looking things. What am I missing? Skystone block. I gotta smelt it. Okay, so now I'm cooking some Skystone up into Skystone block. And while that's doing that, I need to get some of the inscribers set up over at the new lab. So let's hop over there again. I'm so glad I got these waystones. And now I need to consider which colored area do I want to be processing stuff in. And I think we'll start with the red one, seeing so it's closest. And maybe we could get the inscribers set up in here. Now there's going to be a whole bunch of stuff that I actually need to do in order to fully automate this inscriber process because I want to fully automate the production of all of the different things but for now we'll just chuck a few down get some power into them and make the bits we need and for power i need a whole bunch more of this cable give me a load of those please thank you 342 should be fine for now let's get it out of here into our crawl space and then figure out how i'm going to get small enough to get in here there we go now i'm very small what if you need to run two cables side by side? Then we're going to have a problem. This needs to go, I believe, down to one of these little bits here. If we're getting it over to that blue bit. So let's bring it across here. There we go. We have power in the room. Now I need to get myself a little knife so that I can craft up a bunch of these anchors. And with these anchors, I can make something called a facade. And I can make any type I want. And with these, I can cover up that mess. And no one would ever know. Now is that going to be... Yeah, look at that. It's online. Now, if I put my inscribers along the wall like this instead of diagonally across the room, they should all get power from each other, which they have. Now I just need to process all the stuff with them. Now I'm spending all of my diamonds on these printed circuits. And then I can throw one of those in there with some of those and a bit of redstone. And now I'm getting engineering processors. Okay, with these engineering processors, I can now craft up these, I believe, four ME controllers. Now I'm really hoping, I'm really, really hoping that my design isn't completely useless because I'm really hoping I can just put these in here. Oh, I need eight of them like that next to each other, but I don't know if I can. So let's go back to somewhere with a bit of power and we'll maybe just run ourselves a little bit of a power test line over in this direction so that we can test a few things out. If I put one there, there we go. Look at that. Now, if I put those next to it, yes, they connect. Oh, that's good. So I need four more. And here we go. Four more. Now, if I put these on top of these, oh, look at that. One big old brain. Now we just need this where it's actually going to be living, which is right in here. And then I need to get power to it. And then it needs a bunch of cables on it to connect to everything else. Okay, I have a hole all the way through into this bit. And we've got a hole ready to go to our server room. So that's good. 
And then I need a hole all the way down the bottom. And then I just need to pipe this down this way, leaving myself plenty of room for other cables if I need them in future. Put the brain back on there. And for now, while I don't need any other cables, I'm just going to box in the rest of that with this, and then I'll make some facades to cover that up. Just like that. Lovely. No one would ever know. My bald eagle, what are you doing in the wall, friend? You're supposed to be keeping in charge of my power systems, making sure nobody steals it. Don't fall in the wall again. So why am I having power in the floor? To make it look nice, of course. Power the brain, go. Is it powered? It is. Oh, wonderful. So with the brain now in place and my bald eagle seemingly having wandered off somewhere. Oh, jeez, where did he go? That could be his name, Ego. Ego! Oh, he's gone. It's time to craft up some servers and some terminals. Okay, I've crafted a terminal. That means I have access. But I don't think I can do anything with it yet because we've got nowhere to store anything. And we're probably going to have terminals scattered all over this building. But unfortunately, terminals do require one channel of AE channel stuff and channels are going to get very complicated this cable can carry up to eight channels at once and once you go over that well the other things stop working so i'm gonna to have to be very careful with the cabling and how i do it now at the moment i am just using this very basic cable just to get basic power to things but i'm going to be upgrading that to the thick dense cable stuff and color coordinated in it all and making sure that we don't have those sorts of problems now i did craft up a big 256k storage component when we wanted to make our singularity although apparently i only needed the 64 4k1 but that doesn't matter and now i can make my first me drive which is going to be the start of our server rack and they're going to be filled with a whole bunch of these 256k me item storage cells hopefully which means i need one of those houses need a house yeah i need it now i need a house mate and then i can get that there we go the eagle just went through the teleporter i heard it why are you doing that eagle no teleporting around you weirdo <laughs> anyway i was in the middle of trying to figure out how to make these crazy cables <laughs> and it's not the easiest thing in the world to do apparently did, did you just do it again where did you go <laughs> which one did you go in <laughs> oh he's somewhere in the building <laughs> oh geez that bird's crazy <laughs> oh man who would do it bald eagles just warping around the place <laughs> right i want a bunch of those and with a bunch of those i can make a bunch of those jesus is expensive and with a bunch of those i can make a bunch of those and with a bunch of those i can't i don't even have enough to make eight. Oh jeez, this is so expensive it's gonna cost me a lot of wool good job i got a wool farm you've got a wolf arm yeah i've got an arm made of wolf yeah okay but now at least i can have a bunch of those nice bright red ones wonderful <laughs> that's gonna give us one set of cables from our brain and that's gonna come on there like that and that needs to come all the way into our networking room and i don't know how i'm gonna lay this out yet i haven't really thought that far through i guess we could use a bit of stone to do that now and i think having them maybe a couple of blocks apart in rows like this and i guess this red one wants to come down to the front and we just want to put our drive on there stick our big old storage thingy in it and we should probably have a terminal in here as well really pop another one of those there and stick that on there there we go can i put things in it <gasps> i can i can put things in guys oh this is good but my plan is in here to have a whole bunch of them However, each one of these drives itself is going to cost one channel, so I don't know how many I'll be able to have on each one of these strips, but I'm sure we'll find out. Now, can I put facades on the floor? I can. Oh, and the connected textures work as well. I don't need to. I could quite easily come in from underneath, to be honest with you, which I think I'll do, because that's going to save me money. Save you money. Be able to save me on facade, mate. Facade you. That didn't work second time round. First time it was funny, second time it's not funny. So what I'm going to do now, rather than boring you all to death with all of this different ME stuff, is I'm going to go into the cupboard, hop downstairs on a teleporter, and spend many, many hours off camera just getting all of this stuff set up and automated, because I'm sure you don't want boring to death with all of this cable routing and crafting, and it's going to be a long, boring process. So I'll be back when I've... When I've done loads i guess well realistically i'm not much further along than i was before but it's taken hours to get to where i'm at as you can see in this room we've got all of the inscribers set up now and these are all fully automated each one's got a little redstone level emitter underneath that stops it when we get enough items in our system and you can see i've been crafting up a whole bunch of items and that's what's been taking so long but we've now got an inscriber for all of the useful things that i need to produce and it's eaten through an absolute ton of my diamonds 
Before I started this, I had over 50 diamond blocks, and now I've just got 176 diamonds, which isn't ideal, but there we go. This is all running on this dense smart cable, and that dense smart cable allows up to 32 channels. Behind the wall, that then gets sent through a peer-to-peer -peer tunnel into this normal smart cable, which can only take eight channels, but because it's going through that, all of these 32 channels effectively just become one, which is very useful. Because back up in the middle of the building where our brain is just below, I've had to put in all of these dense cables to connect to all of the different floors. So each floor's got its own color, and each section is going to have its own little peer-to-peer -peer network and I've even put our storage system on one of those as well so that I can basically plug more things in without taking up all of the channels. And just making all of this cable itself has just took me ages, tons and tons of resources and a lot of redstone and glowstone which I've now pumped a whole bunch of this in here because I've made a farm. And that farm is over here at the snowy area. If you remember back a few episodes ago in the top of this building, we actually had a little redstone farm and that was just up these stairs all the way up here. But it's gone now because I moved it. I actually moved it down into this room below here because I've split it in two. This is now a redstone and a glowstone farm, although it is relatively manual. It's not automating getting any of the items in or getting any of them out. But here's how it works. We've got the nether wart going in there, which is creating awkward potion. That's getting pumped through into these two mixers. One of them's getting blaze powder and that's turned into strength potion. And the other one is getting golden carrots and that's getting turned into night vision. And golden carrots are easy to produce because I've got a whole ton of carrots and in my backpack I've got a whole ton of gold. So I crafted up absolutely loads of them, stuck them in the machine and then this cinder flower gets squirted on on both sides. That gets turned into glowstone and that gets turned into redstone. But as you can see it's all stopped and the reason it stopped is because if I can get round to it we've run out of fuel. See, these blaze burners all were running off coal, and my little coal barrels run out. Give me all that glowstone. And now give me all of that redstone. And getting on is exactly what I'm going to do next. Before I do a massive big jump into the future, though, with even more of this stuff done, what I really need is wireless access to this, because it's quite annoying having to keep coming back to these terminals, grabbing stuff, going off, and then coming back again. So I'm going to build a wireless terminal. And using my new fancy teleporter, I can get right back into the middle of here, which is going to be a useful spot for me to be able to get to. Right now, this wireless transmitter, I've no idea what the range is going to be like, but I kind of need it somewhere central, so I think putting it in on there might be a good idea. Device is not linked. Can I, do I just link it with that? Yeah, there we go. The, but this is going to need power. Let's just slap that there for a minute, shove that in there, get it charged up. And while that's charging, I should really think about making some of these boosters. Now the problem is my storage is actually full. I can't put anything else in it, which is a bit of a problem. So we're going to need more drives. But is my charging now charged? It is. Excellent. Why, it's out of range. Oh my goodness me. Right, put the boosters in. Still only got a range of 24 meters. All right, I'll have a bunch more then. 47 meters. This is exactly why we needed that singularity, but I'm not ready for that yet because that's going to give us, well, basically infinite range in any dimension. But yeah, I'm not ready for that yet. I just need to be able to use this around the factory, babe. So can I actually use this here? Oh, I can. But at least I can use it in the vicinity of the factory now. So that's good. Can I use it in here? Yes, I can. A little while later, I've got another room done. This one is producing our Certus Quartz. It's got five growth accelerators all the way around that flawless quartz and we're using an annihilation plane that's enchanted with fortune 3 to break them and then put them in this storage drawer here so that we're not wasting space on our storage discs likewise we've got an amethyst one here except for this one needs an observer to actually make sure it only breaks when it's at the full size otherwise it just breaks any old size which isn't ideal but it's working and i've also brought my glowstone and my redstone over here and put those in storage drawers as well to save on more space in the inventory and these have got storage buses and export buses on there so even if i put stuff straight into the system it's going to get pushed out and put into these storage drawers so i'm pretty happy with this little room and the next room that we'll be going through to will be will be the yellow one and this is where all of the items are going to be coming in from outside and i'm not ready for that yet because we've only got two drives in the system and not enough space to put them all in and that means that the last major room on this floor is going to be this one here but this is part of our power network area so i think at some point in the future if we need more power what i'm going to do is just fill it full of these things which are the dense energy cells. So if that's all of the rooms on this floor accounted for, it's time to go up to the second floor and start working on some of these rooms. Oh, I've gone up to the wrong bit. That's not the second floor, mate, you moron. 
This is the second floor. Why are you using the angled rooms instead of the square ones? Well, the, the, the square one's got a lot of doors, you see, so there's not much space around it. And I kind of like the funky sort of angles we're getting on the diagonal ones, so that's why. So shut up. And the next part of my devious plan is now put together. We're now producing charged Certus Quartz here, which is only going to produce 4,096. Once we've got that many in there, this will stop. And we're also producing Fluix Crystal with the thanks to a bit of Create. We've got a mixing bowl there. We've got an import bus chucking in Redstone, Quartz and charged Fluix Crystals. Again, if we get too many of those, it's going to stop. So we're not overproducing. Still need to produce this Fluix dust, which I can either do by crushing the stuff or by milling the stuff or just using another inscriber. And I can probably squeeze an inscriber in next to this thing and make this room a little bit more symmetrical. And there we go. That wasn't too difficult at all. That's going to produce that Fluix dust and that's just going to get stored in here until again we got 4096 of that and then it's going to stop due to this nice little emitter thing down here. If you're wondering how these things work, we've basically got import and export buses on there. And that means that it gets items out of the storage system and then puts them back in again once it's finished producing them. And each one of these can be filtered to tell it what you want to do. And on the back, we've got this little little toggle bus and what that does is basically stops power going into it once this little emitter at the bottom goes off and that goes off once we've got the right number in the storage system so it's all rather smart and rather clever and what's really nice is my little terminal to access everything just goes on my belt slot here although it's nearly run out of power again. And I can just access it by pressing I on my keyboard and just having access to all of those things. The only downside to this compared to the backpacks is that the backpacks will actually allow you to pick up items that are on the floor. But that said, you can get a magnet card for this to do the same thing. But the thing I'm going to really miss from the backpacks is, let's say that I'm working with this and I want some more. Even if it's not in my inventory, if I middle click, I can refill straight from my backpack. And as far as I'm aware, there's no such function for that for applied energistics too so that means i'll probably end up carrying at least one backpack around with me with all of my very valuable things and maybe just stuff i'm building with at the time but otherwise i shall be using all of this stuff because it's amazing the brain is evolving as you can see it just got a whole bunch bigger and that's because i'm having issues with channels now me has this weird channel thing where you can only have a certain number of channels going down a certain number of cables and once you've had too many things on it it basically stops working and in order to make most of the channels we can use these peer-to-peer -peer tunnels which allow you to transfer a lot more but you need multiple tunnels to have multiple channels so by doing this design i can now have three tunnels per cable which means i can actually plug a whole bunch more stuff in now there is a command to actually just get rid of channels altogether and i was tempted to use that because this channel system's not really all that much fun and i don't really think it adds a great deal to it but i'm going to play it properly so now what i've got to do is link all of these channels with separate device id to the oh my it's, it's a nightmare so connecting the blue one i shift click on that and then what i do is i go to somewhere that's got a bunch of devices smash my way through the wall so i can get in although i can actually reach it here and then click on that and then that connects this network to that particular interface now i'm sure this is going over most people's heads it's pretty much going over mine so i'm just gonna take some time to sort all of this out and i'll be back with you in a little while and now that that's all sorted i should show you the next room that i'm working on we've got a mechanical crafter which is creating the quartz glass taken from the normal glass we've also got some coal in here which i've just dumped in we're not actually generating that anywhere and over here we're creating silicon in this blast furnace and we're creating skystone blocks in that one and there we go the room's all tidy now that means this room is 100 complete time for the next room well this room's fancy we've got some auto crafting going on with these molecular assemblers what we've got going on here is this little interface that says i want a stack of each one of these holding in the inventory and what that does is it then tells these crafting units to go ahead and start crafting them using these molecular assemblers and these pattern providers on the top that have got patterns in basically pass the item straight into there for it to do it and there you go you can see that one crafting up a whole bunch of those fluix cables there and they're going to all be getting turned into these cables here oh this is all very good so that means I'm always going to have a whole bunch of cable in stock when I need it. But it'll only ever keep 64 because, well, we don't need more than that. Do you know what else I want this to make? These little cable anchors. And in order to do this, it's pretty easy. You come to the encoding terminal there, find yourself a recipe that you want and throw it into there. Although this wants a knife. Oh, can I not make those without a knife? Really? So I'll have a pattern encoder for the knife and we'll just save that to that. 
there we go and then we're going to need another one for the cable anchors and i guess i can throw the knife one in there and the cable anchor one in there and if i craft myself up one of these quartz knives i can then put it in there and tell it that i want one and cable anchors i'm going to want 64 at a time now you can't do any more than 64 you can only ha hold a stack at a time in these but i could potentially have multiple of these with multiple stacks in but 64 is going to be fine. There you go, little storage system. You've got loads of sticks now, so can it craft those things? It is doing. It's crafting knives and it's crafting those. Oh, this is good. Look at it go. We've already got 64. Oh, wonderful. And this room might look very similar to the last because it's pretty much identical. This time, though, instead of crafting up the cables, I'm crafting up the little storage thing in the bobs. As you can see, it's currently on its way to being crafted in the 64K storage, but I guess it's probably run out of things to craft them with. We got no logic processors left, but I'm going to have to wait for those to come through until it starts crafting more. And that means that soon we'll be automatically processing 256K storage components. And this is currently completely empty. And that's because that's going to be generating our network cards. And as much as I could speed up the production of a whole bunch of these things by just adding in a whole bunch of access accelerator cards and things like that realistically i only need it to do it once i only need that story system filling up once and then we won't need any of this anymore so i might as well just let this run in the background actually do you know what i might as well make a couple of accelerator cards and just get this oh geez it's diamonds of course it's diamonds well, in that case, we won't have many. Probably just enough to speed up this little area a little bit. So let's get all of these little presses sped up with a whole bunch of these accelerator cards. A little while later, and I'm now crafting the final 256K item storage cell for our first drive. That means we've now got 10 of them all together, which means we can store a whole bunch of things. And it means I can start working on the next one of these drives and slowly filling in this room. And that's not the only thing that I've done. I've also spent a little bit of time with Ego over in the power area. Where's he gone? It's kind of, he was in here. Well, anyway, I've added in a whole new boiler system and we're generating a whole bunch more Ray E again. Then if I click on the system, it shows that we're actually generating almost twice as much as we're using now, which is very very nice. Have you, have you gone down the hot? Why are you down there, Ego? I can't trust you at all, can I? Always trying to find yourself in places you shouldn't be. Just be careful. Biodiesel. I need it in massive quantities and I'm going to be producing a whole bunch of it today. But before we get to that, in the last couple of episodes, I've been building this massive storage building, which is basically for all of my applied energistics to store. And it's nearly finished. If we hop inside, I've now named all of the different areas in this building so it's easy to find my way around. And I've even started adding in some stuff ready for our bulk items on the upper two floors. I've also crafted my Myself a wireless universal terminal and I put in a whole bunch of energy cards in this and even a quantum bridge card but we'll get to that in a little while and if I hop up here and go this way into bulk dirt you can see it's very simple it's just a bunch of storage drawers behind them we've got a storage drawer controller with an export bus and a storage bus on there moving on to our bulk stone storage area and it's pretty much exactly the same thing but for a whole variety of different stones carrying on through the building we get to bulk sand which is just for bulk sand and then we've got an area that's for bulk X. And I don't know what items we're going to have in bulk until I start getting those items over here from where they're currently living. So we've got logs in here, which is just both normal logs and their strip variants. And going through into the next room, this is where the planks are going to be. So we're going to have all of the vanilla plank types here. And I've also added a couple of auto crafting stations in here. So if I need a bunch of planks, I can just open up my terminal. And let's say I want oak plants and there's none left. You can see it says craft and I can say, right, I need 10 of those. And then I just click next, click start, and that's just going to craft away, which is very useful. And I'll be able to do that from anywhere in the world, but not yet. So yeah, we're pretty much here with everything in this building now. That said, my little network has still only got one drive in it, and that's because it's gone through thousands of redstone just producing nine more 256k storage components it's 212 redstone per one of those and each of the other ingredients need a whole bunch of redstone as well so it's just really expensive and again in the comments people have said well you don't need to use the 256k ones so you might as well 
just make the 64 and the 16k ones. So I'm going to craft up a whole bunch of those, get a few more bits of storage in here, and then we can actually look at getting our items over here. Because currently most of them are stored in this building here, in some massive containers we've got underground, and they all need bringing over from there into there and imported into the system. But before I do that, what I'd really like to be able to do is actually access my wireless terminal from here, but you can see my wireless is out of range, so I need to get that sorted out. But before I can do that, I actually need to go back over to our snowy area and hop over to my little glowstone and redstone farm, which should have been chugging away, getting us a whole bunch more glowstone and redstone. Here it is, look. So I'll just take all of this and I'll grab all of this as well. It's raining glowstone. So now that I'm swimming in glowstone and redstone again, let's have a look at crafting a quantum bridge. And for that, I need a quantum ring, which is quite an expensive thing to craft. And what I should probably do is tell my system to stop trying to craft those ridiculous storage cards, otherwise I'm not going to have any redstone left to make this bridge with. Mate, are you building a bridge? Yeah, building a bridge, mate. But while I've got nine of those things, I might as well craft another nine of those. So redstone's currently being used in here to produce these things, so I don't mind it being in there, that's fine, because we need those for what we're doing next. And it's also being used in here to generate this quartz stuff. So let's just change this from 4096 to 2048, because that's more than enough. And there we go. My redstone's not going down too quickly now. So I think I dare throw a whole bunch more of that in there. So coming back to these quantum bridges then, what am I short on now? Nothing, apparently, but I don't know exactly how many I need. Eight of them. Seven, eight. Yes, I can craft all of those. And then I can have one of those. And I've made the advancement quantum tunneling. But where are we going to be putting this quantum ring? No, I could just might hide it down here with a mess of all these cables where my wireless receiver is. Well, that doesn't seem very interesting. So how about the roof? Although I've got a two wide middle and this thing's going to be one wide, but that's fine. No, I did want to have a really interesting structure on the roofs. And because I've not done this before and I don't really know what design we're having, I'm just going to keep this very simple for now. And I think I just need to do that. There we go. Grab one of my entangled quantum links. Remember we made those in an episode not too long ago. I throw it in there. I put the other one in my wireless terminal. I need to now run that through here, but I don't want to just go straight down from there. I'm going to need to go from the other side. Oh my goodness me. I haven't planned this out very well at all, have I? What, do you, what, what, what are you saying? I need to go all the way underneath it and all the way around, so I'm going to need a whole bunch more cable than that. You see, I need to come down from underneath this thing because I'm plugged in completely at the top. There's no more room up there unless I start coming around the sides here, and I don't want to make a mess of this, so I'm going to have to come from underneath. But it's okay. All I need to do is just connect it in here. Ring! it down this hole and basically just follow the same line as this red cable which does the same sort of thing and bring it into this crawl space here that gets us up to the middle here but i need this all the way to the roof Aha, we have made it to the crawl space at the very top of the building i just need to get it over to the hole it's gonna pop out here and go into there and hopefully that's gonna connect and maybe i need to connect it to the middle bit i'm not sure oh no it's online it's online. It's online. It's bedtime. It is bedtime. You're right. We should probably go to sleep. And I should probably consider putting some lighting on this roof as well. But for now, we won't worry about it. So does that mean then that I can now use this anywhere? I don't know. Let's go find out. Let's fly away way out of the range of our building and see if it works. It, it does. Can I use it over here? I can. Can I use it all the way back at Hill Valley? Yes, I can. Oh, this is wonderful. What about in another dimension? I am in the nether and I've got access. This is incredible. Access to all of my storage wherever I am in the world. Okay, so while I'm in the nether, I've actually got another quick job to do here. And that is to craft up a quick waystone. And there we go. A brand new waystone. And now, oh. It's floating. And now I don't have to worry about flying around for miles actually trying to find a portal to use. Now I can just hop back straight from there and hop straight into the nether. Oh, this is all very convenient. Okay, well, good. Now that we've got that in place, at some point in the future, I'm sure I can decorate that. But right now, my main priority is to get all of my items into here. So I'm going to need a vehicle and I'm going to need a whole bunch more of those drives to put it in. But let's go build a vehicle first. Are you ready? There we go. We have two amazing looking trucks ready to take our storage from our storage building all the way over to the new building. They're pretty similar in design to the tanker that we've got over there, but slightly different. They will turn in the middle just like that one did, and they have got storage interfaces which sit just underneath there, which connect to these here. And that does mean I've had to move things around a little bit in here in order to get the storage out of our storage vaults into this system. So now all of the trucks have drivers, they've got schedules 
individuals. They've all got stations in everywhere, and I've even tried to put signals in to stop everything crashing into each other. These two trucks come over to the store and send like this, and then I've limited their max speed as well to make it a little bit more realistic of them actually being, you know, in a working area. We don't want them running over people, although this is perhaps a little bit slow. But this one's going to go all the way to the end there, reverse in here. He's not going to offload his items because, well, I haven't done that bit yet. And then he's going to leave again. As you can see, I haven't done anything with the barriers yet. They don't go up or down. That all needs fixing as well. But other than that, I think everything's working okay. Apart from the ridiculously slow speed they're going at. So excuse me, driver. Let's make that 20% instead of 10. There we go. Let's see if that's any better. Yeah, that's a more reasonable speed, I think. Oh, and that one's already on his way out again now. And now the other one is coming back as well. And that one's going in the wall, the same place. But it stopped. Oh, that worked well. That's good. We should probably have some traffic lights or something there. But that's fine for now. And he's coming in here and the other one's trying to go out. And they don't want to interfere with each other. Oh, look at this. It's all working rather well until they all get totally stuck. Well, it was going well. How did you get stuck? Let's see what's going on with these signals. Now, you're coming on to green, but you're leaving green you're going into yellow but this one's still technically in yellow why is it so complicated so let's slap that there let's slap that on there another one there ah is that sorted it there we go and there we go that's the barriers sorted out when the trucks arrive the barriers will open to allow them in and then they get five seconds to come through otherwise they're going to get squished by the barrier but that's absolutely fine you, you can come in you better come in quick sir there you go that's it and now the barrier should come down look at that it's amazing stop before it barrier goes up off he goes oh that's amazing so i need to get them out of there and into there but then how am i going to get them digitized a little while later and i've changed things up a bit i've now got this little overhang and two loading bays although i have put glass in there only because i don't really want things wandering into this building without me being here coming around to the other side where the door's been moved to if we go in here there's a big old shipping container here and some item drains there because i want to avoid using power as much as possible here just because i don't really want to have to root it all the Away from the other side of the building all the way over here just for a couple of belts so the next thing i can do is stick on a couple of funnels on there so that the items go in put the funnels on there so the items come out and then i'm just going to put a couple of floorboards on the top with some frame glass just so that i can see what's going on there and just disguise that a little bit so now all we've got to do is get them out of there and get them into our AE2 system. But let's just make sure it's going to work. We've got a lorry turning up here. The grey lorry comes to this one. The red lorry comes to this one. So they can both offload at the same time if they both arrive at the same time. And there we go. The items are coming through and they're going in there. Fantastic. So getting the items out of here into the system then. We're going to have to run some cable in from our main system all the way through into here. So at least we've got some ME stuff over here. So now that we've got a connection to our system and we've got all of our items in here, we need to get the items out of there into the system. And the way I think I want to do that is with these annihilation plates. See, an annihilation plate basically will take any items and just destroy it by putting it into the system. For instance, some slime balls. If I type in slime, we have absolutely none in the system at all. But if I throw one at that, you can see it just disappears and they appear inside the system. Very easy. And I could just put that there and literally just have a brat. It stole my funnel. So I could literally just run a line of that cable down there, have one or two of those on there, and then <laughs> they're just going to disappear into the system. Off they go. Now, the only problem with this is if there's ever a problem with the network, it just means that items are going to be sat there despawning, which is not ideal. So ideally, I want a solution that doesn't involve items just being sat on the floor doing nothing. Now, there is another way I can do this, actually, and it's going to be a lot simpler than adding in a bunch of storage drawers, and that's to put an import bus on here. If I connect that to this, there, then that can just import items directly from this into the system but as you can see from the little ticker at the top it's very very slow but i can add accelerator cards and there we go we now got three import buses with maximum acceleration on there and that should take the items out of there way faster than they can go in and we can keep this entire thing really nice and minimal now i could add another three of those on there but i really don't think i need to the items should be coming in from this they are and they're not even going in here because they're just going 
going straight into the system faster than you can say lickety split. Now what I've got to be careful of is whatever we're getting in ridiculous quantities. I'm going to need to make sure I've got plenty of storage for things like scoria. But don't forget right at the beginning of this episode I mentioned that I had a whole bunch of areas that were designed exactly for things that I got in crazy quantities that we can save our storage on. A little while later in this server system is getting fuller. We've got two drives full of 256k storage and we've got a whole bunch with 16k storage and the reason for that rather than using the 256k one is basically because it's eating through all of my redstone so now I'm not even producing those I'm just producing 4k ones and we've got 26 of those already anyway while all of my items continue to come in and fill up my storage I think it's about time we got on with today's actual task <laughs> which is producing biodiesel and not just a small amount an infinite amount <laughs> why haven't you put all of the things out of your backpacks into the storage system yet the thing is this storage system's amazing the new one we've got but it, I, i'm kind of used to using the backpacks and i think if i put everything in there then i'll be sad that i don't have my backpacks anymore <laughs> So I don't dare. You what? You built all of that big, huge storage system thing and you're not even going to use it. I am, I am going to use it. I, I will. I just, you know, just the things, these things take time. Put it in the storage system. Well, I, but, it, but the thing is, mate, um, well, I can't because it's bedtime. I just, it's, oh, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to because I'll be too busy sleeping. Do it when you wake up. No. Okay, fine. I'm doing the backpacks. So I'm just going to put it on there and that should hopefully just suck all of the items out. All right, big backpack. It was nice knowing you, mate. I could probably get away with doing this one as well. You should do all of them. But what if I need the thing? You won't. Okay, fine. I'll do this one as well. And you create one. But if I put that in there, it's going to eat all of my diamonds and my redstone. So maybe... Maybe I should keep one backpack that can feed me, because don't forget they're good for feeding you, and has all of the crafting stuff in it as well, and my diamonds, okay? So I'll put all the create stuff in there, but it's not having my diamonds. Well, that's it. All of my backpacks are now empty, except for the one on my back, which has my shinies and my tools. And that's basically it, which means that our new system has absolutely everything inside of it. And it looks a bit of a mess, but I'm sure I'll get used to it. Anyway, that's enough for fiddling about with backpacks. We've taken far too much of this episode up doing other things. It's time to get this biodiesel place done. <laughs> but before I do that, geez, it's been another day on the server and I want to... It's still full? How is it still... Oh my goodness, I can't believe how many items this thing's got. What? There's still millions of items coming through from the trains. Anyway, right, diesel. Now, I know we've covered biodiesel before, but here's a quick recap. Biodiesel is made by mixing ethanol and plant oil. Ethanol is made by fermenting bone meal and some sort of vegetable, and we can use tomatoes. And plant oil is made by pressing seeds, and guess what? We can use tomato seeds. So we can basically run this entire thing on tomatoes. Now, I don't have any tomatoes in my inventory yet, but hopping back over to our snowy area, we've got 37. Uh, well, uh, okay, I guess they're on the way. They're probably in those containers then. We've basically got thousands. But even though we do have thousands over there, we're still going to be growing our own for this. It's going to be completely self-sufficient. The only ingredient we're going to be lacking here is bone meal but guess what we can make bone meal from tomatoes as well so what i'm thinking here is we're going to have a little gas stop or if you're from the uk like me a petrol station we're going to have a little building here with all of our processing a tomato plantation at the back that will be automatically harvested and out the front here we'll have some of those you know things that you turn up to and pump your gas into your vehicle so it's going to be quite a big build and there's quite a lot going on but because we've done it before it really shouldn't be all too difficult and this is the bit where i go so i started by doing this and then i did this and then i did this and then i did uh, and, you, and you get the idea so i guess i better start doing this what's this planted planting tomato seeds mate so i started by doing this and then i did that and then i did this and then i did that and then it suddenly seemed like a good idea to go around all of the areas of my world breaking all of my junk chests and getting all of the randomly scattered items into my new storage system so i did that and then i did this and then i did that and i even got an achievement for doing that and finally after doing this everything was done that's a lot of tomatoes and it's all growing on peat so it should all grow oh, look we've already got some 
Oh, jeez. Pete's amazing, mate. Oh, I love Pete. He's really nice, isn't he? No, not, not the bloke. The farmland Pete. Jeez. Spelt differently. It's P-E-A-T, not P-E-T-E. Jeez. Well, shut up. And now that all of my tomatoes are in place, it's time to make a harvesting system to harvest them all automatically and get us an absolute ton of the stuff. So first, I'm going to place down an absolute ton of this gantry shaft all the way along the side of this farm thing that I made. Farm thing? Yeah, the farm thing that I made. And of course, that's going to need power. We'll have to get to that in a little while. And I could have sworn I had a little gantry carriage thing somewhere, but I guess not. So we'll craft one and we'll just pop that on there. And I've got no harvesters either, so we'll have to... Cra oh, jeez. Why have I never got any iron sheet? I suppose now that I've got 51,000 iron nuggets in this system, as well as 3,000 blocks of iron in my backpack, I probably shouldn't be struggling for iron sheet round about now. So I'm just going to craft up a ridiculous amount of it. And now we're producing all of the iron sheets. So now that I've crafted up a whole bunch of create stuff, I can actually get cracking on with this thing. go there we go now it's going and it's very slow but that's fine it doesn't need to go quickly all it's gonna do is harvest us a whole bunch wow it's got 39 already and it's only got to here jeez we're gonna have a lot of tomatoes right now what i need to do is actually make sure it's got somewhere to offload to and i think for now we'll just use my item drain trick so let's stick a shipping container here it doesn't need to be a giant one that'll do and then if i just stick that funnel on there and that one in there they should all be able to offload into there pretty easily eventually when it gets back any minute now there it goes the items are going in is that it oh, why are you why you're not connected anymore oh because once it's finished moving it's no longer a contraption it's just stationary in the world okay in that case i've got a better idea let's get rid of that let's get rid of that and that and that and that and that and let's get rid of this and we'll just literally have that going in there and that coming off there and then when it comes back the barrel will just line up with that and it can come straight out and there we go barrel's empty now and now what i'm going to do is take a whole bunch of these cut andesite slabs and waterlog them all so that i can put torches along here to make sure we don't get anything spawning in our tomato field and ruining the field I'm just as i finish placing the torches it's going again well that's good because a lot of the field is red don't tell me this thing's full already it can't be full it's what a few minutes later and i've changed this up a little bit i've put some tough blocks around the outside for decoration and i've replaced the andesite with torches with tough slabs with some of the nice little zinc lamps on to keep things nice and light and now i'm just fiddling with this actual pulse generator thing to get it to go see i thought these would give a pulse every 20 seconds but they don't they just extend the amount of time when you get a pulse to when it gets sent out so what i want to do is when it gets back to where it is i want to fire off a signal to pulse it so it should go all the way there come back drop off its tomato assuming the crate wasn't full and then wait 20 seconds and go again and any second now that should fire and send it off again there we go 20 seconds later it started again which means it should be going and it why is it stopped there it did this a minute why why are you stop supposed to go 45 meters mate i don't know what that looks like to you but to me that does not look like 45 meters it looks like one meter <laughs> Is it these? I thought once it was a contraption, it doesn't care about what it bangs into. Okay, let's try that again. Take that away. Put it back again. Oh, and well, now it's going to go. So it was the little torches. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Okay, we need to stop it again. I guess I had so much fun hoeing it all the first time, I get the pleasure of doing it all again. Oh, goody. To be fair, I should have known this because I've had this exact problem before. Okay, so assuming this is actually working now and it's not just going to cause loads of problems, it's time I got this building in place so that we can actually start processing the stuff. So it must be time for one of those tasty montages. Tasty? Yeah, well, we're doing tomatoes made, aren't we? It's weird how you say tomatoes. No, it's British. Tomatoes is American. Tomatoes the British.
here we go the gas station is complete complete with these little petrol pumps with the ropes on and it dug i really like it i really like how it's all come out except for one thing i really like that this is raised and this is raised and this is raised but because of that that makes this building feel very flat and the path around it well it feels very flat so what can i do about that i'm gonna do it again time to get out the glue there are too many blocks included what it's not that big, mate. Okay, we'll do it a bit at a time then. And up we go. Wow, that's half the building done. And down, and then up. There we go. That should be the entire building up by one block now. Yeah, with a few more slabs later, that looks a whole lot better. And inside is no longer a mob farm. In fact, we've got a wall and lights and two big old rooms. Now, I would very much like to decorate this like an actual filling station with cashiers and items and all that sort of stuff. But realistically, we're going to need a whole bunch of this space to produce this biodiesel. So uh, I don't think that's on the cards. Now, clearly, one of the first things I need to do is actually get those tomatoes in here. And I think the easiest way to do that is to just completely demolish this and actually have it coming into the building. And that means we can make it a whole bunch bigger and it also means we can get the items out of it a whole bunch easier as well. So now we've got items on the inside and we need tomatoes to produce ethanol, we need seeds to produce plant oil and we need more tomatoes to turn into bone meal to also to produce ethanol. And I don't really want to waste any on seeds, but fortunately this farm actually generates quite a lot of rotten tomatoes and you can turn rotten tomatoes straight into seeds. So rotten tomatoes are going to be our seeds and the rest of them are going to be split into two halves, one for bone meal and one for the actual processing. And you get a 65% chance of creating bone meal with a tomato. So it's not bad. We should get a reasonable amount of bone meal from that. Hmm, that said, rotten tomatoes give you an 85% chance of compost. So maybe we should compost those. We can actually haunt tomatoes into rotten tomatoes, which means we could improve the rates of our bone meal. So I've done a little bit of math to try and optimise this production. We need exactly one tomato and one bone meal to make one ethanol. But there's only an 85% chance of a rotten tomato producing some compost. And it takes seven compost to produce one bone meal. That means on average it takes 8.2 rotten tomatoes to make one bone meal. Which means we need to split this line into nine. So nine tomatoes come out at once. One goes directly through here into our actual ethanol producing area. And the other eight come through getting get haunted, turned into rotten tomatoes and turned into compost. And the way I'm going to achieve that is going to be relatively simple. I'll be using a brass funnel on this container and I'm going to set that so that exactly nine come out at once. That will then go into two more. This one will allow eight at a time to get composted and this one's going to allow one at a time to be sent through there. So that's a really nice easy way of splitting everything up to try and make it as exact as possible. That said, we'll still end up with slightly less compost than we will tomatoes because on average it's going to be eight Point two. So really what I should do is set that to 10 and then set that to 9 and then we should hopefully have a little bit of extra compost which is always going to be useful. That said, we can double things up because we've got up to 64 that can come out at a time. So I could say, for instance, set that to 60. And then I've just got to increase the mass here. This will go up to six, and then this one will go up to 54. So we'd have 54 coming out at a time going that way, and six going out at a time through that way. I better get cracking. And a little while later, I think I've got everything in place for the first stage of this. So let me talk you through it. 60 tomatoes at once are going to come out of this vault. They're going to go into that little vault, and they're going to get split on these two funnels. Half of them are going to go up here, and get smoked in there and then they're going to come up there along this conveyor here along this one and into these composters and then they're going to go out of that wall there the other six are going to go up this conveyor straight over there and straight out there and the reason it's all going up is just so it's easy for me to get around the rotten tomatoes are going to come out of here go into that auto craft to get turned into seeds go into that vault come out of there go into there get pressed and then they're going to go into this pipe which goes here doesn't go anywhere yet and neither do these so at this point here we probably need to have a couple more belts like this coming through here and on those probably just some storage drawers to store the compost and the tomatoes until they can be moved into the next processing thing the next processing thing i'm so scientific mate and then we just need a couple of funnels on the back there and these should hopefully start accumulating at a roughly similar rate now that i've got all of this space the other side of the room it probably makes more sense to actually pump everything back in here and have the biodiesel produced at this point in which case that plant oil pipe probably doesn't actually want to go through the wall 
it would probably be better going all the way along the top of the room and down the other side. But because I'm not 100% sure where I want that going to yet or how I want that feeding across, I'm not actually going to activate the seeds yet. But I do want to get these tomatoes going. So we'll stick some tomatoes on there. Set that to 60. Throw that back on there. And we should see this thing in operation. Here we go. Let's follow the ones that are being turned into the stuff that gets turned into the stuff. I, uh, yeah, I see there's a problem here. We've got to back up. But anyway, rotten tomatoes are coming through and they are creating compost, which is fantastic. Yeah, 444 tomatoes already and only seven compost. And these should hopefully start accumulating at a roughly similar rate. Well, you might look at this and call it overkill. We've now got a haunter with 10 fans. It actually only takes a few seconds. So there we go, they're already coming through and then they get sent into these brass funnels and split up and they now go through a whole bunch of composters and then come out at the end here. How's there a backup? I've added even more fans onto this. Oh wow, and they're already coming through. Yes, they're getting turned into rotten tomatoes by the looks of things as quickly as they can go in. I could also, I guess, speed the belts up. That might work. Or slow them down. That might work. No, we really shouldn't have an issue with everything coming through. The bone meal's going to back up, so I really need these belts going faster. We're actually getting almost, almost very similar numbers coming through here, so that's good news. If I put the belt in the floor like that, then potentially I can use a brass funnel on there. Yeah, and I can get stacks of the stuff out at a time. That's better. We're actually getting more bone meal than we are tomatoes. This is fantastic. There are 320 of them in there, though, as these belts need to go faster than those ones. Throw one of those there, one of those there. Wow, look at the speed that we're processing these rotten tomatoes. This is ridiculous. Look at how fast the bone meal's coming out. So now I need to just turn all of this stuff into ethanol. How hard could it be? What could possibly go wrong? Well, I think I've come up with a plan, but I don't know if it's a very good one. But in order to try and maximize this as much as possible, here's my layout. So what we've got is six basins on each one of these, although those ones haven't got any yet. They've got funnels on each side pushing the items in, and each one of the conveyors on each side is going to have a different item. So the tomatoes are going to come out of here. They're going to get split through that tunnel there and across there. And hopefully there'll be enough going through that they can make it all the way down to the bottom of there and then get split evenly on all the belts. The bone meal's going to go up here, get transferred across that vault, come along this conveyor, and these brass funnels will then transfer items down through those chutes and into this side of the belt. And I think this should work. All of the pipes are connected through pumps underneath here, but this doesn't actually go anywhere yet, so I guess we should put a tank on here. Then for now, let's just shove it right behind this wall here. A nice big tank for some biodiesel. Now I just need to get the rest of the basins in. So now all of those are on, we just need funnels going into each one on each side. But I'm not convinced we're going to get all the way down to this end here. Well, there's only one way to find out. Let's get our brass funnels out. Let's stick one on there and let's stick one on there and see what happens. Bone meal is being distributed. That's good. Oh, it is making it all the way down to the end here. But otherwise, everything, all the items seem to have backed up on each of the lanes. So that's good news. And it does look like we are producing. Yes. Wow, quite a lot of ethanol relatively quickly. We've got 32 buckets worth already. That's a lot faster than I thought it would be. And if only we had some more tomatoes in here. Oh, in they go. They're coming through again. Have a look in the old pot. Yes, lots of stuff in there. Well, with all of the tomatoes now backed up and all of the bone meal now backed up and it's generating a whole bunch of ethanol in here, I'm going to call that part of this a success. So now what we need is the plant oil across there as well. And then we need to make biodiesel. And then we've got this big old space here for nothing. Hmm, I'm sure I can find some use for it. Okay, it's time to get this plant oil done, and I think we could probably do with our mechanical crafter going a little bit faster than that, but we'll see how we go. Just need to get this pump powered, which we can do like that, and we need to see how far along here it can actually get before we need more power. It's working all the way from there. Excellent, so now we're getting plant oil in here as well, although very, very slowly, because this auto craft is going super slow, so I need more speed over here. Oh, we're overstressed. Great. Well, well, to be fair, this entire thing is just running off a bunch of water wheels for now because we haven't got any power in place over here. So I guess I'll just add a couple more of these. And we're going again. Excellent. That should mean I can get this going a whole bunch quicker. And that means that auto crafter is going to be making those seeds nice and quickly. And we're going to be getting a whole ton of plant oil through here nice and quickly as well. Brilliant. Excellent. Oh, we're making seed oil as well. I wasn't expecting seed oil. Ah, seed oil is from another one of the add-ons that I added recently and it's not really something I want. I need to get rid of that. And I also need to make sure I'm only pumping plant oil through there and not seed oil. Is there a way to dump fluids in this game? There's only one way to find out. Well, it looks like you can just dump fluid. I'm 
taking all of the seed oil and chucking it in the ground there and all of the plant oil is going exactly where we want it which is great so now that we've got a ridiculous amount of ethanol and we've got a good amount of plant oil coming through it's time to make some biodiesel so to make biodiesel all we've got to do is mix ethanol and plant oil or seed oil apparently so really or seed oil so I don't want to be dumping it. I can also... Oh, jeez, we can have another tank with seed oil in it. Okay, fine. Right. Actually, no. We're not going to use seed oil because that's just going to complicate everything. Going back to biodiesel. All we got to do is mix plant oil and ethanol in a mixer and make biodiesel. So assuming I don't have any of the problems I had last time with all of the ingredients mixing incorrectly and doing all sorts of strange things, I think this is the setup that we need. We're going to take our plant oil and our ethanol out of there, pump it into each side of these mixing bowls, mix three of them together and then just spit out all of the biodiesel into there. So all I need is power and I've got a feeling this is going to over overstress everything yep oh no that means the farm's gonna break don't break oh oh it broke is it not coming back it's just decided to live there now apparently oh god that makes sense mate ah. hey how did the creeper get in my field oh geez all oh, me tomatoes mate took me ages to grow them there we go three more of those should do that for now no you're not going back far enough oh my goodness me that's why it's not deposited no don't go again no 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 it's got it's really got its knickers in a twist this thing so now we've got a whole bunch more power i should be able to do what's the what but i added three more water wheels and now it's broke my i love farming it's my favorite i just can't get enough of all of this late oh i've planted so many tomatoes today it's it's unbelievable call me tomato man why would we call you tomato man because it's a, it's a, i don't know it's just why not i think i may have solved my problems now i've split the power we've got these two water wheels here powering the gantry shaft for the farm and the rest of them are powering the factory i've also added the speed controller on the one for the farm to make sure it doesn't ever get confused and go in the one wrong direction and because it's got its own dedicated power it shouldn't ever stop and chew up my field like it did before and there we go look at that it's going a whole bunch quicker now so in the factory we're now running on completely separate power so when i add one of these and totally overstress it it doesn't upset the farm but what i do need to do now is add in even more water wheels and now look we're producing we're producing biodiesel we've already got two buckets of it 232 buckets of ethanol we've got 52 buckets of plant oil so that's going to equate to basically 300 buckets worth and 300 buckets worth sounds fantastic but what i want to know is how many buckets i get a minute and that's going to be quite difficult to figure out and the reason i want to know that is because well i don't just need 300 buckets worth i need 10,000 buckets worth because i want to produce so much that it's infinite like this lava source and i've already got the area ready for it to be filled into but this could take a very very long time how have you broken again i uh, seriously i am gonna lose my mind field minefield oh no you don't want a minefield you want a tomato field oh, shut up junk load junk load don't do it again well it's been a little while and i'm still fiddling with all this i'm now running the seed oil and the plant oil over here into two separate tanks and i'm pumping those into three separate basins so the plant oil is going into those ones and the seed oil is going in here but the problem now is that the tomatoes are just not coming through fast enough we've hardly got any seed oil or plant oil and we're hardly getting any tomatoes or bone meal if we go through here pretty much everything's empty now because we've used it all we've still got over 189 buckets worth of ethanol though and that's slowly getting turned into biodiesel which we've got 302 buckets of but it's slow going because we just don't have the plant oil but the biggest issue by far is the fact that we just don't have enough tomatoes we've got a whole bunch of them over here but it's still nowhere near enough so i guess i'm going to be going afk for a few nights over here making sure that this grows and grows grows and grows and the other thing i could do to make this grow even better would be to add bees and i found a beehive not so long ago while i was working on all of this and i'm pretty sure i plonked it down here somewhere oh well there's one over there i've got a new job for you guys if you could just make your way back into your nest there we go so if you didn't already know bees actually help speed up the pollination of crops which means if you've got a beehive near your farm there's a good chance that your farm will grow a bit quicker so let's just pop it down there for now on that fence what i might do before this thing comes back again just add a cheaty little platform there and stick the bees right in the middle of the field well, i've got lots of bee nests in my inventory but i don't know if any of them have actually got bees in but i guess there's only one 
one way to find out. Yep, that one's got two. No, none in that one. None in that one. Hi, guys. That one had a baby in it. And there we go. Wow, we got loads of bees. Pollinate my tomatoes, bees. It definitely works. Look at that. As he goes across the field, bone meal in the tomatoes. It's amazing. Well, it's all looking a little bit more bee friendly now. I've placed a bunch of trellises and I've hung the beehives underneath them around the farm. And on top of them, we've got a whole bunch of flowering azaleas, which the bees kind of like. As you can see, they're buzzing around all of these and then they fly over the crops and then they get all of the pollen onto my crops and it makes my tomatoes grow a whole bunch faster, which means that we're now able to produce 100% organic bee-friendly diesel, because that's how diesel works. And the bees are very, very happy spreading their little bits of nectar and bone meal all over my lovely tomatoes. You just keep flying around bone meal and all those tomatoes. Now, I haven't been in what side for a while, so let's see what's going on in here. We still have absolutely no plant oil, but we are nearly full on this giant container. We nearly have 500 buckets worth of biodiesel. That's almost a thousand, and that means that's nearly 10,000. We're nearly there, peeps. Anyway, Mob farms. With the Create Enchantment Industry add-on, it is possible to super enchant books, which means it's possible to teach a blaze burner how to create books with even higher enchantments than you can get in vanilla. For instance, you can create Unbreaking 4 books or Efficiency 6, and I want to do that. But unfortunately, the road to doing that is quite difficult. We need Liquid Hyper Experience, and to get Liquid Hyper Experience, we need Glow Squid and Lapis and Liquid Experience. And Liquid Experience is relatively easy to get. In fact, if we head over to my starter area of this world and go inside this building, over the course of this Let's Play, I've been collecting a bunch of it. I've also got a whole bunch of nuggets of experience in my backpack, which I use for mending my tools when they start running low, like my shovel and my pickaxe. And I can even store my personal experience by standing on this disenchanter, and that all just gets taken away and put in there as well. And there are other ways to get experience too. For example, my spider spawner farm, which uses deployers with swords on it to kill spiders and the skeletons in there as well generates me quite a lot of nuggets of XP and they all just come through into this storage box here and occasionally I gather them throw them into my backpack and just use them for like I said mending my tools but I've done spawner farms in fact that wasn't the only one I've done I also did this one here which is a skeleton spawner farm which generates me slime so I don't really want to go over old ground and I don't really want to convert either of those farms into a hyper experience farm because neither of those farms provide me any creepers and I'm all always ridiculously short on gunpowder. So today I want to make a general purpose mob farm and as you can see I've extended our platform area over here and I've prepared a little area here where I'm going to be building it in the form of a hotel. But before we get on to hotels there's a couple of things I want to discuss from the last video. In the last video we made this petrol station which produces biodiesel from tomatoes grown behind there and I had a whole bunch of comments on how I can improve my tomato growth and you can see I've already set something up here. Tomatoes are from the farmer's delight mod and the farmer's delight mod also has rope and if you put rope up above tomatoes you can see they'll actually grow up to three tall which is very handy that said my harvester will only harvest the bottom row and whilst i could make it bigger to do all three rows that'll kind of upset my bees and i like my bees being here and although i wouldn't have to remove the beehives every time the harvester came along all the bees would just get pushed over here and they'd probably just end up wandering off and i don't really want that to happen so to be honest with you i don't think i'm going to go with making all of these tomato vines even bigger and improving our output because even though my biodiesel tank is completely empty now i've still got a whole bunch of ethanol here we're still producing a ridiculous amount of plant oil and if i go over to my liquid storage building which is just over there you can see i'm already pumping in a whole bunch of biodiesel in here sneaking into cheaty free cam we're already working on the third layer so it's not going to take too long before this fills up and then i'll have an infinite supply and why do i want biodiesel you might be asking well that brings me back to this super enchanting you see liquid experience is required to duplicate enchanted books however if you use hyper experience then you can actually print books that are a higher level than you can get in vanilla as i said a few minutes ago so that's where i want to start a big old mob farm then i guess we're going to need a squid farm at some point so that we can get plenty of squid ink and then we should have enough biodiesel to create some crazy books so this hotel then Obviously, everything around here is not all that tall. And this hotel's probably not going to be all that tall either. So how am I going to make a really efficient, effective mob farm? I'm not. I'm going to make a reasonably effective mob farm, hopefully using as many of the create tools as possible to help me with that. And then hopefully, with the help of some crushing wheels, we'll be able to crush all the mobs down and get all of these nuggets of experience. That's my plan. But well, you'll need to spawn-proof the area and all of that sort of thing. Yep, I will. Underneath here, where I've extended the platform, I've put a whole bunch of torches down because while I was building that roof, this area was 
absolutely littered with mobs. It was crazy. So I know we're going to get plenty. But I will need to go round and light up a whole bunch of the caves under the area. Again, sneaking into Cheaty Free Cam. There I am, look. If we hop down under the world, you can see there's a whole bunch of cave networks around here that I'm going to have to sort out. But that shouldn't take too long. One other thing I've done outside of the video is sort out this storage system. You see, these trucks are coming over from my store and send building over there, bringing all of my items, which are coming from all of the other areas in the world, and bringing them into our AE2 lab here. But the problem was they just weren't unloading their items fast enough. So I sped it right up. And I've done that by removing the container that they were coming into and just put an absolute ton of these import buses on the storage interfaces. And now the items come out of those lorries a whole bunch quicker. And all I'm going to do now is just tidy this up so it's not quite as horrendous. And because all of that's chunk loaded, all of those items should have gone through their ages ago. But every time I come to the store and send to check how many items have gone through, all of the vaults were still full but they're not anymore they're nearly all empty which is very good news because i had a whole ton of items in here in every single one of these vaults was full and the train that drops all the items off was full and the other farms at the other areas were full but now all of these are pretty much empty which means everything's going to end up in that storage system a whole bunch faster so now i've waffled on about all of that sort of stuff i suppose it's probably time i start working on this hotel i mean i normally have a whole bunch of other stuff to do at the beginning of the video but uh I think I'm just going to crack on today. So for those of you that don't know, mobs will spawn from 24 blocks up to 128 blocks away from a player. That means that where I'm going to be, which is probably where all the machines and crushing wheels are going to be, needs to be at least 24 blocks away from where the mobs will spawn. And that means if I'm doing this vertically, then if this was the ground floor, then the mobs are going to be all the way up there. And those yellow blocks indicate the different floors that would spawn on. Each floor is two blocks tall, allowing for most of the mobs, except Tenderman, I guess, because they're a little bit tall, to spawn between those gaps. Well, having that like that would mean this hotel's going to be incredibly tall. And I wasn't really planning on building a skyscraper. So instead, what I think I might do is actually build the ground floor of this hotel into the floor a little bit, but sort of disguise it, I guess. So let's say that we actually had the workings of our hotel down a few blocks then we could actually make the entrance way actually look like a hotel, but realistically it doesn't do anything at all. And then our mob spawning floors wouldn't need to be quite so high in the sky. The only downside to that is I'd have to do a whole bunch of digging in order to make sure that the area below me isn't going to start filling up with mobs as well. And the other thing, of course, that I'm going to need to be very careful of is, as usual, spiders. And I believe it is possible to prevent spider spawns by placing buttons on alternating blocks like that. But if we do that, that's also going to reduce the rates of the other mobs that can spawn there and it's also going to make it quite difficult for the contraption that I've got in mind to move the mobs about to get them where I want them. So this is going to be a bit of trial and error. I think once I've actually got the building in place and we see how the mobs are spawning then I'll have to approach how I'm actually going to deal with them and how I'm going to deal with spiders and whatnot. And I'm also slightly concerned that two block gaps between the layers is not going to be enough when it comes to taller mobs. So I've come over to my test world to find out. 128 blocks above the highest thing down there I've made a little platform which is 24 blocks long. I've then made all of these 16 by 16 floors with tinted glass at the top and then I put a whole bunch of tinted glass above that just to make sure everything's nice and dark. But it looks nice and light on my screen because I've got that gamma mod that allows me to see in the dark just to make life a little bit easier. The bottom floor is three blocks high, the rest are two blocks high and I want to see if anything's actually going to spawn here. So I guess we should turn mob spawning on. And there we go. We're getting things spawning on the bottom floor and we're getting things spawning on the top floor. But are we going to get zombies and things on the top floor or are they only going to be on the bottom? Got a whole bunch of zombies on the bottom floor, but absolutely none of them on the top ones. So does that mean zombies are taller than two blocks? And looking at this, the answer appears to be no. I'm not sure why we didn't get any mobs on those platforms. Oh, now we have. I guess it's just random. So with two blocks tall, we're getting witches, skeletons, zombies and creepers. We are getting a few spiders as well. So yeah, we don't need to have the floors three blocks tall. Two blocks is absolutely fine but now i want to figure out this spider thing so to test this spider theory then i've added in another few floors this time they've all got buttons on and i want to see if any spiders are going to spawn on here at all and they are it doesn't seem to make any difference at all well that sucks how are you supposed to stop spiders spawning then mate is it just because that was near the edge nope they're spawning in regardless of the edge so buttons don't stop spiders from spawning well i guess that's going to stop me wasting my time putting a whole bunch of buttons down so back on the server then moving this pillar down about 15 blocks means our building doesn't need to be quite so tall but it does mean that i'm gonna have to do a whole bunch of digging down here to build a big old basement so i better get cracking the problem is i've got three minecart contraptions in my inventory and i have absolutely no idea which one's which 
Oh, geez. The, any of these could be the world eater. I suppose there's only one way to find out. Let's come over here and hope that I don't destroy absolutely everything putting them down. That is... What is that? I don't even know what that is. And if I don't know what it is, that means it can go. Oh, that was this. <laughs> I didn't even look around. That's my ring for the middle. Oh, geez. Oh, well, it's dead now. I'll have to break that. I totally forgot about this ring. Oopsie. Okay, what's the next one? Oh, that's my trailer for my car. Huh. Okay, well, I don't really want to get rid of that. And this, there we go. That's the one I was looking for. I've got to little, be a little bit careful that it doesn't come all the way through here and start chewing all that up, but it has got a fair way to go before it gets there. So I'm going to let this travel through there and then do it down another layer. It reached where it's going, but it's not far down enough yet. We still got to go another five blocks. Let's do all of that again. And now I realize all of those torches I've just placed down are all going to go again. But that's fine. Well, it looks like we might have found some caves. It's almost at the end. In fact, I think that's probably far enough. I don't think I need a bigger basement than that. But we'll let it go all the way to the end here. And there we go. Jobs are good. Un. So there we go. We've got a little basement inside of our basement. And it's a reasonable size. Although I haven't used anywhere near the amount of space we've actually got. But I don't think I'm going to need all of this space. And that means it's now time to get back up to the top and start actually building this hotel and i should probably sleep oh you missed you rubbish quick run away and this is going to be the floor plan of my hotel and it's pretty big but it needs to be big because otherwise if it's tall and it's not that big it's going to look really weird so yeah it's going to be a big old building it's going to be this shape these two chunks here are going to be our mob spawning platforms once we get to these levels here but rather than me just talking about it let's do a montage i started by creating an entrance area with quartz pillars and an overhang made of frame blocks with variations of granite for the roof i then continued directly upwards concentrating on the detail of the front of the building all the way up to the roof which I even threw a flag on top of. With the front facing skeleton in place I figured out the window design using mainly oak windows, continuing the design across the entire front section of the building and then moved on to the first corner structure mimicking the overall design and structure with a slightly modified window layout. However placing all of the frame blocks and detail was getting a little tedious, especially when working higher up so I grabbed a schematic and quill, made a copy of the front of the corner structure and then used the schematic cannon to clone it to the side. I then threw up a roofed area at the very top of the corner structure, created another schematic of the entire corner structure and then used the schematic cannon again to clone that to the opposite side of the building. And then I made yet another schematic, this time of the entire front section of the building and I used this to create a mirrored version at the back of the building so it looked identical from the back. With all of that done I filled in the side parts of the building and then continued up to the roof where I used more slope frame blocks with more granite variants finishing off the main structure of the hotel. And there it is! Oh, no, wait, that's the picture I've been copying from. This is my version, and it's not bad. I quite like it. It's huge. It's taken forever. Even with the help of the schematic cannon, it's taken hours and hours and hours just to get this far, and it's not finished. And it's all very symmetrical because the front is exactly the same as the back, uh, although it's completely unfinished at the back. But that's fine because it's the inside that counts on this one and so far it hasn't got any insides at all. So we've still got a lot of work to do. But like I said, I'm very happy with it. It's a lot bigger than I expected it to be. It's come out huge compared to everything else. In fact, I think it's even bigger than my storage building, which might make it feel like it stands out a bit here. But by the time it's surrounded by a whole bunch of really big spruce trees, I think it will fit right in and it will feel like it's blending a lot more. And this area is supposed to be a little bit sort of patchwork and mishmash because it's just one of those areas anyway right that's enough of me talking about this building we'll finish the rest of it off later right now i want to get this mob farm in place or at least some mob spawning platforms so we can get some mob spawning in here and obviously they're not going to spawn very well with all of these windows and all of this light coming in so this little area here which is well basically where they're all going to be spawning is going to need some walls but before i put walls in i'm going to put the platforms in and then get the mechanism sorted to push the mob off because well i don't really want mobs spawning in there while i'm working on it and it's gonna be relatively simple just a bunch of platforms and then just some sort of pushing machine to push everything across to one side or even maybe to the middle and then drop them all down a big hole into our basement below where they're gonna be crushed and then we'll get all that tasty xp and a whole bunch of mob drops it's gonna be wonderful peeps before we start on that though it's time for a quick biodiesel check and this thing is filling up quite a lot it might not 
not look like it, but if we cheaty free cam and go down underneath, you can see we've got a whole bunch of layers of this now. Over four layers full. That's going a lot quicker than I expected. So that's good news. Right, anyway, mob farm. I'm flying over towards this thing. It's massive. Yeah, we need it needs a lot of trees around it. These trees, these tall trees like this, this is what I wanted around it. But I don't think you can grow those from saplings, even in this biome. So I might have to take some schematics of those trees and see if we can get them planted over here. Because these trees are very small. And I don't want to do the big 2 by 2 spruce trees because they're massive. But those here, the perfect size. So this mob spawning area is almost exactly two chunks in size. And that means we're only going to need to chunk load these two chunks and not this entire building. So back on my test world then. This is what I want to try and achieve. A sweeper that goes all the way around, gets to the edge of the platform, goes down and then goes underneath all of the platforms, comes back again, and then it will go back up again. And then it will repeat the process over and over and over again. So imagine I was a mob sat on here. I've got enough time to spawn born and then i'm just gonna get pushed off the end and if i was a spider and i was clinging on here i'm gonna get pushed down as well but i've got to do that with multiple levels in a not very big area and back on the server am i gonna be able to squeeze all of that into this space here the problem is if i'm gonna have a sweeper that's going all the way across this level here i need enough room underneath all of this to get the sweepers in at all of those different levels so we might have to reduce the number of floors we've got here so let's just see if we can actually work this out if our sweeper was there we'd have to bring it down pretty much all this way to then go up and that's 15 blocks well, we've only got eight blocks here, so I haven't really planned this out very well, have I? Now, we could take the top layer up a couple of blocks. If we consider that this is the ceiling level, then we could actually make our very top floor at that level there, so there's still two blocks for them to spawn in between. And if we maybe take out a couple of these layers, so that it was something a little bit more like this, which still gives us five spawning layers, then it would almost fit. It would just need to come into this layer here. But this layer here doesn't actually have to exist at all, as much as I did want this to be like a nice big hotel reception i think it makes more sense to have all of the mechanics in here and just push this down into the floor because don't forget that our basement is all the way down here so we've got all this room to play with as well which means we could actually get away with having even more layers because the bottom layer can actually be down at this level and that still gives us enough room below 24 blocks for things to be able to spawn on it so i think what i'm going to do is get the layers in on this side of this system build up a gantry system and see if i can get that to work and oh, this could be interesting and there's a bunch of layers on that side of the building and i've put a little gantry system in so that we can see what's happening there's a redstone contact at the top and the very bottom and each layer has got a whole bunch of iron plating just to sweep across the whole thing and if i stand here and wind this crank you can see the entire thing will go across the entire platform and i should be able to mirror that over this side eventually but before i do that i want to make sure it's actually all going to fit on this side first but now how far do i need to bring this down to make sure that this one is underneath this layer when it comes back again so that I can get my sticky piston in. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to do some counting. I think it needs to go down 15. So I think I'm going to have to have the mechanical piston at that level there. Just wind that all the way up. Oh, and that does reach. Okay, that's good. But when I wind it down again, that's as far as it will come down before it hits anything. And I still need to go another three blocks. So I'm going to have to dig out a whole bunch of this floor. And with all of those channels dug, I should be able to bring that down far enough. Yep, that that is all the way underneath there. That's good. And then all of that's going to need digging out so the whole thing can come back across. So basically, I'm going to have to lose this entire entire floor section which is absolutely fine that's not a problem and with those gone and that move forward a bit that means i can squeeze the sequence gear shift in there it also means i can put one there as well and that's pretty much this entire thing kind of done apart from all of the redstone contacts and setting up the timings and all that sort of stuff and obviously bringing in power and then remove okay it's nowhere near dot g i've just discovered another big problem by taking out this floor here and giving a space below in our basement we don't actually have a big enough basement to do the same thing over here on this side which means i'm going to need to move this basement wall significantly in this direction but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it for now i'm just concentrating on this side of the build and this zombie and this creeper and this creeper Ooh. And this hole, and apparently a spider. I should probably sleep, but it's nearly morning. Chew. So I've put some redstone links on the redstone contacts. I've put some sequence gear shifts on all of the bits that need sequence gear shifts. And hopefully that means that this thing, if it had power, would just about be ready to go. That said, I haven't actually set up these gear shifts yet, but I can do that now. And in order for this to not tear itself to shreds, I have to put a delay on each of these sequence gear shifts because if it goes too quickly, it just tears off the mechanical bearing and the entire thing falls to pieces. Now, I've no idea 
idea if they're set up in the right direction and they won't know that until we've got power so when it gets to there we need to activate this sequence gear shift to go across so that's red that's going to send it over to here and then it's going to get this one which is green and then that needs to signal to this piston to come down so rotten flesh and green on there once it gets down here it's going to be in contact with that one which means it then needs to send a signal to this to come back across so that needs rotten flesh and blue and then when it gets over to this one which is yellow it needs to go back up again which means it needs to send another signal to this to go back up again so that should be all of the sequence gear shifts set up correctly assuming the power is actually going to rotate in the right direction and speaking of power well we don't actually need a whole bunch of power to actually manage this gantry shaft we are going to need a bunch of it for the crushing wheels but that's a different story what i want to make sure that i do is have the gantry on a separate power system to the rest of it like we did on this farm so that we don't end up with the harvester accidentally harvesting things that it shouldn't because it stops because the power runs out so th things like this shouldn't happen but it does a lot it can't be full no there's none in here you've done it again where you're not coming back fully see this is the problem with these gantries they get confused very easily so now this one's not coming all the way back so it's not dropping its stuff off so i think what i'm going to tell it to do is go a bit further and that should help it would have helped if it didn't just stop in the middle of the field you're a moron jeez there's a whole bunch of this field i need to replant again and it's crazy really because this entire thing's chunk loaded so it really shouldn't be having a big problem like this but it is but now at least it's all the way back now this farm i need running all the time in order to get my biodiesel produced which is why it's having problems because every time i go out of the area even though it's chunk loaded it seems to forget what it's supposed to be doing whereas the mob farm's not going to be a problem because this is only ever going to be active when i'm here so this entire gantry system is going to have a lever on it so i can activate it when i'm here and deactivate it when i'm not that way we shouldn't have this gantry just tear itself to shreds and get all sorts of confused so power for now we just need a water wheel to run this there we go our power is turning that means all of these things are turning let's get this on a reasonable speed let's say 64 and let's have it going clockwise and if i grab myself a button we can actually test this thing we want to make sure that when i fire this button it's actually going to go that way like oh it, it did i didn't even press it but there we go and then when it gets to there i was oh i've done that in the wrong place let's try with it in the right place rotten flesh and lime and that should activate that piston but it hasn't oh i've got no power to the piston that would explain things and then that there and then that should there we go it's coming down and then is it going to go back across it is oh this is good and then will it go up again when it gets here it is oh this is wonderful it's actually working i can't believe it's working i didn't think i had any chance of this working not first time at least it wasn't first time well it kind of was a bit so now the tricky thing is actually having this on and off a book i need to figure out how i can add some sort of lever on here to basically stop a redstone link sending a signal so that when it does get to a place it will stop but then I also need it to be restartable. So ideally, I need to be able to stop this from getting the signal here. Oh, I, I've got an idea. Good old-fashioned sticky piston should sort that. Ah, should sort this out. I throw a sticky piston on there, put that into receive mode. Then for now, I can just put a redstone link on there with rotten flesh and magenta. Put a lever above that, and if I flick that lever, that should yeah extend that sticky piston. That's good. But if I flick it off again, that should move that top chain. It hasn't moved the chain drive. Huh? I guess they're not movable well that's annoying in that case how about a deploy with a wrench maybe that'll work to spin it round it will so i just need to give this enough power to twist that round and come back in again that said in my experience sequence gear shifts and deployers are not always ideal because they often just get stuck halfway but i think if i set that to 360 that should be okay so now i stick a redstone link on there but i kind of want to test it before we do anything so let's just put a button on and see what happens it goes in and it comes back out excellent so that should stop the machine when it gets back should come back up and then just stop there here it goes it's coming back up to the top good yeah it stopped so if i press that button again and spin that there we go it should start again which it hasn't oh geez that needs another redstone signal as well well that's fine we'll just do exactly the same thing on there then oh but that's going to give it a signal when we want to stop it oh and if i stop it while it's on that path there it's going to yeah get stuck and now it's not going to go again yeah so this isn't going to work either okay what about then instead of having this sequence gear shift on here at all we'll just put a clutch on there and then if i put that in receive mode and then go and turn this or i guess power it on it's not going to go anywhere that's just going to stay there now until i give that more power and then it's going to go again which means i don't actually need this redstone link up here at all anymore that saved myself a couple of blocks okay nice well let's turn it off for a bit then we don't need it running right now and that will just reset itself back to the beginning again and then i can build this entire thing all over again on this side hooray 
And now the basement is a whole bunch bigger. And we've got both sets of equipment all in place now, and they should both go at the same time if I set them off at the same time. We've got exactly the same thing going on over here that's mirrored on that one. Without further ado, let me show you both of these things going at the same time. Here we go, go. And you can see they both sweep across like that and get to the end, and then they both go down. I don't know why there's a delay between them both. I think maybe one side's slightly shorter than the other potentially but then they both then go back across again oh this is wonderful and then once they get to that end they both go up again but i want to know why there's a delay i got a feeling that one of these sides is slightly longer than the other one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven that's eleven blocks long and this is one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven this one this one's 12 blocks long so this actually needs extending one more block but i'm slightly worried about joining these two gantries together because I think that's going to cause us a problem. So I think we'll just have to leave it like this with them both slightly off size from each other and just see how we get on once we actually start getting mobs in this thing. And that said, we're not going to get any mobs in here at all with how light it is in here and without walls around these things. Well, that's the entire thing surrounded by tinted glass, but we've got a few gaps like down the back where mobs could potentially spawn and fall off, which isn't ideal. I kind of wanted that glass all the way up to this edge here because we don't want things falling down there. But if I have the glass there, then this can't come along the edge and that's going to cause us a problem. Oh, there we go. Proof that that's going to be a problem already. Okay, that's all of the torches gone. And if I turn down my gamma mod back to 100%, it, yeah, it's pretty it's pretty dark in here, which is exactly why I use that gamma mod so you guys can see what I'm doing. So the first thing I'm going to do is replace all of this industrial iron here with more tinted glass because then things won't actually spawn on top of it. The other issue with these sweepers is they'll get anything that's on the bottom, such as zombies and baby zombies and skeletons and even spiders. But if our spiders are on the roof, if they're stuck up here, these sweepers are not going to get them. So I think I'm going to have to fix that as well. Go away. Okay, that's all of the new sweepers in with the tinted glass. But in order to make them work, I'm going to have to do this. But if I do that, then the whole thing needs to go down an extra block in order Order to get underneath the bottom platform and that's going to be a problem the adjustments have now all been made which means this thing can go a little bit lower and it also means that each one of these little sections has two pushes on it oh and there's a bunch of mobs up there already so let's go get this thing to oh, wow turned on and see what happens start push oh geez hello start pushing there we go oh and then why have they stopped why did they stop there Wait, ah that's why extra block at the top yep let's just get rid of that one there we go uh, and that that one there we go now we shouldn't have a problem let's try that again turn it on and they should finish there we go and now they're going down again there it goes oh this is wonderful and then they're going to go back across and if i stand down here we should get maximum mob spawning and here they go they're pushing again are we going to get a load of mobs falling off oh we got a creeper a couple of you oh wow quite yeah quite a lot wow okay but i think you all have to agree that so far this is becoming a resounding success which means it's time to concentrate on actually how we're going to kill the mobs so i guess it's crushing time. Back in my creative test world, it's occurred to me that spiders are going to be a problem, and that's because their hitbox is bigger than one block, which means it's very difficult to try and get them into a set of crushing wheels, even with conveyors and fans and all that other thing. If I actually click one onto the crushing wheels, it will go in and go down. And even if I move these belts backwards slightly, you'd think there'd be enough room for them to get on there. Well, the fact is, they can just walk about all over the top of these things with absolutely no problem at all. And it's going to be incredibly difficult to try and separate the spiders from all of the other mobs. So that basically leaves me with saws, which is absolutely fine. I don't mind using saws. Saws seem to work absolutely fine for the different types of mobs. But what you might notice as all of these mobs die on the saws is that we're not getting any of the nuggets of XP at all, which is why I wanted the crushing wheels. Now, I could always use deployers with swords again, like we did in the other spider farm that we've got. But unfortunately, creepers make them go bang. So that's not ideal. So what about sideways crushing reels then? Will that work? No. 
Works for the creeper, kinda, but it's no good for the spiders. Now, according to a YouTube video I just watched, apparently placing trapdoors on your spawning platforms like this should stop spiders from spawning. Mob spawning on. We got in a whole bunch of skeletons. Got some zombies and some more skeletons. More zombies and some creepers. But it does feel a whole bunch slower, but so far we haven't had any spiders at all. Looks like this could be a way for us to go. However, this is also going to cause a massive problem because we look at our little mini baby zombie friend he's about the same height as a block which means if our sweeper is at this level here and it's coming across he's not going to get swept away but i can't have the sweeper at this level here because the trapdoors are in the way so i can't really push the mobs away unless i use just fans to blow them all i guess but i don't want to use fans so just to prove this little concept if i put a trapdoor on there our little sweepy thing isn't going to be able to get past it it's just going to stop however if i put redstone down instead you'll see that it has absolutely no problem going over that redstone at all but i don't know if that'll stop the spiders from spawning so now i've got a whole bunch of platforms with redstone where the trapdoors were let's see if this works no no it, do it doesn't work at all is the gantry bothered by carpet it is so that just leaves me with separating the spiders and that's not as difficult as it might sound because while this system might work for all of the other mobs the spiders are just going to get caught there which means all i'm going to need to get rid of those spiders is just a wall of mechanical saws here like this and now the creepers should still end up down in the crushing wheels because they shouldn't reach those saw blades and now the spiders should hopefully end up getting minced on those saws they do who's shooting at me so back on the server this should be all we need which is just a water trough going into the crushing wheels with a whole bunch of saws on that side and i can't see any reason why that's not going to work apart from the spiders inevitably crawling out like that one did and crawling up the sides and i could maybe put something in place to stop that but spiders will crawl up against fans and belts if they want to so there really isn't a great way of stopping them i suppose i could pour water down each side or maybe even lava just to smite them alternatively i could just put a ring of saws around the entire thing to stop anything that tried to go up the sides that's not a bad idea gearbox gearbox and a gearbox and that should be everything on that level wired for power which means i can just extend that up there and that's them powered so that's all of these powered we don't have the crushing wheels powered but that really shouldn't be too difficult something like that should work for those maybe but i'm not gonna know if any of this works at all until i've actually got some power in here because this little water wheel is not gonna cut it so i need some decent power down here we can run lots and lots of crushing wheels off and lots and lots of saws off man this thing's going to require a lot of power so i guess now is a good time to check on our biodiesel situation and see if we've actually got plenty of it however i'm going to assume with the issues we had at our tomato farm that we probably haven't and um yeah we're on to the fifth layer now but it, but it's 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 not going particularly quickly but i guess there's always plenty of lava to be working with so we can use that instead so i need to get that lava from over here to all the way over at the hotel now i could just pump it underground which would probably be the sensible thing to do or we could have a little side entrance here with another little truck coming along in fact we could even probably utilize the truck that's going over to our storage system and just have it come and deliver some lava over here that seems like a good idea to me that's looking okay he hasn't gone into the field that's good can he get around the corner he can is it going to connect he did or he's still a block too far back but it it's kind of connected a few minutes later and i've got another water wheel in here and a little oh Oh, it's already filling up the trailer truck must be here another few minutes later i've got water wheels and a lava tank and hopefully if we go to the top then we should be able to see our little truck actually in the correct position yet unloading a whole bunch of lava into there so everything's working nicely and that means i can now build a little power plant so for the power station i'm going to keep this nice and simple we're just going to have that pipe system there with these blaze burners on top and these are all going to have straws so that they can attach to the pipes and suck in the lava and we just need a level four steam engine I think that'll be plenty. And there we go. A nice level four boiler. So with two more steam engines stuck on the front like that. And a bunch of shaft down there like that. Linking those all together. All, we've got all the power we need. Okay, let's get the power over to our crushing wheels first. Chain drive across the middle like that. And then a gearbox there. There we go. But we just need them spinning in the opposite direction. And that we can do with this speed controller over here. So if we just flip that round and have that go in full speed. There we go. Things are already getting chewed up in there excellent but we're full of spiders so let's get rid of those guys who are all conveniently on those saws you're in for a bad time little spiders so all i gotta do is flip that one round and stick one of those in there and we should be saying goodbye to our spider no we're over 
overstressed. Really? We're overstressed on this much power? All right, then. Let's go to 128 instead. Now all the spiders are dead, but I missed it. So everything's going. Everything's plumbed in. The mobs are coming in. The spiders are dying. And is the zombie going to get crushed? He is. What about the creeper? Get crushed, creeper. There he goes. And I haven't even turned the machine on yet. And that's because I need a collection system, which really shouldn't be all too difficult. There we go. We've got a big old vault there now. I didn't realize everything's floating in the air. Don't worry about that. We'll sort that later. And if we stick a funnel on there, all of the items are going to go into that. So that is now this entire build complete mechanically, which means we can turn it back on again and see how it all goes. Now I've got no real way to get down ah, to get down to this system yet. So we're going to have to be careful about that. And we've got a lot of mobs in there. I, I, wouldn't, it, it came, I don't know why that came flying over there, but that's fine. But are we going to get any mobs this time? So, well, there we go. Wow, that was a lot. Jeez. And a whole bunch more. Wow, look at them all getting crushed. Oh, and so far we've got a whole seven nuggets of experience. Now, I did consider setting this up to actually drain off the nuggets of experience and create them into a liquid. But if I do that, then I've got to export more liquids around when we actually come to our super enchanting setup. And I just thought it's much easier to transfer them as an item for now. So I guess I need to AFK roughly in the middle of this whole thing. Probably in a safe little box, just in case anything does escape. So a little while later in here, and I got fire. I decided it wasn't laggy enough in this room and I could really do with some more of it so i added a whole bunch of fire but don't worry peeps we've got no fire spread on this server because i don't like things burning down this is to try and stop spiders i've also added a whole bunch more tinted glass on all the sides to try and prevent any little bits that the spiders can get through there are still a few hang up places where they could potentially get to but there's not a lot i can do about that because of the mechanisms so my idea here is that if they do get pushed down onto all of this they'll uh, they'll crawl out onto the fire and get burned although it's not quite as quick as i'd hoped well that's probably because I haven't gone round and done any cave lighting yet. I've gone spotty! This is actually a creative copy of my world, believe it or not, and what I've done is I've taken a copy of my world, downloaded it, and added in the Vanilla Tweaks Spawn Spheres data pack, so I can see exactly what area around this hotel that I need to light up. And inside, as we go closer towards this, it becomes an even bigger mess, but these red blocks basically say where the mobs won't spawn within the area if I was AFK down there. And they come just underneath our platforms which is absolutely perfect within the orange ones however are the areas that mobs will actually spawn and whilst being above ground isn't too much of a problem if we go underground for a second you can see just how massive this area is it encompasses all of these caves down here almost all the way down to the deep dark down here and it goes all the way over in this direction and basically it goes for absolute miles and i guess in survival i could go around locate all of those caves and put torches down and deal with it that way but this is create and with create comes great responsibility or as i like to say massive amounts of want and destruction that's right i think the only way to realistically sort this perimeter out is with a big old machine and back on the server i've given it a bit of a start putting a few torches down around the area but nowhere near enough so i've got a whole lot of work to do but before i go back on the downloaded copy of this world what if i afk'd up here let's create another the spawn sphere from here and if we go down a little bit we should see that these red dots are just above the spawning platforms which they are so that's good and now the orange ones don't go down quite so far before they were all the way down here almost touching the deep dark and now they're all the way up here which means there aren't actually that many caves to sort out at all and there's even less of the land down here to deal with so maybe for now while i don't have a perimeter this might not be a bad spot however this spot up here would be even better. Let's add in another spawn sphere from this point here. And you can see most of the orange area is above the ground. Hardly any of it's below the ground at all. So maybe this would be the best spot. Let's find out on the server. I just need to go up to around about 270 in the sky. Around about this point here should do it. And now if we use our cheaty free cam, we should be able to see that this is just as effective. There are a lot of mobs. There are an awful lot. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah, this is definitely... Well, that, wow, okay. It's it's much more effective up there than... Down, oh, my... There's, there's even more coming. This is ridiculously effective. Oh, my goodness. But the, the platforms are full again. Here they go. <laughs> so many mobs. So, yeah, I think I might AFK from here for now. That was ridiculous.
glow squid or at least glow squid ink sacks that's what i need today but i'm not going to get that from all of the way up here on this afk spot above my new mob farm that's right in the last video i built this mob farm inside of this hotel and it has been working incredibly well in fact a little too well if you haven't seen the video the system works by spawning things and then they get pushed off these platforms and they end up down there getting minced to bits and in the basement below where they all fall down i've been collecting a whole bunch of things from a couple of nights with the afk we've got 24,000 nuggets of xp 50,000 gunpowder 50,000 bones nearly 50,000 rotten flesh 50,000 arrows and nearly 15,000 string and the reason we don't get that much string is because this system actually uses saws to kill spiders rather than crushing wheels because the spiders don't actually fit into the crushing wheels so occasionally the string drops down there and it goes into the system and well 15,000 after a couple of nights is quite a lot but this isn't everything this system produces it also produces a whole bunch of bone meal sticks sugar glowstone dust glass bottles spider eyes redstone dust raw chicken feathers ash and white dye but the thing it generates the most is backpacks i have one two three four almost five double chests full of backpacks just because occasionally the mobs coming down here are wearing them and they get dropped into the system and then i have to offload them because they just clog up the entire system so it's all gone incredibly well and i'm very happy with it all and getting up to the afk spot is quite tricky it actually involves piling up a whole bunch but i've got an idea for that and you guys all had a lot of ideas for that as well because in the last video i was talking about digging out a huge area underground making a perimeter so that i can afk below this farm and that would have led us nicely into what we're doing today however actually having the afk spot up there is a fantastic idea and disguising it inside of a hot air balloon is even better so i'm definitely going to be doing that however before we do that i need to do a couple of things with this tomato farm which is yet again completely forgotten how it should work somehow we've got absolutely no tomatoes here at all they've just disappeared my harvesting machine has fallen asleep at this end for no particular reason at all and it's just been a bit of a disaster because i need that biodiesel i need that infinite supply and it's almost like the game's trying to stop me from having it and the reason i need an infinite supply of biodiesel is to make the blaze burners run super hot and hopping down here quickly to check out the progress it's no better than it was last time i checked which was like three days ago so the main problem with this tomato farm is not the tomatoes themselves it is this stupid gantry system which just doesn't work i mean at the moment it's back so it should be giving off a redstone signal and that redstone signal should be powering in this pulse to tell this sequence gear shift to go again but it hasn't for no reason so i'm going to get rid of all of these things we're not going to have a powered system at all anymore and i'm going to get rid of this gantry system altogether and instead of that i'm going to have some powered rail instead and instead of using this barrel and this funnel i'm going to pop down an assembler throw a bit of casing on there a storage interface there and if i get rid of a little bit of this bolt because we don't need all of this sticking out of here I can pop another one of those there, put my item drains back down, and with those item drains there, and that funnel there, and that funnel there, that's that system sorted out. And with a little bit more glue, just there, that should be this sorted out. Let's grab a redstone torch, sort that out there, that's going to connect there, that's good. If I get rid of that, that should set that off, excellent. And now this thing's not going to need any power at all anymore, it should just go along there and, oh, I haven't put a chest on it, so it's not going to pick anything up. Oh, jeez, let's pop that down there again quickly. And then when it comes back, it should lock into position, there we go and i need to replace that with a barrel and that's better and now it's actually working it's transferring the tomatoes i'm also going to get rid of all of this rope because we don't need it i'm not using it oops i didn't mean to do that i may have a bit just got rid of all of my tomatoes and with all of that now replanted one thing i've noticed while i've been working over here is that every single one of my bees has gone all of these bee nests are empty except for honey but all of my bees have disappeared somewhere i've no idea where they've gone so that's a bit of a shame but not to worry and as much as i would like to blame the issues i've had with this on the gantry system itself it's not the gantry it's the sequence gear shifts because it's not just this farm i've had issues with it's also a whole bunch of other things like these little gates at my crossings that are supposed to open and close when the train comes this side's worked fine but this side's actually inverted itself and gone into the ground actually breaking the power system that runs it which isn't ideal and another thing that i'm using sequence gear shifts for is these barriers here and as you can see this one's up but it's supposed to be down and you'll see as this lorry comes out instead of that going up it's going to go completely the wrong way 
And this is all bizarre because every single one of these is chunk loaded. So there really shouldn't be any issues at all with any of these things. But I had issues like this in my previous areas as well. So it just goes to show that these sequence gear shifts are just a little bit unreliable. So I think wherever I can avoid using sequence gear shifts, I absolutely will. So inside the tomato factory then, I've still got an absolute ton of ethanol, but I've got no plant oil at all. And that's because I turned the seed system off because I actually used all of my wheat seeds to provide the last batch of plant oil but as you can see they've run out now so i could really do with a whole bunch more seeds for this but i ain't got any left but surely back over at the snowy area there's some seeds in my little foodie place in here somewhere we must have some seeds at 45 170 watt and well we really don't have many seeds in here either do we okay then what about at hill valley we got seeds here we must have a bunch of seeds here ah 58,000 seeds this won't take long at all there we go and there we go that's now on the system so that means we're going to be producing a whole bunch of plant oil all over again oh we're getting seed oil right now but we should get plant oil too and that means we'll start producing biodiesel again hurrah Oh, is this system full of tomatoes? It must be. There's over 100,000 bone meal. And, oh, I didn't put an um upgrade in there. Oh, that would help. I guess we don't need any bone meal for a while. So with my tomato system all now fixed, and this biodiesel coming in here thick and fast again, we should have all of these layers filled up in no time. Or at least until my next set of seeds runs out. Why don't you put the tomatoes back on the seed thing? Well, I, I probably will at some point, but this is fine. So a hot air balloon then. It's going to be pretty tricky building all the way up there, but I don't have to build it up there. I can build it down here and then just move it up there once it's done. Because create. Create what? Just create. Before I could start building, I needed some concrete. So I went down to my workshop area under the liquid storage building, crafted up a bunch of concrete powder of different colours, and then set the filters of my washers to turn it into concrete. However, this looked like it was going to be pretty slow, so I decided to build a much bigger washer. Using a whole bunch of mechanical fans all around a belt and connecting it to my storage drawers, this certainly look like it would do the job but it didn't an issue i've come across before the bottom fans underneath the belt for some reason prevent the concrete from being processed so i got rid of those and got the system working but by then the original washer had pretty much finished anyway so i collected all of the concrete and prepared to build starting with the basket below built with a variation of spruce wood planks and frame blocks i wanted this to be large enough to accommodate a warp plate that i'd be using to get up and down from the balloon as well as space to block myself in from potential phantoms that would inevitably spawn while i was afk with a bit of rope for decoration a gas bottle and some plating for the roof it was time to start on the balloon which i chose to build mainly from frame blocks going upwards in circles with increasing diameters until i got the shape that i was looking for and yes i know i could hold the concrete in my offhand and have it automatically texture the frame blocks as i placed them but i didn't know exactly how the design would work with the shape of the balloon until it was in place so at the top of the balloon i added more circles reducing in size more quickly to give that overall balloon shape and with all of those in place it was time to add some texture so there it is and it's turned out way bigger than i intended as usual but i really like it i like the pattern i like the shape and i like the little basket we've got at the bottom and we've even got a little plate on here that i can stand on to get teleported inside of the mob hotel and then i can stand on that one and get teleported back again so when this thing is up there I'll be able to get in it very easily. And I used frame blocks for the entire thing. And the reason I've done that is because in future, if I want more of these, or maybe I just want a few of them dotted around this area, I can use the schematic cannon to clone it and then just texture it however I want so they all look different. That said, texturing that has been an absolute nightmare and believe it or not, took almost two hours. So I don't think I'm going to be cloning any in a hurry. The other thing I've done, although I can barely even fly up here to show you, is to put a few lights on top of it just because oh, I did get a creeper up here while I was building it and now what I need to do is turn it into a contraption so that I can actually move it now you can't glue rope which is going to be a problem so I'm gonna to have to put all of that back on when I get back up to the top and things have to be connected so I'm gonna to have to go throw in a whole bunch of dirt in here to actually connect all of this stuff together and everything I think now except for the rope should be just about connected so let's get this in the middle one of those there one of those there with lock rotation and one of those there and if I do that well, it's gone invisible. Hopefully I haven't just deleted all of that because then it, I will be very sad. Oh, no, it's there. <gasps> well, there's a few bits missing. And it didn't take my warp plate, but that's fine. So now I've got to put it up there. Oh, jeez. And hopefully, fingers crossed. Oh, it's back. 
Ah, I've fallen off though. Oh, my warp plate's not in. No, stop. So it looks like I just need to get rid of a few of these blocks and put down a bit of rope. And as you can see on the inside, there's a whole bunch of frame blocks that I can reclaim but that I haven't used. And with these last couple of blocks, that's all of the frame blocks gone. Oh no, there's one there. And I'm hoping it's going to be light enough here that mobs don't spawn. I guess I need to turn off my gamma mod and it's very dark at the top. There shouldn't be any spawnable spaces, I don't think. But just in case, let's chuck another couple of zinc lamps around the top here. Here we go, that's better that's nice and light so now i just need to put the rope back on and i'm wondering if i can actually set fire to the top of this gas bottle which is a fluid tank apparently yes i can that might look good however i think it might look even better if i pop a vent block there and put the fire there yeah that looks a bit better now i just need to do the rope down here which attaches to these bit in the middle there a bit in the middle there get rid of this dirt and then just a little bit around the outside and obviously we don't want this blowing away in the wind. So I think having even more rope going all the way down to the hotel as a tether might be a good idea. And the advantage of this big long rope that we've got down here is that if my teleporter breaks, I can actually climb up it. And there we go. All of the dirt is now broken. All of the rope is in place. And that means that my hot air balloon looks rather fancy all the way up there. I like it. And there we go. I don't know if I really like the rope hanging down from there. I guess it makes sense, but it looks a bit weird. I do like the hot air balloon. So let's... Let's hop back into the mob farm, hop onto my teleporter, and boom, there we go. I am now in my AFK spot. But there's a problem, as usual. I'm sure you can guess what it is, and that's right, phantoms. They're going to be able to get me quite easily up here. And I did even consider turning it into a phantom farm, although I don't think that would be particularly easy to do with this design. What we could do is actually move the teleporter inside the balloon, and we could AFK in the balloon. The problem with that is we'd then be too high above the mob spawner for the mobs to... Oh, jeez. We'll just put up some phantom protection. Now it's one of those incredibly fancy hot air balloons with the little glass cabin on it. I'm sure you've all seen those before. They're very expensive. You probably haven't. Glass is too heavy. Wouldn't be able to float. It, no, it's just a game, guys. Not real. There we go. Lovely. And there we are. We're back inside. Ah, uh, yes, I feel much safer from the phantoms now. That should be good. And with a little bit of cheesy free cam, there I am in my hot air balloon, way above my hotel. And hopefully all of the mobs are spawning again. So, yep, yeah, there are definitely a whole bunch of mobs spawning. But guess what? My gantry base system has totally stopped for no particular reason. The power is going, but it's given... Oh, my goodness. These gantries! So, okay, fine. I'll go fix it. No, thank you. No, no. Oh, no! No, no, no! I knew that was good. Oh, jeez. Well, after a lot of pain and hard work, it's actually finally going again, and that should mean that if we go back to our AFK platform, we might actually get some mobs in here. Fingers crossed. Don't break again, please. Stupid sequence gear shifts. All the mobs are coming now. Here we go. Let's watch the next wave come along. There we go. A whole bunch of mobs there. Oh, wonderful. How's this all doing down here? This is all going okay. Fantastic. That all seems to be working. Jeez, rather well. But it's not time for AFK right now. Right now, it's time to crack on with what we're supposed to be doing this episode and that is all to do with squid ink and fixing up the hotel i gotta i do need to fix up the rest of this hotel i mean i haven't done anything around the back at all yet i haven't done the tree thing that i said i would do in the last episode and all of this area out the front looks a total mess but that can wait for a little while so squid or glow squid squid need rivers or oceans and glow squid need underground and i don't know which one's going to be easier you see zooming out of the map there really aren't that many rivers around this area we've got one over in this direction not too far away just down there which isn't miles from our platform so we could potentially make a little squid farm down here but squid will only spawn between y levels of 50 and 63 and whilst these guys are demonstrating that that's absolutely possible in this area this area has a massive amount of underground caves with water in that's not that much of an issue for squid because squid won't spawn with blocks above their head they need the open air which makes me wonder how on earth did those ones spawn down there i guess they probably is that a turtle? And there's a drown. But there's a... I need it. Where did it go? Stop it, drown. You might kill the turtle. Turtle, come here. <gasps> there he is. Is that a terrapin? It is. Oh, you're mine. Come with me. I don't get distracted easily. Oh, that could be a problem for my mob farm. I didn't think about lighting up the windowsills. Hmm. Okay, well, we'll get to that later. Right now, my little terrapin friend needs to go up in my airship. 
Uh, but then he'll walk on that and he'll get stuck. So, look at that. You're enjoying it up in this hot air balloon, aren't you? Yes, look, well, your tail's wagging and everything. Oh, what a good terrapin you are. Right, anyway, this little area down here might not actually be all that bad for a squid farm because we can quite easily cover up what isn't already covered up with these caves. What is that? A catfish. I can pick up a catfish. I, I decided I don't need the catfish, though. You can go back in there. There you go. So, yeah, squid farm shouldn't be a problem at all. Should be nice and easy down here. But the problem with it is it's right down here. And whilst that isn't a million miles away from where we're currently working, it's not really somewhere I had in mind to do any work. And in order to make it look nice and decorated and stuff would mean an awful lot of terraforming down there and building and all that sort of stuff. So I'm not 100% sure I want to do that. So the other option then is glow squid. And unlike squid, glow squid need to spawn deep underground in complete darkness below Y level 30. So I could dig a massive hole somewhere and fill it with water below Y level 30 and get glow squid to spawn and then, you know, worry about a perimeter around that to make sure there's no other areas of water below that level in the area. And that shouldn't be too difficult either, but I've already got one. Over here at the liquid storage center, hopping down to check on the biodiesel once more. Wow, this is getting deep. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine layers and we're working on the tenth one. Oh, this is wonderful. But I'm not here to look at biodiesel. In fact, I want to go down even further, all the way to my mine, which is going to take a substantially long time. Substantially? Yes, a substantially lily -ly long time eventually. And the reason it takes such a long time to get all the way down here is because I got all that space up there where glow squid could spawn. Now, they're not going to spawn down here just like nothing else spawns down here, and that's because this is deep dark. But up there, if we don't have to go up too far to get out of the deep dark, and then we just become in this deep underground area here. Now, I don't know if deep underground is good for glow squid, but there's one way to find out. Lovely platform. You see, glow squid don't need blocks of water above them to spawn or below them. They'll quite happily spawn in flowing water. As long as the biome's right and you're at the right Y level. But I'm not seeing any glow squids. I'm seeing a zombie and an enderman, though. That's no, yeah, that's not what I want. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I was going to say we should add a bit more water, but there we go. Glow squid have spawned in the deep underground just here. Proof. All right, now, before we have any more problems, I'm just going to go spam a whole bunch of torches around this place which will stop the glow squid from spawning, but that's fine for now. We don't need them right now. They're just going to happily just drown to death at the side of that bit of water there. Good job. Well done. And the reason I want this spawn proof in is because I need to use that cheesy free cam again. Because what we need to make sure of is that there aren't any water caves in a big old area around this at this sort of level. Oh, it looks like we've got one up there, but that's probably... Yeah, that's too high for glow squid to spawn in, so that's good. And any running water, even just like this, can also be a problem. Because as you can see, look, there's squid ink just now next to that, which means glow squid have spawned there. So doing a farm at this level here would mean I've got a whole bunch of work to do to sort the perimeter out, but it's nowhere near as bad as it would be for a mob farm, because all I've got to do is get rid of the water. So we need our elevator to come down here first, and then we need to figure out how exactly we're going to make a glow squid farm. And I've got an idea. for we'll elevator first. And now that the elevator's all fully working, all I need is a little platform around the edge so that we've got something to walk along, a little bit like we've got on the other floors, and then we can figure out how we're going to make this farm work. And with this last a little bit of railing in here like this. That's the entire thing surrounded by railing. I've put some lights on and that might not be ever so clever with these glow squid because don't forget glow squid need complete darkness to spawn in. So I guess I'll have to cover this with tinted glass. So now I need to figure out exactly how we're going to get these glow squid to spawn in here and how we're going to deal with them. Now because glow squid will spawn in one layer of water with air above it and below it, we could potentially just have one layer of water in here with a bunch of fence gates or signs holding it all up and then just a minecart track underneath with the minecart hopper picking all of the ink sacks up as they suffocate to death. And that would be a really easy way of doing this. However, that's not very creative, is it? So instead, I'm thinking we fill this up with four layers of water and have a big old contraption with many, 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 many deadly sores on it. Yes, it's not the most efficient way to kill mobs because you get no looting on it, but it's fine. We don't need that much glow squid. And with a big old wall of sores like this, running about on a contraption backwards and forwards, that will just slice up the glow squid. All of the contents will be contained in a barrel or something attached to it. It won't use any power because it'll be on a rail and we can just send those items maybe up to this level here to be collected. Speaking of, if I want to actually have somewhere to store these items, I'm probably going to need a slightly wider walkway here. So I think I'm going to bring this out another maybe two or three blocks this direction and then we can put a vault on there. So I think the best type of container we could have for this area are going to be black ones because this is a glow squid farm, which are bright blue. But it's 
dark down here. This is the dark mine area. So we're going to have a nice big old dark container there ready for that glow squid. And now we just need to get the items from down there into there once this contraption is made. And the easiest way to do that would probably be with chutes and a fan to push things up. But the problem here is I don't actually have any power down here. We've got a little bit of power that we're using for the elevator doors, but I don't really want to use that for contraptions and things with this being a watery farm. I suppose it wouldn't hurt to have a water wheel in it. Now, one thing we can do with water wheels is to actually colour them in, and I think that makes it look a whole lot more glow squiddy, and it kind of goes with the gold as well. And I do kind of like that blue, but what about dark oak? No, that doesn't really go. To be fair, I do think the original... Did that just take on the texture of the block? It... Whoa, no, I can have it any texture. What? I didn't know this. I just thought you could change it different colours with different wood types. Can I have it mixed oak log? No, I can't use log, just planks. Okay, what about that? Well, that's very spotty. What about that? That looks kind of cool. I'm just not sure I like the colour. Hmm, diamond warped planks. What about that? No, it's very glow squiddy though. Warped planks? That's kind of good. I kind of like that, although it's quite bright. Warped plank shavings. No, I didn't like that one. We've just gone to default now, I guess. Stacked warped planks. Yeah, I think we'll go with that. Anyway, I'm getting very carried away with water wheels and things like that when I don't even have a contraption or any water in place. So what I need to do is get this contraption built so that it becomes a contraption and not a block. And that means that, and then I can put a wall along here and keep this little lane separate from the water to stop, well, it getting wet, I suppose, and ruining my rail. And then we can fill this entire thing in with water. Sad news, peeps. Just come up to the hot air balloon so I can do a little bit of AFK while I'm going to be busy in real life for a few minutes. And unfortunately, my little terrapin has despawned. This is sad news indeed. Totally ruined my AFK vibes, man. And after a couple more hours worth of AFK, we got a whole bunch more stuff and a whole bunch more backpacks. So without further ado, let's get this glow squid farm sorted out, shall we? But not without checking on our biodiesel, of course. Which is there! It's finished! We now have an infinite supply of biodiesel! That went fast! Gee, I really didn't expect that. So is this? does this say now that it's an infinite supply? It does! So I need to wind that all the way down to the bottom. And I guess now I can stop all of those tomatoes from being produced. Oh, I can't believe it, finally. So the first thing we can do is prevent this thing from bouncing backwards and forwards and, you know, taking up a little bit of lag. Not that it causes much at all. And then inside the building, well, wow, we're completely full on all of these things. And we've still got a whole bunch of seeds left. And it looks like we've still got, yep, 7,000 tomatoes and 109,000 bone meals. Wow. And we can disconnect all of these pipes now. We don't need those anymore. Although I will keep them there just in case we have problems in future. And I'm going to turn the power off to all of the farms just by disconnecting that. Now, I'm not going to demolish everything to save the resources because you never know. We might need to produce more in the future. We're just going to leave it turned off for a bit and see how we get on. Right, glow squid farm. Have we got any glow squids? No, because I haven't finished it yet. Oh man. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is lay down a whole bunch of powered rail against this wall here all the way down to the other end. So first I'm going to put an item interface there and one directly opposite it there with four item drains coming along here like this. And then we're going to have some chutes going up here like that to connect with the bottom of our container. Then all we need is a brass funnel on there facing outwards and another one on there facing inwards. And then underneath that we're going to need a fan facing upwards and then we need to get power from that water wheel to that fan which means coming through these item drains. Meh. Smashing through that wall, I can put encased chain drive down there like that and bring that down to that point there. And then I can just connect that to there like that. And hopefully that'll go the right way. It'll all depend on what way the water wheel spins. Now, I'm not sure if I do, but I might need a block on top of that chute to stop the items coming out the top so that they go up diagonally. And that should be about it for that. So now we just need to turn this into a contraption. So let's extend the powered rail there, pop one of those on it, but ideally face it in the other direction and set that to lock rotation. And then I guess we just want a little bit of andesite casing like that to connect that together a minecart under there and then just a bunch of glue so hopefully if i power that the entire thing is now a contraption oh, there we go and that's going to move to there because i need to power the rest of the powered rail and i needed it to be a contraction before we do anything else because i want to put a wall in down this line and i can place it through these blocks because now it's a contraption and because i want to see what's going on through that i'm going to make this wall out of tinted glass and i'm just going to bring this along here like this all the way to the end. I'm going to put another wall of tinted glass down the other side. And I need to get rid of all of these torches down here, even though they're not going to affect anything, just because they look a bit ugly. And instead, I'm going to put a whole bunch of these zinc lamps across the top, because I'm hoping this will actually allow us to see into the glow squid tank a bit better without affecting their spawning. And I kind of want to do that all the way around this thing. So let's build another wall. 
all the way to there now that should all be powered the whole way down so if i give that a nudge yep the entire thing's going to go all the way there and it's going to come all the way back and then it'll come all the way back again excellent that's all working nicely but if i've got walls over there and over there i should probably have one here as well and stop this coming back quite so far in which case i'll have to fiddle with that a bit but that should be fine and i'm not going to start this going again yet because i want to fill this with water and i don't want it to slice me to bits while i'm doing it now i could go round with buckets painstakingly doing this all the way round and fill it up that way well that's going to take ages so instead what i'm going to do is steal a little bit of power from the elevator it should just be through here there it is and then just throw a hose pulley in a little bit of chain drive there spin that round a bit pop a cog on there that's going to get that pump going throw a crank on there and i guess wind it down a block now i just need an unlimited water source above this Bucket there, bucket there, and off we go. We're producing slime. Well, I didn't expect that. But that should hopefully now be filling this thing in, and it might take a little while, but that's fine. Oh, look, we've got glow squid already. Oh, we might as well get the machine going then. Oh, and skeletons. Yeah, we don't want those. Now, hopefully, yep, the glow squid got minced, but their ink sacs are down there, which is slightly concerning. Why didn't their ink sacs make it into there? And, the, yeah, the zombie stuff's on the floor as well. Huh, well, that's weird. Have I made a boo-boo with this design? Quite possibly. So while this thing continues to go round and mince all of these glow squid to wow that's a lot of glow squid and forget and fail to pick up all it but it's not picking the item up which is very concerning but it's 100 percent working look at all of those so many of them jeez why are you not picking it up though it's your job so i put some items in the barrel and weirdly it's not actually transferring the items out of there either so i'm wondering if it's just confused and it doesn't realize it's actually got a barrel on here because they should be going out of there it's definitely connecting so what's the problem well, a little while later, I've got some good news and I've got some bad news. The good news is the entire thing's now filled up. The bad news is this thing doesn't seem to work with swords, at least as a minecart contraption. The other good news is this water wheel's now going. It's also got a speed controller behind it, which means the offloading system now works. The all of the glow ink goes into the container. We've just got to figure this out. And you know what it means, don't you? I've got to use gantry again. Oh, jeez. Okay, I've added some redstone contacts on there. We've got one behind the wall and we've got one over that side. I've also put on a gear shift here so that we can change the direction based on the redstone signal. And we're probably going to need pulse emitters and that sort of thing to make sure that's all going to work. But before I do any of that, I'm going to need power. And I don't know if this water wheel is going to cut it. Doesn't need to cut it, just needs to power it. No, yeah, that's basically what I'm... Yeah, okay. So if I throw on a gearbox there, and then a bit of shaft there and there... Oh, okay, it's enough to power the system. Oh, that one little water wheel can do that entire gantry shaft and the... Pa wow, and the fan for the chutes, that's good. If I got myself a lever and then just inverted that gear shift, is the it is, the entire thing's going to go across and hopefully kill all of those squids. Now it's going to go there. Let's flip it back again so it can come back, and let's see if there's anything in the barrel. There is not, and there are items just on... What? I guess the issue issue is not the contraption it's the fact that we're using source to kill them which apparently then don't actually bother to collect the items because it's expecting wood and not glow squid ink and that looks like it's going to end up being quite the substantial problem for me because this entire design is based on saws now i could replace every single one of those with deployers and put them in punch mode or sword mode in order to do that and that would work but that's an awful lot of deployers so i think i might have to go back to the drawing board and come up with a new plan well, I've spent a whole bunch of time thinking about this, and I think I've come up with a reasonable solution, and that is to go back to using these saws, because the saws do inflict damage. The problem is then getting the items out of here, which I'm going to use these fans for. These fans are going to blow the items across to this side, and then we're going to have some sort of collection system here to grab them. And yes, my voice is scratchy because I'm not very well. Poor Foxy No Tail. And you might notice at the side here, I have a pipe going all the way up there, because we're going to power this with diesel. And I'm pretty sure I've got all of the pumps in the right place to make sure that that'll flow down here but in order to get it flowing we're going to need power to make it flow anyway let's hop up to the next level and go and check it out so up here in the diesel tank as you can see at the back of the room over here i've got another one of these hose pulleys i've put a little bit of girder above it and a bracket on to make it not look too awful and that's all the way down at the bottom of there and that should hopefully give us a bottomless supply but i won't know until we've got power on there and this just comes straight into here and all the way down like you've just seen so let's hop back 
back down again. And let's see if I'm actually strong enough to wind this down and see if we can get some diesel into this diesel generator. No, I'm not. In that case, let's see if we can get this powered with a temporary water wheel. I don't think it, that's going to give us enough power either. No, oh, yeah, that's actually turning very slowly. But that might just about be enough to get us some biodiesel down this pipe. Oh, and I think I can hear the sound of a diesel generator. I can. It's a horrible sound, but it is going. We have diesel power. And there we go. We've got six of those in there now. And if we make a bunch of silencers, we can shut them up a bit so they're not too loud. And there we go. That's all nice and encased all the way up to the top now. This is all going nicely now, and we've got 12,000 SU available to us. And now let's see if this is powerful enough to power our fans. Your voice sounds horrible. I know I've up the throat really hurt, mate. It's horrible. Not very nice at all. So we want a vertical gearbox there and a bit of one of those there. And it's not overstressed, so that's good. It is blowing the wrong way and it's nowhere near powerful enough. So we need a speed controller. 128 we can get out of it, but that's still blowing the wrong way and not going far enough. Can we get 160? We can. Can we get 200? We can't. How far does that blow? Oh, that blows a long way, but not quite far enough, which means I need more diesel engines. Another three of those. And so that means I can have another three of those. There we go. Three more modular diesel engines. OK, we're now providing 18,000 SU. So if I connect that to that, we should be good to go. And now we're blowing all the way to here, which is still not all the way across. So all we need to do then is get this actually blowing all the way over to this edge and come up with some sort of collection system. So the solution to my problem was to just move the wall out a couple of blocks so that it matches that one which now means the fans can blow all the way across the glow squid now gets pushed all the way to there it then comes all of the way down here it comes along here goes down there goes into that funnel goes across those drains and goes up that chute and into there and now we've got 183 of them perfect so the only thing left for this farm is to figure out a good afk spot and to make it dark because it's very light in here now, turning off my gamma mod, it's not quite as dark as it seems, but it's still not dark enough. And for that, I'm going to need a whole bunch more tinted glass. Now I just want a line of tinted glass along here like this, and then I can use my magic wand to fill in the rest. There we go. Very dark and instantly glow squid. And I probably want to be around about this point here for a good AFK spot from these guys. There we go. A whole bunch of them spawn in. Oh, one down there. Go ahead and be shoot. Oh, mate. Oh, even more of them spawn in. Oh, this is good. Get squished, guys. More of them spawn. Oh, geez. This is yeah, they spawn pretty fast now. As soon as they die, more repair. That's amazing. I haven't even done any perimeter work yet. <laughs> there we go. I've already got 314. The whole system is working. It's working well. So I think a little bit of AFK is called for, and then we'll see how we get on after a couple of nights over here. Impossible books. That's what we're going to be making today in a brand new library because we've got everything we need. And that's because in the last episode, I made a glow squid farm down there underground. Let's go to it. But as usual, there's a problem. There's always a problem. And the problem is the shipping containers. If you remember from the last episode, my glow squid farm minces up the glow squid and all of their glow squid ink sacks went into one of these shipping containers. And when I left the server last night, there was about three and a half thousand in there. But unfortunately, when I logged on this morning, it was completely empty. And there's something else a little bit strange about these as well. You see, these containers are made from an item vault and some dye, or a barrel with some iron sheet and some dye. And a barrel with iron sheet is the same recipe as an item vault. So you'd expect each one of these to hold as many items as a barrel. However, let's put one of those there and one of those there. That's a normal vault. That's a shipping container one. Let's throw a stack of items into there and a stack of items into there. No problem, sir. They've all gone in. Let's throw a threshold switch on now and we'll see that that one's nowhere near full and we'll throw one on there and we'll see that that's completely full for some reason they'll only hold one stack of items per block which is very strange and i'm wondering if that's the reason why for some reason all of my glow ink sacks went missing overnight now the server does restart every day just to make sure everything's running nicely and no there's no one else on here that could have stolen them so clearly something weird's going on but anyway i've replaced it now with these storage drawers and as you can see we've got 26 and a half thousand of them in there and that's because i've done a lot of afk to be fair that's only actually been around about four or five hours so that just goes to show you how powerful this 
crazy glow squid farm is. And I got a couple of comments in the last video asking why I built a glow squid farm. What did I do that for? Well, I need these glow squid ink sacs to make hyper experience. You see, liquid hyper experience is what I need to teach blaze burners how to read. Well, that's not exactly true. I can teach them how to read books without the hyper experience. However, if I feed one some hyper experience, it will actually be able to enchant items with enchantment levels higher than the book I've given it. So that means if I give it an Unbreaking 3 book and I fill it full of hyper experience, it'll enchant items with Unbreaking 4. So of course, if we're going to be doing hyper enchanting and enchanted books and things like that, we're going to need villagers. And I've already got a bunch of those. And we're also going to need somewhere to do all of this. And I'm thinking we're going to be... Oh yeah, this is all different. It's a lot different from last time you saw it. We'll get to that in a minute. Anyway, yes, we're going to need a brand new building today to put them in. And I'm going to be building a library somewhere over here. But before I get to building a library, let's go over all of the things I've done already. Starting with the hotel, I needed more trees, bigger, more luscious trees to help it set into the environment more. So I hopped over the mountain and grabbed a few schematics of some of the large tree variants available from world generation that aren't growable from saplings. And while hopping over the mountain, I found my bees. As the comments suggested, all of my lost bees had indeed flown off to the northwest as per that lovely bug that makes them do that. Back at the hotel, using a bunch of schematic cannons rather than just one, I shaped the trees around the side of the hotel as well as extending the front wall, adding in a fence and a few shorter spruce trees and a bit of grass to make the thicket feel a little bit more dense. And once I was happy with that, I threw down some zinc lamps along the higher ledges of the hotel that I'd seen mobs spawning on previously, as well as a bunch of lanterns along the fence next to the petrol station. I need to make the area around the hotel as light as possible to prevent mob spawning while I'm AFK above the mob farm, so I decided to tackle the road next. Disguising some of the white lines as frame blocks with glowstone to make them emit light did prevent the road being spawnable, however it didn't feel particularly natural having a glowing road with Without any street lights. So I designed some street lamps with a few frame blocks and then used the schematic cannon to place a bunch of them along all of the sections of road. With those in place and textured I continued the gravel and dirt and grass section along the sides of the newest parts of the road and then extended the platform so I could work on the other side of the hotel. First I dug out an area for the car park, brought up the tarmac from the road to fill it in and then added a new wall and parking space lines with frame blocks. Again I added a bunch of new trees to this side of the hotel and then I grabbed a new schematic of a whole group of trees to fill in the area behind the car park to make both sides of the hotel feel a lot more finished and full. Again I planted a few smaller spruce trees in the gaps under the larger trees and threw some bone meal onto the grass below, which brings us to now. So now you're all up to speed, I think you'll all agree that my hotel looks a whole bunch nicer and a lot more settled into this area with all these trees around it. At least I hope you all agree about that. Now there are still a few things that I need to do around here. I still haven't done absolutely anything with the back area here at all and that's because I'm not really 100% sure what to do here. I was kind of thinking swimming pool maybe? But I also thought that just filling it up with trees might look quite nice as well and it would sort of bring it into this area here. The other thing I haven't done with this building is is added any form of interior. Not that there's much room to put an interior in, but I think I'd quite like to have something going in, on in these corner areas here. The other thing about this hotel is its name. I've had a couple of comments now saying that I should call this the Hotel California in reference to the Eagles song about a hotel that's called the Hotel California, but I'm not sure it should be called that. You see, the song lyrics for that song say that you can check out anytime you like, but you can never leave, and I don't know if you've noticed but there's big holes in the wall here I can leave out of this quite easily it also says there's mirrors on the ceiling and pink champagne on ice and I don't see any mirrors on the ceiling and I'm certainly not seeing any champagne so perhaps the Hotel California is maybe not the most apt name for this building but I understand the reference I understand it's to do with monsters i.e. mobs but I'm not convinced so let me know in the comments what you think the name of this hotel should be and I might just pick it anyway that's enough talking about hotels so surely that means we can get on with this hyper engine and building the library, right? No. You see, the problem is I'm going to need a whole bunch of leather if we're building a library to make a whole bunch of bookcases. And as much as I've got a leather farm, kind of, sort of, maybe a bit, I've only got 716 of it. Now, these Hyper Mega Blaze Burners can't actually enchant books. They can only enchant items like weapons and armor. So I'm not going to need books to be enchanted, but of course I'm going to need a whole bunch of them to make bookcases. But I've got a plan. 
In fact, I've got a brand new data pack that I created this morning. And speaking of data packs, if you saw my video a little while ago about the chipped mod data pack that allows you to craft all of the chipped mod blocks using Create Mechanical Saws, that's now available for free on my Discord. So check that out. And so is this one as well. And this new data pack is for all of these backpacks. You see, these backpacks are still just piling up. I've got a whole bunch of them and nothing to do with them. And I've gone to the effort of taking all of the unique ones out and putting them on this wall here so i've got at least one of every single type and the standard backpack which are these basically plain ones here can now be thrown through crushing wheels so if i hop up here and throw that down there and let that go into the crushing wheel you'll see it'll get crushed and recycled into all of its components and one of those components is leather the problem is though it don't work with these ones so you see i've got this gold traveler's backpack here and if i throw that in there that'll go down through the crushing wheels and give me absolutely nothing in return that was a bit of a waste but don't don't worry peeps because i've got a plan for that too and this isn't part of my data pack this is just part of create or the traveler's backpack mod i'm not sure which one it's part of but basically if i throw down a mixing bowl somewhere where i can get power to it throw a mixer on top a cog there and a vertical gearbox and get that going if i throw in one of these backpacks and then throw a set of shears in there as well that'll actually mix it all up and it will give me a standard backpack instead it basically under does whatever it's got on it and gives you that and you get the shares back too which is very nice so if i was just to move all of this round a little bit so we've got some room under there i could maybe put a conveyor belt from over here see if we can get all of that connected to a bit of power we can good and we can pop a funnel on there and we'll stick a brass funnel on there with a standard traveler's backpack filter on there then we can just extend this belt down this way a little bit yeah, throw that on there and then all of the backpacks can come through and they can get all get mixed up and hopefully they're all coming out into here as the standard ones that's amazing so we'll get one of those there and we'll get one of those there and we'll remove this chest for a minute and that and we'll put that there and we'll put that there and we'll extend this belt a little bit like this and then we'll put another piece of shaft there like that and then we'll put that chest there instead with one of those in there and then everything can go on the floor instead of in the chest oh geez now no i didn't and then i can throw all of these ones down here that have already come through here we go lovely and now i'm fully automating recycling these backpacks into all of these amazing materials that's wonderful excellent and now we can send off the next wave of those they can all come through and get mixed how are my shears doing i don't even think the shears are losing durability so that's good and there we go we're generating a whole bunch of items and if you're wondering why it gives you wool and iron and gold and glass that's because the standard traveler's backpack takes four leather gold a sleeping bag which is wool and these backpack tanks which is iron and glass but it doesn't give you everything back it just gives you a small amount of each one and i think that's fair All my backpacks have gone. This is good news. And check this out. I got so much from that. I can't believe just that. Well, it was like six double chests of backpack. But yeah, look at all this leather and iron and wool and gold. This is amazing. You're cheating. It's not cheating. It's recycling, mate. I've got the Create Recycle add-on, but it don't work with Traveler's backpack, so I had to make my own. Cheating. It's not cheating. I'd have used all those materials to cre create those backpacks. Well, you got them for free. No, stop it. And there we go. So now that that's done, we can hang on a minute. What? I've been thinking. Oh, no. This Hotel California. It's not the Hotel California. Yeah, but listen, right? The spiders on the ceiling. The creepers aren't so nice. The mobs are all just prisoners here of their own device. And in the massive basement, the mobs are all released. And they get crushed by the crushing wheels and give nuggets of XP. Well, that's the idea. Look, I've just lost my train of thought now. I got, what was I doing? Hmm. The last thing I remember, you were running for the door. You were going to build that library that you talked about before. Well, just stop it. Relax, Mr. Foxman. We're programmed to receive. Who is? The mobs can despawn any time they like, but they can never leave. <laughs> stop that. That's enough. Okay, yeah, I guess with those lyrics, this is a little bit like the hotel, but it's not those lyrics. It's not just right. Okay, no, the comments. What do you think? Oh, jeez, stupid random voice that just talks to me for no reason. Anyway, now we got leather and a lot of silliness, apparently. It's time to make a library. And I'm building it here. Well, I've no idea what the design is going to be. I've no idea how I'm going to do it, but I am. I'm going to do it, and I'm going to start now. 
So this library then, as you can see, I've made a start and it looks kind of strange. And that's because I'm trying to make this building, which is the public library in Stuttgart, Germany. And I've tried to downscale it a bit because the actual scale of the real building is massive. In fact, if I was to do it real scale, this building would need to be 83 blocks long, which is about five chunks by five chunks and then another like five chunks worth high. And that's ridiculous. But basically what I've got is not right. So I need to tear all of that out and I thought instead Instead of doing a montage, we'll talk our way through it. But before I can do anything else, I'll need to smash everything to bits. Again. What do you mean again? Yeah, I've already done all this once and deleted it, and now I'm doing it again and deleting it. I think each floor should be five blocks tall, and if each floor is five blocks tall, then each one of these window bits needs to be five blocks long. And then it's got glass all the way around there like that. But that hole in the middle is now way too big. So what I'm going to do is use a bunch of frame blocks. But the windows also have like a white frame on the inside as well. That all being said, when I watched a video about this building, these windows were actually really thin. They weren't full blocks like this at all. Realistically, if I was doing it exactly like this building was, all of the windows should be this thin. The only problem now is this hole in here is way too small. It needs to be half of these again. And I can't really do thin framed blocks. So I think I'm going to have to do the windows a full block width just so that I can get the shape right but that's fine it doesn't have to be exact it can be exactly how i want it that sort of width at the sides and then that hole in the front looks about the right size but now this bit's too big the original picture that's a lot thinner than the sides but if we go up another layer it doesn't quite look right so perhaps the floor should only be four blocks high instead of five blocks high but will that give us enough room inside on each floor to have exactly what we need and it probably will now that should look a lot more like the picture, which it does. The only thing the picture has that this doesn't is a white trim on the inside of these. And again, I could use frame blocks to do that. But let me little hole in the middle gets too small. That doesn't look too far off, but these white bits look way too thick. And the other thing these windows have got is every single one has a railing going across the front, apart from the actual main entrance. And I was using copycat panels to do that, but obviously they're going to be one block wide. Now I could put them on the outside like that instead, but that just looks wrong. Who would have thought a perfectly square building made out of perfect squares would be so hard to replicate in Minecraft? I'd really like it if these white stained glass windows actually had white on the outside rather than the black bits. That's much more what I was looking for. Yes, that actually looks very nice. And that's just a little resource pack I made for myself, just retexturing one block. But then I've still, I've still got to do this gap in the middle. So I've been fiddling around with this a little bit. And this is the closest I can get to for it looking like the real thing in terms of the gap in the middle, the glass being the right widths around the outside but then this is no longer a square which is very much unlike the real building i could just keep it as glass and just have that window extra thick at the sides and then that kind of works and if that's the case we don't need these to be framed blocks they might as well just be glass and then that means that each one of these windows is now eight blocks long by five blocks tall which is not really square but then looking a lot closer at the reference pictures i've got they're not really square either but i don't think they're quite that that rectangular but that's what we're going to be going for so let's see how many of these we're going to get along here well keeping the platform the same size as it was before we're going to get five of them but i was going to do this three chunks by three chunks which actually brings us up to here so we could probably get away with a couple more that's not too bad not too bad at all this is going to be the front door so this has a completely different design to the rest something a little bit like that kind of works for the front door i think it looks a little bit spaghetti but it's fine now the other thing I'm noticing from these reference pictures is the actual building, the bottom of the building here is actually in line with the grass, as you can see from the picture of the front door that I was just looking at. Here we go again. And now everything's down at grass level. We can do the sides of the building, which is basically exactly the same as the front, except they don't have the front door. And I could use the schematic cannon to put these sides in as well, but we'll save it until we've got a whole layer done and then we'll use that to do the other layers with. And there we go. That's the entire bottom floor external walls done. 
So now I can use the schematic cannon to make this go up a few floors. Let's grab the old schematic and quill and we need to go all the way from there all the way over to here. Okay, let's find out exactly what we're going to need to do this. So doing the maths for another six floors, I'm going to need 336 andesite bars, 336 copycat panels, 1680 smooth calcite columns, 168 smooth inlaid calcite and 3024 white stained glass things. And I've got nearly all of that except for calcite. I've only got 1800 of that and that's literally all I've got. So let's hop back down our original mine and see if we can find any down any of these tunnels. There we go, look, a whole bunch of the stuff, maybe. I don't know if this is a whole bunch or not, but I'm going to take it. So how much did I get? Oh, quite a lot, which brings my grand total for count size up to 2,459, which is just about enough. And here we go, the last few blocks are going in place on the very top layer, and I've put a new floor in. And that means that the entire outer shell of this building is still not finished because of the big old section that needs to go at the top, right up there. But we'll worry about that in a minute. And you might be asking, why have I picked this building? Why this one in particular? What has this got to do with hyper experience and enchanting and all that sort of stuff? It's just a big old white building with holes in it. Well, this building kind of comes to life at night when it all turns blue. A little bit like those fancy blue blazes doing their fancy blue enchanting. I don't know how I'm going to make this turn blue at night. I've got some ideas. Anyway, now that the external walls are in, I need to get the roof layer in, and I think I should probably skip ahead a bit because this video is already going on a bit and we haven't even started on the internals, so I'll see you after I've made some progress. But we want to see you build. Oh, jeez. Okay, fine. First, I headed back to the mines to gather up as much calcite as I could find, and using that, I added the final layer to the library and began working on the roof, starting by throwing around a bunch of railings at the edge to mimic the look of the actual building and then doing my best to try and recreate the roof area which I didn't really have a lot of reference for. I threw down a ring of industrial iron plating leaving a large square hole in the middle which would be for a lighting feature. The problem was I don't really know how big that needs to be so I put a quick wall around where I thought it might go and then messed around with some stairs leading down from the roof. Well I feel like I'm getting somewhere but it's quite difficult to do the roof of this building because I can't find any decent aerial shots of the building. The video I looked at before does show somebody walking up some stairs and they come to this railing and there's a bit of gravel down there and then they come round here and then the camera sort of cuts and then they're looking at the side of the building over here and it's all a bit difficult what i do know it's it's got a big trench around the outside like this even got some sunbeds up there so you can sunbathe and in the middle there's this massive big sort of glass design i guess so it's sort of surrounded by i guess concrete and then it's got big old glass panels in it and that matches up with the floors below so i don't really know what size i need that until we've got the floors in on the inside one thing i have done now is turn off my dynamic crosshair which is a little bit unfortunate because i do like that mod but now i can actually place these industrial iron catwalks it's no longer conflicting with that and actually when i break them now i get them back i've no idea why that mod broke those but it did now none of these windows are visible from the main floors of the building so we're going to need some sort of walls around about this point here on every single level some will have doors in obviously to get to the outside little walkways that take you up there and there's also quite a big entrance hall of the building as well which I'm not really sure how it all fits in considering it's a square building all based around its center. So I think we're probably going to ignore that atrium and just go straight on to building this library. Now the really interesting thing about this building is the floors. They all have a different depth and I don't mean up and down. What I mean is let's say the bottom floor bookcase is around about this level here. The walkway would be a couple of blocks out from that and then the next floor upstairs the bookcases would be a little bit further back and then that one's floor would stick out a little bit so it kind of staircases up the whole building until you get to the top and i think i'm going to start from the very top and this isn't the block i'm using for the floor but it's easy to place and break for now as temporary blocks and that's going to be at this level here so we need enough room to have our walkway around the outside which in reality is quite thin so we can get probably get away with having that wall there then we need enough blocks outside of that to have a few bookshelves and the stairs do actually stick out to the side of the platform rather than actually being part of the floor so i guess it would be more like that so if this floor is one two three four five six along it looks like the next one would come out two blocks wider than the stairs that were on that one and then you'd have the stairs after that one as well so we'd have stairs here 
I have no idea if this is making sense. So the floors would be a little bit like that, but as you might be able to tell, that's going to cause us a bit of a problem because we're not even down to the bottom floor yet and we've already reached the middle of the room. And although the middle floor has only got a very, very tiny section, it's certainly going to be bigger than that. And that's because this is not to scale with the original building. So I'm going to have to take some artistic liberties here and make it fit. And I think one way I can do that is to make this hallway round the side only one block wide because it isn't anything other than a hallway with some stairs in it and it does look pretty thin on the video. And watching that video again, these hallways are incredibly thin but the thing that makes them feel wider is something I've made a big old mistake with and that's these windows. These windows should 100% be thin panels like that and then you'd feel like you'd have a bunch more room walking down here. But I'd have to do that for every, every single window. It's got to be done. Oh, why? Why? How do, how do I put it? Well, maybe it's not going to take so long after all. I'll just replace it all with those. But I'm not going to get my glass back doing that. Let's throw this up to the next one. Throw that in there. Click go. And yeah, no, I'm losing all of my glass doing that. It doesn't matter. I've got infinite glass. If I look in my glass supplies, I've got 2.3 million of it. And it's still coming in thick and fast. So glass isn't going to be a problem. That's better. All of my windows have been replaced, which means, yes, it's cost me a lot of glass. Well, now I've got 2.4 million glass. So I've been trying to work out these floor levels and still not being overly happy with it. But then it's occurred to me that I didn't check the pictures properly again. So I've watched that video again. And it turns out that the library, even though it's got 10 floors on the outside, there's only five floors on the inside. And that might sound a bit odd, but basically the actual floors of the library are all the way from the top. So they basically got five floors at the top and then that big atrium room that's at the bottom, which is a, just a, basically a big square room, is the bottom floors and then you take stairs up to it. And that means we can probably make it a whole bunch better. But yeah, that looks a lot more like the actual sizing of the actual building. Well, things are slowly getting there. In fact, I've done a ridiculous amount of work since I last spoke to you and it's all on the internals and none of it's finished. But as you can see down here, we've got that internal atrium bit, although it's not quite as tall as the one from the reference pictures I've got. But that's because this building's not as tall as the actual building. And it's got the skylight coming from upstairs. It's got a bunch of these gracie window things. And if we go this way, we get to a staircase, which takes us up to our actual library area. And this is the first floor here again. We've got big old spaces around these rooms with absolutely nothing in and it's going to stay like that for a while because it's going to take me an awful long time to actually decorate this place but here we go the actual main event of the library we've got that bit of the floor which shines light all the way from outside all the way down there and we've got all of the different floors and all of the different stairs at the top level i've put in those things that i saw from the reference picture and i've done it on both sides for symmetry and on the other levels i haven't actually added anything at all i haven't even added in the internal wall see each one of these parts here there's going to be another wall around and all of the bookcases and things are going to sit on this side. So from the very top floor, it's quite a nice little view looking down. This ceiling took me absolutely ages to do, as I'm sure you can imagine. Then we got all of these fancy little frame block lights around keeping everything nice and light. And if we go out of this door here and head along this grate, we'll get to our staircase to the roof. And on the roof, well, I didn't really know what to do with the roof again. Lack of reference material. But we've got the skylight bit in the middle here and we've got these little grated areas here, which which I've seen from the pictures often have deck chairs on for things like sunbathing. And that's basically it. And it's taken me an awfully long time. And one of the reasons for that is I needed a handful of blocks which didn't exist. Adding custom blocks to Minecraft Java Edition is quite a tricky thing to do. You can't just throw them in a data pack and have a bunch of new blocks to hand. You really need to make a mod. So I did. For a while now, I've wanted great blocks. You see how these blocks are grated? I've wanted blocks like that and they just don't seem to exist in any of the packs that I've got. So I spent a day learning how to make a mod and I've created a bunch of blocks. We've got andesite great blocks, industrial iron great blocks and iron great blocks. And they're just made on the stone cutter with a bit of iron ingot. And you can see actually in this room, there's a whole bunch of the iron ones just in the walls here, giving us some light. And that's because I've made these work with frame blocks as well. And when you texture a frame block, you can hit it with glowstone in order to make it emit light, which is very handy. The other thing I've done with these is made them all pickupable with the wrench, which makes life a whole bunch easier. And you can see the 
there's another block here which I've tried to mimic industrial iron but make it just with normal iron so this is block of iron plating and this is a block of industrial iron unfortunately though I couldn't make the connected textures work because I don't know how to do that and these blocks have already come in ridiculously handy coming back up to the roof you might notice all of these bits here are those great blocks because it looks more like what was actually on the picture than any of the other blocks I could find in this mud pack it was a long way to go just to show you that and the other type of blocks that I've always wanted are different types of colors of light blocks because there really aren't that many light blocks in the game of various colors so I added in all of these these are light emitting concrete blocks which are obviously a lot brighter than concrete but you craft them with four glow squid ink sacks and concrete like this recipe here and then I wanted those but see-through so I made these light emitting glass blocks which are basically again concrete but transparent which emit light of different colors or at least I hope they would and these are crafted with glow squid ink sacks and stained glass so it's a good job I made that glow squid ink farm in the last episode and again these can all be picked up with the wrench which is very handy and again they can all be added to frame blocks as well and they'll emit their light while they're doing that which is also very handy because I've also used these all over the place in this build as well you can see we've got some up there and heading back upstairs again there's a bunch more upstairs too in fact these lights have all got the white light concrete block on there and in between this ceiling area there's actually two layers of stained glass one at this level and one right through there at the top and between that you can see there's those white great blocks and there's also a load of the white glass blocks as well so it always gives off plenty of light but the main reason I wanted these light blocks is because I really hoped that I could use the blue ones in order to make this thing look blue at night time now obviously not without shaders on and my idea was that we could come behind these and I don't know chuck a bunch of these blue light blocks up here then at night time that would give that a blue glow it doesn't quite work like that you see if I throw some shaders on and drop one of these down you would hope that it would emit a blue light but it doesn't it emits a white light and no matter what I've tried I can't get these things to actually emit different colors of light that's not gonna work what might work however would be to use these framed wall boards on the outside of these and then texture these with these glass light blocks and then you can see that gives the entire thing that sort of blue hue and I could do that the whole way around the whole building on every single side and make it all look like it was glowing blue but then it would glow blue during the day as well and it would cost me an absolute fortune in all those materials so I don't think that's a reasonable solution. And of course, I did consider a massive contraption that would bury itself in the ground during the day and come up at night and just be absolutely covered in these things and surround the building. But unfortunately, it would be too big that when it moved, it would go invisible anyway, and it would probably tear the building to shreds trying to make it work. So I'm going to leave the ideas to you guys of how we're going to turn this building blue at night because I'm all out of ideas. Now, if you want this mod pack, I am going to try and make it available publicly on CurseForge so that I can add it to this pack. But please be aware that I'm not going to be supporting it i'm not going to update it for different versions of minecraft and i'm not going to make it for different mod loaders i've made this for me for this particular pack and whilst i might add more things to it in the future for now it's just how it is anyway it's time to get these layers at least as finished off as i can which means put in a whole bunch more walls which means a whole bunch more white concrete and it also means making a whole bunch of these framed bookshelves because these with a little bit of white concrete need to be all over the place so i Adding these walls in is pretty easy. But now I'm officially out of white concrete. So I've got to go make a whole bunch more. And I think a few thousand should do it. Oh, and we've already got nearly 2,000 coming through here already, which means that washing machine and this washing machine are all both. Oh, wow, look how fast this one goes. It's very speedy. I'll have this concrete done in no time. And there we go. We now have all of the internal walls on every single one of the levels. So it must be bookcase time. The question is, how many books can we make? We've got 1,648 leather, and that means we can make quite a lot of books but there we go that's it 1718 books so now we need to make a whole bunch of these bookshelves and we also need to make these ones which are blank but they don't need any books so that's good and there we go that's how many i can make i don't know if that's going to be enough so starting at this bottom floor then and looking at the picture it looks like we've got basically three high rows of these and above that is where my handy grates are coming going to come in because apparently there's something a little bit like that running across the top and that kind of works Okay, and now to save myself a few of those, let's put in some blank ones around the place as well. 
smash a few holes in this and then we can go round and replace them. And that's going to save me a whole bunch of bucks. There we go, that doesn't look too bad. And now what I need to do, grab myself some trap doors. And what we're going to do in these corner areas is just have a bunch of shelves. And that way we can make the area look a little bit more full and save ourselves some bookshelves as well. And did you know that with this mod pack, you can actually make piles of books. You can put books down just like this all over the place and you can stack them on top of each other as well at funny angles. So I think they could come in useful. And with those little corner bits there like that, that does make this room feel a whole lot more finished. So we can go up to the next layer. Hurrah! And looking at the picture for this layer, there's not a door there. In fact, the doors are offset slightly and they're in line with this here. So we've got one there and we've got another one there. And then there's the bookcases all the way in between these doors. Again, with that fancy grating along the top. And again, it continues pretty much into the corner, but I'm going to do the same trick again. Save myself a few bookcases and just have some more shelves in the corner. What's slightly different about this floor is that this is the first floor that actually has some bookcases just sort of out in the open like this as well. So we'll have a few of those dotted around. And another thing this floor has is seating. There's a whole bunch of seats all the way around for people to sit on and read their books. So I'm going to add a bunch of those in. And one more thing I can do to save myself a little bit of money on this leather because my bookshelves are already running out, we're only on the second floor, and that is to copy a little bit like what there is in some of the pictures and add in some shelf areas for these, although I don't know whether that's going to work ever so well on the bottom. I'm thinking if I use a couple of those there like that, and then on bits like this, we can chuck down a couple of these types of books, and that could work. Yeah, I think it will. And it adds a nice amount of variety to this as well, which is good. And I could also use some things from the supplementaries mod like these hourglasses to fill up some of these spaces so that we're not just wasting tons of books i'd quite like to make these globes but i need antique ink for that but i don't have any what about some statues yeah i guess that could kind of work and like a history museum-y type thing on there that'll work and you can never say no to a nice goblet here and there so that makes that floor look a whole bunch more finished and a whole lot more like there's a lot going on so we've only got three floors to go on the next floor the doors are back in the middle but there's more doors more doors like like Harry Potter? No, you're thinking the Lord of the Rings, mate. Oh. And a substantial amount of time later, that next floor is done as well, and this is all starting to come together quite nicely. But what about the Hyper Enchanting? What about the villagers? Where are they all going to go? Um, uh, they're all going to be out in these hallway rooms outside, out of the way, because as much as I intended for those to be a key part of this building originally, I'm actually really happy with how this is all coming together, and I kind of don't want to spoil it. Now, it would be nice if I could say, let's say, like, throw an axe onto there it would get enchanted and it would come back again with the right enchantment on it so maybe we could do something like inside the walls but i think realistically this is going to be the best place for all of that stuff that's going on on this level i've been as absolutely sparing as possible digging out all of my old enchanted rubbish books to basically use as many as the chiseled bookshelves as possible to save myself on the actual bookshelves and i think that kind of works so the top layers then well this one's pretty much the same as that one but the doors are in different places but the very top floor well this one's completely different this one just has bookcases coming off the sides of the walls like this with a gap below the ceiling and it's just got i guess a bunch of these coming down here pretty much all the way around wherever there isn't that and then to cover up the end bit we'll just use some framed wall boards on there and that looks a whole bunch better although it is going to cost me a lot of bookshelves so i think i'm going to leave this floor till last and concentrate on this one well, like a total moron, I've been trading with this guy for ages. I keep buying these impact books off him because I thought they were the cheapest at six emeralds each. But it turns out this guy's got flame for five. I've already pretty much filled the library up with impact books. Jeez. And I've also been wasting my emeralds buying a whole bunch of these bookshelves in order to turn them into books so that then I could trade with the villagers and it never occurred to me that I could actually use those bookshelves and take the books to make the new book. Oh, jeez. Well, anyway, it doesn't matter. I've got a whole bunch more enchanted books now to go and shove back in our new library. So I didn't drop off my levels at my XP tank. Not to worry, we're back at the library and we are just about done on the very last main floor. It's all looking pretty good, that level. It's all looking pretty good, that level, which means I only need to do this top floor and that's just a case 
case of putting a bunch of these in. That said, I would like to fill some of these out with a few more of these enchanted books because it is looking a little bit dry down here. Dry? Well, empty. You know what I mean. Let's do this. The last lot then. So what we got a three wide gap in between each one. That makes sense. Then we'll throw in a bunch of those. And I'm just going to do this all the way pretty much until we get to the corner. Which is just about here. And then I guess we'll leave that three blocks and then we'll do the same thing here like this. Now yeah, they are a bit closer to each other on the reference picture, but I'm running out of bookshelves fast. So uh, you can go get more from the villagers. I spent all day with those villagers. I'm not doing any more trading with those villagers. I'm sick of those villagers. I'm not doing it. No. Anyone else want to buy any paper? Uh, one last call for paper. Anyone at all? Anyone want to take my paper? No, you're all out of stock on paper. Okay, then bookshelves. Dad, I'm out of emeralds already. I only got 11. Take me spuds. You also take spuds. And you take spuds. You're all spudded out. And that takes us back to paper. Okay, let's break down what I've got and see how many of the framed bookcases I can make. 41! Yay! We've got enough! So I can just throw these last few bookshelves in here. Just like that. There we go. That's all of the bookshelves now in this entire facility. I've managed to do it. I've managed to spread them thin enough that they take up the whole thing. And I think this building looks pretty wonderful. So with the internal parts of the library 100% decorated and complete, that means we can now focus on the hyper-enchanting part of this, which means we've got to get biodiesel over here for heat. We've got to make hyper-experience. We need the villagers over here. Hyper enchanting, it's actually going to happen today. In the last episode, I built this ginormous library to hold it all in. And today we're going to be going inside and actually fitting in a whole bunch of things to make my tools, armor and weapons ridiculously OP. I might even upgrade from the diamond I'm wearing, but you never know. The inside of this library is fully decorated on every single floor now, but that's only on these internal floors. If we go to the external floors out here, there's just this massive space with absolutely nothing in it and that's going to change today and one of the first things that needs to change is that we need an elevator because I don't like going up and down these stairs and I think the best place to squeeze that in is going to be in the corner somewhere like this so it doesn't interfere with anything but it will geez I've got to go all the way back to the top now to show you the next bit you see because each of the floors on here is angled slightly towards the outside wall if we come all the way to the top here and into the corner and start digging down well first of all we're going to end up in this little gap here which isn't big enough for an elevator so we're gonna to have to smash that to bits and probably these bits to bits as well so that we can actually get in and out and that's a bit of a problem because on the inside of this we've got this corner here so I think that corner is gonna to have to go but this is the only floor that that really happens on if we keep digging down into the next floors you'll see there's a big space here we've got plenty of room there and if we go down into the next floor we've got plenty of room there and if we go down into the next floor well we've got plenty of room here too and so on and so forth all the way down to the ground floor so yeah I think this is the perfect spot for an elevator. The problem is though that elevators require power and there's absolutely no power to this building at all. So we're going to need that. And I want to power this building on diesel because, well, I've got an infinite supply of it now and it makes things go really fast. But my diesel lives all the way over there in a big tank underground. So I'm going to have to get that delivered all the way over to here. And I can't have it delivered unless I've got roads going up to these things and paths and all that sort of stuff. So I guess the first place I should start is with the library grounds. And that should be relevant relatively easy we just need to put in a few paths and I'm going to put them going all the way around the outside because apparently according to the comments this building has entrances on every single side which is absolutely fine not a problem but as well as the paths we're going to need a little road coming up here and a car park somewhere for things to actually park in and while we could have that out the front here which is realistically probably not a bad idea I was thinking of maybe squeezing that in at the back so it wasn't quite so ugly hmm we could definitely have a loading bay at the back for the diesel but I think it does make sense to have the car park at the front so maybe I should start destroying a whole bunch of this area, getting a car park in, getting access for my tankers, and then bringing one of these tankers over here full of diesel. Well, let's not run before we can walk. Let's get the paths in first. And for the paths, I'm going to be using stone tiles because I've used that pretty much in all of the other buildings for path work around the outside, and I really like these blocks. Well, that's a pretty inefficient way of placing them when I've got a construction wand. 
And there we go, that's the path going around the entire thing. Obviously, we want one leading up to the main entrance here from our car park. And we'll use the exact same tarmac design we've got for the roads with the rough mud, the trodden deep slate, and the trodden blackstone. And that was nice and quick to put in. Now, I guess we just need the car park spaces. Let's assume we're going to have a little bit of a wall there. And I, so I guess the first space would go here. And we're going to use frame blocks for this, as I normally do. And these have a gap of three, then the next one like that and then because that's then the wrong side of the block in order to make those even then we go a gap of two smash this bit to bits here and then we do that there like that and then we've got a gap of three in the middle but it's an offset gap so if we actually try to build the car to fit in this space it's not going to fit very well and i can just do that the whole way along here and now that we've got lines in on both sides i guess we need to shape the edge of this so that it doesn't look quite so weird against the grass probably with a little wall or a walkway and I guess we'll do something similar to what we've got going on with the hotel wall over there, because that kind of works. I'm not sure if I like the wall now. I've done all of that. Maybe a fence would have been better. And now the wall is gone, and we've got a fence around here instead, which I think does make it feel like it fits a whole lot better with this area. And now we've got a way of cars actually getting into the car park. We don't actually have any way of them getting down there to actually deliver stuff. So I think we're going to have to rip this out again, widen this up, and then we can have two lanes going down there. Or I can just actually have this car park bit divert that way for like delivery vehicles and things like that uh, yeah fence has got to go again and now that this yard is in and we've got a little access road all the way down to the car park there's no reason i can't start bringing another truck down here to bring us in some diesel and i'm going to be basically making a carbon copy of that truck there but this one's going to be a diesel truck instead of a lava truck and it's going to be coming from there and the way this works is the truck drives up to these doors the doors open and the lava one already works because the lava tank here pulling from the infinite at lava source below but i don't have one of these set up for diesel yet so i guess i should do that next and i've already got a pump here that we use to actually fill this thing in but i kind of want to leave that for now just in case something happens to this and i need to refill it so what i'm going to do is add another pump in here and just pump it up to the top hopefully and this point here we've already got one of these going in there for our other wrong so i guess we can just bring it alongside this and have them next to each other Let's grab ourselves a hose pulley and stick that on there. Wind it all the way down to the bottom of the tank. And we'll do something very similar to the design of this one. With a bit of girder coming off the wall there like that. Joining it there. And then we need a little bracket there to hold that on. And there we go. Now I just need a pump on there powered to actually pump it into this tank. So if I just throw another cog there next to that one and put a vertical gearbox in there. That should be all we need to actually start getting some biodiesel in there. There we go. It's coming in. Let's just tidy that up a little bit. Fill the floor back in now one would ever know and now we've got biodiesel coming into this tank fantastic so now we just need a truck so i guess it's truck building time And here it is, the brand new tanker, which looks very similar to the old tanker. There's a few slight differences to it. It's actually got these little hook cabs on this one. I've rearranged the wheels a little bit to make it look a little bit nicer. And I've also messed about with the cab slightly, removing a couple of frame blocks just to give the driver a little bit better field of view. I've made it work with the doors now. So when it reverses up here, the door will automatically open. And as you can see, it's already being pumped into with biodiesel. It's got a whole bunch of that in there already. So the next thing I need to do is create a schedule get a driver and get it going over there but at the moment over there there's nowhere to go to so my plan obviously is that it drives down here comes into this area here and offloads the only problem is i don't think there's enough room in here for it to fully turn around and go back out again and i don't really want it reversing all the way back down there so i think i might have to extend this slightly in that direction so that it can come down here reverse up drop its diesel off somewhere around about here and then that can get flowed underground into there and then it'll be able to pull forward and go off again and not only that we're going to need a whole bunch more track and a whole bunch more stations and the problem is that all of that that we need to do is underneath there i haven't dug any of this out yet the actual main road that it's going to be coming down stops here at this grass and that's directly below my feet here and as you can see there's all of that road ahead of me that we just don't actually have road for i've got a whole bunch of work to do before i can even do that i'm just bringing this little man over the mountains to see my bees or maybe i'm using him as a driver i don't know but I found my bees again. Hey, bees. And here we go, little driver. Your chariot awaits. If you just go down there, thank you. Let me open the door. Grab you a lead and shove you in there. I know I, I didn't want to get in. Thank you. There you go. Let me out. And hopefully I've done this schedule correctly so that it'll basically fill up here, then leave out of there, and then do all the things it should do. Hopefully. I haven't tested it. Let's find out. Let's give that to him. He should go forward. 
and then he should go straight back again. That's it. And then he'll wait for 10 seconds to make sure there's no cargo activity. Then he's going to go forward again, just like that. And then he should reverse up that way with a bit of luck. There we go. And now he should come all the way out of here. And he should, hopefully, without crashing into that one over there. Boys, wait. Oh, dear. Hmm. You see, he shouldn't have gone on to that one because that one was technically in a different thing. But he did for some reason. But yeah, I, I could probably do with some more track here so that they've actually got room to get round each other, I guess. Let's grab it from here and we'll take that all the way over here to lava exit like that. And now hopefully this one, when he reverses, he'll, he'll choose that route to go out instead of the other one. But I do need to make sure. See, they're all on the same signal thing. So they really shouldn't, shouldn't even have come in. I think that should be okay. Maybe, possibly, maybe. Who knows? Right, let's get him back on the road there. He should start disappearing and off in that direction. You can carry on in that direction. Where are you going? No, 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 you're not doing the right thing at all. You go, you're going backwards, sir. Oh, well, now I, I'm missing this one. I'm missing him going to the library. Where did he go? Oh, no. Oh, he's in the car park okay yeah is he gonna go where i want him to go though i'm slightly concerned about that where are you going where are you going right okay he pulls up there yeah that's about a good spot and he should hopefully reverse into this bit here he's probably gonna go through the no he hasn't gone through the fence now he's gonna wait 10 seconds because there's nowhere to actually offload to and then he should come back out again he did oh and he didn't hit the fence that's good and he should go all the way back and do all of that again but ideally without crashing where why are you trying to go to the library that's not even on your schedule what are you? You're, you're trying to fake. You're trying to get the right way round again, aren't you? You're just totally lost. Where's he going to go? Is he going to reverse up? The, no, no, he's reversing back out. Don't reverse onto a main road. You, oh my goodness me! Where are you going? Stop! 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 Come back! Stop! You moron! Have you tried facing in the right direction? Right, where was he even trying? He was trying to get to lava forward. Oh, I think we need to reset your schedule a little bit, sir. There we go. Let's send you back to the lava place. Off you go. Don't do it again. Now look, we got a traffic jam. There's lorries everywhere. This one's coming back again. I'm going to sort out the little drop-off point then, and hopefully we won't have any more of those sorts of issues. Oh, here he is. Uh, so we need that to be basically there. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Stick a bracket on there and yeah, a little bit of casing on there. And now that's ready to collect, sort of, kind of. But it's got nowhere to go. Let's do a little bit of digging. Oh, I want this all the way across here and into our library. And hopefully the library is around about here somewhere. There we go. That's the inside wall. So if I pop up there, we're, we're almost there. <laughs> a couple more blocks. <laughs> there we go. Perfect. And then that there, and then we need some sort of pump system and some power system to get it all in here. But I suppose the first thing we should probably have is a tank. And yes, inside the library, I'm having a power station and diesel tanks and all that sort of stuff. It's fine. It's not real. You should do it outside. I don't want it outside. I want it inside where it's all hidden away in a little room. And that's how it's going to be. OK, so that's going to be our tank for diesel. And that means we're going to need a pump on there to actually pump it in. And we're going to need power for all of this. We're going to need power for our power station. Just like we've got over at our liquid factory, we've got water wheels powering the pumps for the water. And we've got exactly the same thing under the hotel, powering the pumps for this power station. And why do we have power for our power stations? Well, these things have a nasty habit. Oh no, it's crashed again. These things have a nasty habit of running out of power sometimes. And when they do, they struggle to start back up again because they've got no water so by having your water always powered then these things pretty much never run out all right where did you crash oh you've done it wow we've got a super long tank of this how do you keep crashing in here but it's got signals you morons never a minute peace how did you how i don't understand how many signals do i need in this place maybe those ones are a bit too close together okay let's move those all right you come back over here a minute and you i don't even know where you were stop it Stop it. It's so annoying. Okay, right. This is all very complicated. This track is totally surplus to requirements. It does absolutely nothing. So let's get rid of this one for a second. Right, these two need to be totally separated. So let's put one of those there and let's put one of those there. And that's going to separate both sides of this. So if we've got one up here, yeah, we, we need to separate that as well. So let's pop one of those there and one of those there so it can go both ways. And we'll do the same thing here so it can go both ways. And now if we've got one that's pulled forward it's not going to interfere with one over here that's pulled forward and if they're yeah doing things over here they're not going to interfere with each other so let's just shove you over there for now and let's just put you back out stop it <laughs> okay fine we'll put you there why are you moving forward why 
<laughs> There's clearly something there. It, oh my goodness me. You shouldn't move. You shouldn't move if there's something else in your little pit. Right, now you're waiting for that one. But you can't find where you're supposed to be going now because I don't... Oh my goodness me. Right, that one's gone. Ah, now this one's doing something. So back at our little lava area then, we're going to need water wheels to power the power. Pick a bit of shaft on there. A nice tasty little gearbox there. Cover all that up. Make it not quite so ugly. And then we'll just increase the speed of this a bit. Now that can actually bring in some diesel. Oh, and it's already coming in. The lorry must be there. I didn't even notice. It is. Oh, wonderful. It's working. So I should probably make this door an actual door. And there we go. We've got a nice outside door. We've got plenty of diesel to get on with. And we've got some power. So let's make a power station. And we're not going to require millions and millions of power in here. So I think I'm probably just going to go with one blaze burner for now. And this little blaze burner is going to need to be sat on some pipe. Then we can give him a little bit of a straw so he can attach himself to that pipe. And then we're just going to give him a little bit of a tank. I can throw a gearbox there and then a cog there. And there we go. Wow, it's already powered. Look at him. He's super powered. What I might do in order to decorate it a bit nicer is put some more tanks around the bottom here like this and then turn those off. And then you get sort of like, I guess, the bottom of a tank type look. And now I can't see my blaze burner. Oh no. Oh no, they've crashed again and now I've got water everywhere. And now we should be getting water in there. We are. But it's not going to start doing anything until I put at least one steam engine on there and I guess we're going to have the power sticking out in this direction. So let's stick one of those on there and put one of those there and there we go. So it's going to be a level 2 boiler by the looks of things with the heat so maybe we could do with another couple of blaze burners. Give them a couple more straws. Oh and there we go. That's taken us straight up to level 6. Perfect. So we just need three blaze burners in there. Let's move you on sorry about that little chap ah give you a straw back again and now that looks a whole bunch better we've got a nice level six boiler so we can attach six of these things and give ourselves a whole bunch of power wonderful and i'm just going to use three steam engines for now and then we've got plenty of power in here for when we need it however we won't have for long because our diesel's going to run out because our trucks keep crashing into each other so let's go and fix that problem where did they cr i'm assuming they've crashed over there again yep look at them you morons how do you keep doing it stop becoming one with each other it's weird. Okay, this time I've took away all of the signals from down here, apart from the ones on the entrance and the exit. So this is all technically the same track, apart from the bits where they reverse down to the actual station. And that hopefully means that there'll only ever be one in here at a time. Back in the library power room, I've now put some walls around. I've put some lights in the ceiling and I've put some doors on to keep this area nice and light and separated from everything else, which means we've still got an absolutely massive area all around the bottom floor of this library for many, many other things. No idea what they're going to be although i do know that the next thing we're going to be having is going to be this elevator although we're going to need power all the way to the roof in order to power this so i guess we're going to need power from our power station to power that and then we'll just cut a little bit of a hole in the ceiling and we've got some space here because we've got these light blocks there so we can hide a bunch of this up here and then we can just take it straight up that corner there up through all of the different layers and another gearbox and that'll go upstairs good and now you'd never know so this is going to be my little elevator. It's only going to be a small one because I need to squeeze it into the corner. And normally I would put the redstone contacts underneath these things. However, that will cause us a few problems higher up in this building if we do that. So this time it's going to go on the top. And that means I need an elevator pulley all the way at the top. And we want this to be the last floor it comes up to. I don't need it to go all the way up to the roof. So that means we should be able to get away with having our elevator pulley there. And then we just need to power it. And the power is just over here. And then if we put one of those on there and one of those on there, we should be able to attach that straight to our pulley there. If I drop that down, there we go. That's gone all the way down to the elevator. Let's just try that. Make sure that's actually going to be in the right place. Hop up to the next floor. And it is. Oh, good. Well, the wall does a little bit come through the size of the elevator on the way up and down. Oh, well, that's not the end of the world. All of the elevator contacts are now in, so we should be able to go to every floor. Next floor, yep, yeah, that one's fine. Next floor, yep, yeah, that one's fine. And then the very last one we can get to, I think, is that one yeah perfect and we are going to need buttons to be able to call it from the other floors as well and doors as well because if we send that up obviously if this was a higher up floor we're just going to be able to fall down the shaft and i don't really have room here to put big old piston doors on that open and close like we've got at the other building so i'm hoping we can maybe do something a little bit with redstone and these doors to make these automatically open when they get a signal i have no idea if that's possible but you can open and close them with redstone and these redstone contacts do actually emit a signal when they're powered when the elevator 
generators there, so I think we can do it. If I was to put a redstone link on there, and because this is a library, we'll put book and red die on there, I guess. And then we'd need a redstone link somewhere near these doors. Let's just shove it on there for now in inverted mode with a book and some red die, and let's see what happens. So if I hop in the elevator here on level one and go down to the ground floor, these doors open, those ones were already open. Hmm. Let's try that again. Let's go up to the next floor again and then come down and hopefully both sets of doors will open. They did, but will they close up again when it goes away? They do. Oh, that's wonderful. But now we need a way of calling it down. So I'm going to craft a bunch of framed buttons and I'm going to throw one of those on there and then I'm going to texture it with these light blocks so that they do get off a little, little bit of light, but they also look a little bit like elevator call buttons. And then we need to send a redstone signal with that and not interfere with the doors either. So maybe that's not the best place for it. And if we had it there instead, and then we'll have our redstone link on the back of that. I guess this one can have orange dye. Then we need to come back to this redstone contact, put another redstone link on there, put that in receive mode with book and orange dye. And now we should be able to call the elevator by pressing that button. We can, that comes down. Let's send it away again and make sure everything's going to work. The doors close, call the lift. It's going to come down and yeah, there we go. That's great. And now that system is in place on every single floor except one. And that is the fourth floor because the fourth floor really doesn't have much room. I'm going to have to destroy the corner of this library floor, sadly, in order to make all of that fit, but eh, it could be worse. And hopefully that's all of that in place on the fourth floor as well now. Yep, the doors have just opened. We've got a call button. Let's just send it off to a different floor and call it back down. And there we go. That's working as well. So we've just got to blend this into this room a little bit, which really shouldn't be too difficult. Let's stick a couple of books on there as if it was supposed to be like that. There we go. And now we've got access to our elevator. We can reach the button to turn it on. Now we just need to disguise the holes where the buttons are with a little bit of trim like that. So there's still a little bit of work to do on the other floors, disguising the buttons and things like that. But we'll worry about that later as we start actually working on these floors because it's about time we actually did some of the stuff I've been banging on about doing for days, weeks, months. And there's not been months. Okay, weeks. So whereabouts in this library are we going to be doing this hyper-enchanting? And where am I going to be putting all the villagers? Because I do want villagers in here, and as much as I originally planned to have them all free roaming around here, I don't think that's a good idea with all of these edges and lips and things like that, because no doubt they'll end up falling off and dying. And the other problem with having villagers free roaming around here is that if I'm looking for a particular villager that I need, well, it could be anywhere, especially with all of these doors available to it, it could literally wander off anywhere in the building. So we're going to be keeping those somewhere out of the way where they're going to be a little bit more accessible. Now there's two ways we can do hyper enchanting. We can either use blaze burners, configured something like this with hyper XP instead of liquid XP, or we could use a printer. Although printers are really for duplicating enchanted books and naming things. So I think both would probably be useful. So I've got one section I can just throw my items on and the blaze burners can just enchant them as I need them. And then another section with a printer where I can just make a whole bunch of hyper enchanted books. So I think first things first, we need to actually make Make some hyper experience and I think this little section of hallway is probably a good place to do that and as we've discovered before hyper experience is glowing lapis and liquid experience and that means we need liquid experience in here which means we need to go back to the hotel just across here and we need to figure out how we're going to get all of those nuggets of XP from over here to over there and I could fully automate that but there's no point instead I'm just going to grab this box replace it with a new one with the upgrade on there and a couple of key things and then just one of those in there to store it so I know what's in there and I'm just going to take this and put it in the library. And this might seem like a pretty lazy way of doing things, but it's not lazy, it's just sensible. Because this whole hyper-enchanting system is not something that we can fully automate, and it's not something that's going to be running all the time. And the reason for that is because of how it all works. You see, if I leave this whole setup running, the blazes are just going to eat through all of the hyper-experience, even when they're not using it, because that's what blazes do. So we're only going to be using it when we actually want to enchant something. Now, obviously, there's a whole bunch of different enchantments that I want to be able to put on my tools and armor and things. So I'm thinking of splitting up this level into different rooms down here and having a corridor that goes all the way around the outside into our main room and then doorways into each of these individual rooms. And that way we can have different rooms designated to different enchantments, which might not be the most efficient way to lay this thing out, but I think it will be more interesting. And I think I've come up with a system for each one of the rooms now. So we've got hyper experience is going to be produced in here. In this room, we're going to get enchantments 
encampments for unbreaking and efficiency. In this one, we're going to get looting and fortune. In this one, we're going to get sharpness and smite, feather falling and depth strider, aqua affinity and respiration, soul speed and swift sneak, protection, and probably the other protections as well, like fire protection and blast protection, sweeping edge in this one, and then finally, we're going to have power and punch for my bow. And that's pretty much all the ones we need. And if you're wondering why I left out things like mending and whatnot, well, these hyper enchants obviously only work for enchantments that have levels and mending well it's just mending and now we've got power in every single room i'm just going to tidy this up again with a little bit more casing so to create our hyper experience we're going to need liquid experience lapis and glow ink sacks and that means we need a blaze burner that's superheated so we're going to need to bring our diesel up here actually i don't need to use diesel if this is only going to be powered every now and then i.e not all of the time it might actually be worthwhile using some of these blaze cakes scenes i've got a hundred thousand of them now that seems like a good idea to me all right first block i'm gonna need is a disenchanter and for that i need some sandpaper which i've got so let's make ourselves one of those and i guess we could probably throw that in here around about this point there and what we'll have is these nuggets of experience basically just shoved across onto that and that can all go into a tank and then we can put the pump there we can power that from the side which we can bring power from there and then we can put a reasonable sized tank there i don't think this needs to be too massive so then we're going to need a blaze burner with a mixing bowl on top of that with a mixer stuck in it and we're going to need to pump xp into that and out of that we're going to be pumping our hyper experience which can go into this tank here so then i just need to get the glow squid and the lapis in there as well and the blaze cakes in there see i want to be able to see what's in these boxes while they've got a funnel on the front so i'll actually shift those to the side there and then we can have the depots for those there and then we just need the blaze cakes to go in somehow as well so you're going to take from there and there and you're going to put it in there and you can probably sit up there i guess although if i offset you a little bit we can have another one taking from the blaze cakes wherever that's going to be going there and that's nice and symmetrical but i guess i could actually put them there with that depot in the middle there then that arm's going to take from there put in there and go up there there we go right now we just need power to everything so we're going to need a cog there and a cog there and probably one up there as well throw a little bit of chain drive down the side here so that we can power that pump that's all nicely hidden and then i just need to bring the power down from up here so if i just pop one of those in there and one of those in there with the bit of that there there we go everything's powered and that is going in there and it's going in there oh it's going yeah oh no i totally forgot i gotta i need a smart pipe on there okay send that back that way please oh if i need a smart pipe i'm gonna have to move that all out one block that's fine so that's gonna go on there and then we'll have our tank there which is no longer symmetrical everything's ruined it's fine however what if we did that instead well the only downside to that is when i put the funnels on i can no longer see what's in the box now i can look at it with the jade thing at the top and see what's in there so i guess that's fine but i kind of like being able to walk in and actually see the only way i could really do that would be to spin that one around there and that one around there so you're going to take from there and there and you're putting it in there you're going to take from there and you're going to put it in there but we want you off and honorable right we need to be able to power this room we need to be able to turn things off and on again so i want a redstone link on here she's going to go to a clutch over there we'll put a lever next to it so we can power it all off and on and what i really need now is an actual bottle of hyper experience so i can use it for my filters and i can use it for my smart filter here but i can't make that until i can make that so i guess we need to make some so let's spin that one round let it just run for a second see if it actually makes it it is doing oh it, it, it's just very slow at making it okay that's fine but if i take a glass bottle now can i take some it lets me click on it but i think i just put it no it's happening stop not letting me do anything i guess we're just gonna have to pump it out and hope for the best let's hope the right one comes through there it is hyper experience and hopefully i can grab that out of there with a spout chuck a glass bottle on there and go to crank and hopefully we can get some of that into that glass bottle wow look we have bottles of hyper enchanting there we go now i can use that on my little item filter there hyper xp nice i've got a hyper experience set up peeps oh it vanished a minute ago so can i drink it oops 
Wow. <laughs> wow, what do I get? Glowing. I'm positively glowing, peeps. I didn't mean to do that, but I, I kind of like it. Right, we don't want that anymore. We don't need that. We just want to store it inside actual here. So I guess we better start producing. Go, make me lots of hyper XP. We're going to do that. I stick in a funnel on there. And now that's just going to all go into this tank, generate us a whole bunch of XP. Oh, this is wonderful. I can't believe I actually did it. We're actually hyper enchanting. Oh, I get night vision as well. It doesn't seem like you get much for your money. In fact, you get for every 100 millibuckets of experience, you only actually get 10 liquid hyper experience. So this is very expensive and that's why we need to use it so sparingly and we can't just have this running constantly. Let's switch that out for a brass funnel instead and just let that go a whole bunch quicker. There we go. All of the XP nuggets have gone and this system has completely finished. So how many buckets of hyper experience did we get from all of that? Not many. Seven and a quarter, which really isn't a lot. And that makes me worried about the next stage of this. See, what I'm supposed to do is then put pipes on this and pump them into all of these different rooms so that we can power all of the different enchanters and things. But the problem is, if we've only got seven buckets and I'm pumping this around this entire floor, pretty much all of that's probably just going to disappear in the pipes and not actually be able to to get used and considering that took 26,000 nuggets of xp which is about three or four days with the afk at the mob farm i'm not going to be getting any more anytime soon so i need to do some tests and that means i need an enchanting guide and it means i need a blaze burner and let's just stick it down in here for now and with this enchanting guide i can put in an enchanted book and that basically sets what that is and then i believe i can give that to the blaze burner there we go and now the blaze has got a new job but i want to know can i just click it with these instead of pumping it in oh i guess not no i can't so we are gonna have to pump it in oh and that's really concerning consumes 220 millibuckets of experience you see and it's got two buckets with a capacity for fluid so if i pump fluid into that it's already going to take two of our buckets with of our seven and i was planning on having two of these in every one of these nine rooms and that's 18 altogether so that's 36 buckets with would need just to fill them up in the first place this is going to be a problem so realistically then what i really want to do is just just have it on and offable what we actually pump into each one okay what about if i had a disenchanter for instance with the pump coming off that let's just move you a second sit that blaze burner on that pipe there give him back his book and then what if i just threw one of those oh i've just stood on it and used my own xp i didn't mean to do that that's a good point i can get rid of all of my xp into this system as well and fill up a little bit more in there and if i turn the system back on that should all hopefully drain into there it's not going to give us oh it's hardly give us any at all but that's fine so my plan if i throw that down on there it won't disenchant that so i can't even get them back out of the bottles oh and you can't even make a bucket of hyper enchanting so i can't even like get the liquid out in a different format so the only way i can do this is to pump it in from in here oh my goodness me i don't think i dare <laughs> so i guess i should go into my creative test world and figure out exactly how painful this is is going to be so first things first let's give ourselves a little tank's worth of xp and i'm going to fill this tank up with about the same as what we've got in our actual survival world and there we go seven buckets worth that's about the same as what we've got and with a pump and some pipes across there we can add ourselves on a few different blaze burners and let's just teach them all how to read they can all have the same book it doesn't matter for now and now if i power this system and just turn the speed up a bit how much is this going to actually burn through see they're all filling up with exactly two buckets worth which is not ideal because now we've got none left in there at all and these things are not even fully full now they do store it it doesn't look like they're actually burning through it which is good the amount of experience in each one is not going down so that's good i guess so let's just set up a couple of drains in front of this one and i guess we'll have one out the back there as well throw a sword on and how how quickly does it use that and there we go. So it didn't use very much at all, really. So at least it's not just burning through it for no particular reason as it sat there. But if I'm going to have 18 of these blaze burners, I am going to need 36 buckets worth of hyper experience. Because I don't really see how we can limit how much each one of these is going to get unless we actually just manually power the pumps ourselves so that we only get a small amount in there, which might be the best way of doing this. Rather than having this all fully powered, we can have it all manual and that way we can only 
only fill these up with a little bit of experience for the enchantments we need. If that's the case, how are we going to lay this out? Well, I guess first of all, we're going to need pipes with a piper experience actually in here. So let's grab some pipe, put it there and a pump there facing in that direction and dig our way through into our first room with the pipe going under there. And in fact, you know what? I'm not even going to put a pump on at this point. I'm just going to have that pipe connected. And if we dog leg it round under the wall here, we can have it coming along the back of the room here. So bringing the pipe across the back of the room, it can then go into the next room as we need it to. And then I'm going to try and make this as symmetrical as possible. Digging a couple of holes in the floor there like that with a bit of pipe and then a pump and then another pipe and a bit of pipe and a pump and another pipe. Stick a blaze burner there and a blaze burner there. And then if we put a little cog wheel at the back there and I guess one there with our little hand cranks on like that. Other thing we've got to do is actually be able to get the items on there. And I think the way we can do that is probably with just a couple of item drains and then we can could literally just throw that across like that and that will sit on top of the blaze until it's finished enchanting but then it's just going to bounce off the bat which i don't really want so i think i'm going to spend a few minutes playing with this and come back to you once i've got an idea okay a couple of minutes later and this is basically what i've come up with so this blaze is going to have this unbreaking three enchanted thing and this blaze is going to have this efficiency five enchanted thing and i'm now hoping that if i just pump that a little bit we should hopefully get a little bit of that hyper experience coming through there we go into there and he's only got a little bit in there which is good so if i now go back through into here we've still got just over seven buckets worth so yeah that's gonna work so this should be efficiency six i've no idea if i can put that onto an existing tool or not or if i need a new one but the idea here is that i just throw that over there it's gonna go on top of there he's gonna look after that for a second and hopefully when he's finished with it 355 millibulls of uh, experience is gonna cost him and i don't think he's got that much by the looks of things we'll see is it just gonna stick there forever let's give him a bit more and that's not actually doing anything at all oh this is so such a not a good way of doing things i can't seem to give him any more can i get my tool back i can okay now can i give you some more i really need like a i could probably do this with like a gearbox i had a gearbox that i just like pressed the button and it filled it up with a certain amount of experience that'd be perfect perhaps we could do it with a clutch so our clutch will have to go at that point there and then i guess we can put a vertical gearbox in there but we want that inverted and i'm hoping if i put a couple of those there and one of those there that's going to invert it and stop that from turning and then if i get myself a nice shiny button and it's definitely going to be shiny because i'm going to use one of those then when i press that that should spin a bit and hopefully that'll be enough to give us some xp but i doubt it i don't think it's spinning for long enough there's only one way to find out how many button times do i have to push it in order to get him some experience Oh, it needs to be pumped for long enough to actually suck it all the way through because as soon as it stops pumping it stops coming through so we need this to go for a lot longer and i can do something like that with one of these pulse extenders if i give that a pulse that should then last for 10 seconds and i can change that amount of time to however long i want so that might work although it'd be a bit of trial and error because the further we get away from our actual tank of xp the longer the pulse is going to be needed to actually fill each one up this is going to be a nightmare <laughs> there we go okay that works so so in that case, our wall would be at this point here. Pop our pump back down and our cog wheel. Put our pipe back in and our blaze burner. Give him his book back. And now I've got to see, is that going to be long enough to actually pump anything through here? Oh, here it comes. Probably going to be too long. Yep, he's got over a bucket's worth. Oh dear, he's got two buckets worth. Yeah, 10 seconds was way too long, as it turns out. Probably only wanted to be a couple of seconds. So now this one's used up a whole two buckets worth and there's no way I can get that back inside of this system, which now only has... Oh, jeez. This is a nice... Nightmare. I need so much more XP. But at least now I should be able to throw on my pickaxe. And that's just, it's just gone straight over the back. Now I, I can't get it out again. <laughs> it's clear to me that this entire process is going to take a whole bunch longer and a lot more XP than I thought. So I think realistically at this point, what I need to do between the episodes is do a whole bunch more AFK at the mob farm to get a whole bunch more XP, get a whole bunch more of the hyper experience in here. And that way, when we come back in next time, I'm not going to be panicking quite so much about how to get all of this sorted out and i might actually have a better system for doing it as much as i did say we'll definitely be doing hyper enchanting at the beginning of this video chances are we're probably not unless we can give this guy a little bit more now he's got enough now can i get my can i get efficiency six on my pickaxe here we go we're hyper enchanting this is very exciting there we go we did it i don't know where it went but it, it, it did it oh it's stuck down there now yeah we definitely need a better system for this 
But there we go. I now have efficiency six on my pickaxe. That's amazing. Look how quick I can smash through this floor. It's made the, such a difference. Try it on my shovel. Okay, efficiency six shovel. How much difference does it make? Uh, uh, it, it is better. Definitely better. Hey, oh, jeez. You guys supposed to be at the mob farm, not over here. Netherite. I need it. I've only got one. And I need it to create myself a whole bunch more armor and tools because in the last episode, I created this system that turns experience into hyper experience using lapis and glow squid and blaze cakes and nuggets of XP. But if you watched the last episode, you'll know I only had seven buckets worth of hyper experience, which was nowhere near enough for what I needed. And now I've got over 25 buckets of it and I've still got a little bit of XP left going through what i don't have though is a great deal of lapis and even though i spent a few minutes this morning using my shiny fortune 4 pickaxe to grab a whole bunch of lapis from in my mine i've pretty much burnt through all of that as well creating just this i actually need 40 buckets because i've spent a little bit of time sorting out these rooms where we're going to have our hyper enchanting each one of the rooms has four blaze enchanters and they will all have a different enchantment they'll be able to hyper enchant but once i start pumping in that hyper x be, it's going to send two buckets with to each one of these and whilst i could use valves and things like that to limit how much each one gets i don't want to i want each one to have the full two buckets worth as you can see here none of these ones have actually got enchanted books they've just got books and that's because i don't have these enchantments yet so i need to do a little work with my villagers to get all of the books that i need so how am i gonna get a whole bunch more lapis without spending hours and hours mining well it just so happens with my fancy mod that i made if i make mix nether quartz and blue dye on a superheated basin it'll give me one piece of lapis which seems a bit expensive until you realize i've got 23,000 quartz here and i believe if i come back to hill valley there should be a whole but yeah 2.6 million of it so i'm not short of that one thing i am short of though is blue dye i've got 990 of it which means i'll only be able to make 990 lapis because i don't have a blue dye farm and making one of those means corn flowers and things like that but I've got another idea. You see, another way of getting blue dye is to crush lapis. And when you crush lapis, you get two blue dye back and 10% chance of another one. So if I was to create a system that made lapis and then crushed it to get more blue dye and then made lapis again, it'll cost me twice as much quartz, but it will generate me a bunch of lapis and blue dye, which would be nice. So that just leaves me with the problem of experience nuggets. And whilst my mob farm has been working hard, generating me a whole bunch of this stuff, it's it's all pretty much been used actually making that little bit of hyper experience we've got and i've only got 2000 of them left so how am i going to make those well again coming to our recipes i can get nuggets of experience from crushing all sorts of different things including quartz which will give me a 30 percent chance of a nuggets of experience and i've got millions of quartz so i should be able to get a whole bunch of nuggets doing that but none of that explains how i'm going to farm netherite well we'll get to that later for now i need to come back to the library and think about where i'm going to be building this system to generate as lapis and more nuggets of xp and fortunately because of the way that i've arranged all of these blaze burner or blaze enchanter rooms i've actually got a whole bunch of rooms left at the end of this corridor that i'm no longer going to be using so i think a nice big room like this could be a good place to start now bringing my quartz and my blue dye over here will be easy enough but i've got to get a superheated blaze burner so hopping myself down to the ground floor and into our little power station area you can already see we've got some superheated heated blaze burners down here running off this tank of diesel which is absolutely full to the brim so i just need to pump a bit of that upstairs and bringing the lava upstairs really shouldn't be a big problem because we're only going to the first floor so there we go we've now got that just here so let's make ourselves a little temporary holding tank just here about that sort of size should do and then just one of those there there we go we're now powering that pump now i want to get as much of this quartz as absolutely possible into a storage drawer and it could take a long time transferring 2.6 million of it so so we're going to need some smart shoots and some draw controller slaves and of course a spruce draw with a couple of upgrades on it there we go that's going in nice and quickly 
And while these hoppers drain out and that continues to fill up, I'm going to go and do a little bit of trading with my villagers to get the enchanted books that I'm missing. And I haven't got all of them, but I should be able to get a few. Well, there's power four. We should be able to make respiration three from a couple of respiration twos. Feather falling four. Fire protection one. I suppose I could buy a bunch of those and make fire protection four. And that just leaves sweeping edge. Right, the next thing I'm going to do is come up to my old XP tank, grab myself a whole bunch of levels and get these books combined. So respiration two twice gives us respiration three. So two more sweeping edge ones and then two sweeping edge twos gives us a sweeping edge three. Two fire protection twos gives us fire protection three. Two more fire protection ones gives us another fire protection two. Two more fire protection ones gives us another fire protection two. Those two together gives us another fire protection three. So if I put those together, I get fire protection four. And that should now mean that we've got plenty of quartz to be getting on with as well. Yep, yeah, over 130,000. That should be more than enough. <laughs> we've still got 2.5 million left. So back in our new room then, let's just throw that down for a second. Let's grab as much blue dye as we can take, throw that in another storage drawer. And now I'm going to go and train a few of my enchanters with these enchanted books we've got. So you're going to give us sweeping edge four, give you feather falling. There we go. You've got fire protection. And now we've got a guy with power five, which will give us power six. Right, lapis. Let's go in the lapis production room and figure out how we're going to do this. And we're going to need a couple of whisks and we're going to need some crushing. Oh, we've ne I have never got any crushing wheels. Back to Hill Valley. You should make the stuff that you need closer. I know I should, but I don't. And there's one set of crushing wheels. Let's create a few more sets of these just so that I don't have to come back here anytime soon. And this should be my last set. And this is going to give us 32 crushing wheels altogether, which should be plenty to be getting on with. Here we go. And done. Blaze burner there. Mixer, mixer. And then we just need a depot there and a depot there. And then we can tell this to pick up from there and there and shove it in there. Bring that out to there with a bit of belt on there like that. And stick a couple of crushing wheels on around about that point there something a little bit like that and then we just need that to go into this one so we're going to need another blaze burner with another mixing bowl on it i've not got very good access around here now have i okay moving this all around slightly then i've now got my quartz over there and my blue dye there and that's because i need quartz and blue dye to go into that mixing bowl there and i also need quartz to go into this mixing bowl here so we'll have a couple of arms to do that and that should be this setup pretty much complete before i do anything else i'm gonna have to put down a rolling mill and throw in a couple of those because I need a couple of straws and then I can give these blaze burners both the straw each to attach them to the pipe and now they're going to be super heated. And I think what we'll do is just have another belt going this way, put an upgrade in that, throw a bit of lapis in so we know what it is. And of course, that's going to need a funnel. And this is also going to need a funnel, just like that. And our blue dye as well is going to need a funnel. Now, we've got to think about this a little bit more logically. Once that's run out, we're not going to be producing lapis there anymore, which means we're not going to be crushing it to make more blue dye. So once this lapis is generated here, we actually need to be able to take it back ground again and put it through the crushers but we also want to store a certain amount of it as well i'm actually going to double up this belt at this point here and then i'm going to put a couple of brass tunnels on there and that'll send some of it into our basin so we'll have a draw controller slave on there that's going to have a funnel in it to send half of the blue dye back around here and that's going to go back into there and with all of those there we'll be able to see what's going on a little bit better and then we can use the draw controller slaves with brass funnels on and then we'll just set those to exactly exactly one so we're not getting a whole stack through at a time and now we just need to get power to all of this gearbox there the vertical gearbox there bit of chain drive on there and a bit of chain drive there i need to throw a shaft in there to get those going and they're now going in the right direction so that's good that's also powered our pump so we're now super heated so we just need to power the mechanical arms one of those there with a cog on there like that that's all of the arms now powered and now we should be in business so there we go we now have a fancy little system generating us lapis and i guess blue dye as well because that's going to keep ticking up too the only thing it's going to use is the nether quartz but we've got millions of it and now that all that's in place we can work on our experience nuggets so let's come out of this room and i guess we'll hop into this room and this can be where we crush quartz well you've used the quartz over there yep i'm gonna need another big old box of quartz to crush it Okay, 360,000 should do it. And with a 30% chance of getting nuggets out of there, we should get them um, probably around about 100,000 from that. And that'll be more than enough to get us those last few buckets of XP.
So I think what I'm going to do is move this box for a minute out of the way. Throw a couple of these on the wall there like that. And then let's say have four rows of crushing wheels. That should be plenty, I think. And we'll want a belt going underneath those. And above these, we're going to have some more of these draw controller slaves, just like that. Attached to some trim coming down the back here. And we'll bring that over to this corner here. We'll stick a draw controller next to it. And now we want a whole bunch of smart shoots again. Let's just sneak down the back here. Bring this draw trim around here like this, all the way to the front of our belt. And let's just remove those for a second. Oh, geez, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, yeah, see, this that's what I didn't want to happen. So power then. We're going to have a gearbox there. We'll have a bit of change drive there and a gearbox there and that should power these okay i need to craft myself another speed controller and probably stick that somewhere i guess we can shove it on there for now that'll do and then with a bit of chain drive i can connect that to that and hopefully we can get these crushing wheels oh they are already going in the right direction that's good we just need to power the belt now and then another one across there and that's going in the right direction that's good everything's going in the right direction let's pop ourselves the draw controller slave there let's stick ourselves another spruce draw there with some Ed rules upgrades in it and then we just want a funnel going into that so all we need to do now is reconnect our storage draw slaves at the top and hopefully now this is going to start generators and a whole bunch of x yeah there it goes this is going to be full in no time look at that we've already got two thousand all i did was put some lights on jeez we now need to get all of those from both of these rooms this way through this wall here because this is where our production facility is and we'll just bring those across here like this along the floor there and then we'll just go straight across the floor into that room and then if we really don't like the decoration we can always cover this up with a few of these floorboards a little bit like that do the same thing here at these doors and then here we could probably have some decoration on the wall to cover that up so let's dig out the floor a bit more here and we'll take that into this room and connect with these storage drawers here and now we don't need that storage drawer controller. We also don't need this quartz here anymore. And we can tidy that up a little bit like that. So let's just take the quartz out of that one and put it straight into that one. We might as well have all of the quartz in here. And now we need to connect all of these storage drawers to this system in here. And I'm going to put it in here because I want everything controlled from this room. And that should now pick up everything. Perfect. Okay, good news. We're actually generating more XP than we're able to use. The only reason it's going out of there faster than it's going in is because it's filling up this tank. But this tank is actually filling up faster than we're creating the hyper experience we've now got lapis coming in faster than we can use that as well which is great we've still got tons of glow squid ink and i've still got thousands of that at the glow squid farm so that's not running out and our blaze cakes aren't running out either and now we're up to 33 buckets worth and that means i can actually swap this pipe out here for a pump and i can steal a little bit of power from over here and that's going to send that all into our blaze burners we should see yeah they've all gone blue that's good news these have all gone blue that's good news and now these are all blue as well this is good news the only downside to this is the ones that i haven't actually given books to like this one are now full of hyper experience and if i take its book off him i think it's just going to lose that hyper experience but i could always pump it back out if i need to and see i got a whole bunch of comments telling me that if i actually spin the pump around the other way it'll suck it back out of those and send it back into here which it looks like it's doing so that's fantastic as well so so that means other than a few enchanted books that were missing we have done everything we needed to do to get our hyper enchanting setup 100 complete and the only books were missing are projectile protection blast protection depth strider sharpness smite and punch and yes that's right we're on episode 40 and i still haven't got any depth strider but i haven't needed it really so we'll get those at some point but before i do that i want to ask you some questions and my first question is, what mods would you like to see me add to this world? Bear in mind, I'm using the Forge Mod Loader, and I can't change that. And we're on Minecraft 1.20.1, so any mods you suggest do need to actually be suitable for this version. And I might consider adding those for the next set of videos. The next question is, what buildings and farms would you like to see me build? Because, well, I need to build some more farms and things. Now, I've got a big old list, but I'd like to know what you guys think. So get down there in the comments and let me know 
what you think. And because this is episode 40, I'm going to be doing an updated world download for all of my patrons. And that'll be available at the end of this episode. And in order to get to the end of this episode, I've got a whole bunch of building to do. Because we're going to start producing netherite. That's right, we're not going to go to the nether for it. We don't need to go to the nether at all. We just need a road to go to another building. And this building will be a big one because it's going to have a whole netherite factory in it. And how are we going to produce netherite? Well, we're going to need a bunch of netherite scrap. And in order to get netherite scrap, you'd normally need ancient debris. But in my mod pack, we can make netherite dust. And then if you deploy nuggets of XP and lava and press them five times, you get a netherite scrap. And in order to get netherite dust, you just have to mix powdered obsidian with cinder flour on a superheated blaze burner. And we're going to produce every single one of those items, including the obsidian and the netherrack and the XP and everything like that, all in one building that's going to go right here. So we better get cracking. The foundation is now in place, and as you can see, I've extended the platform on both sides, so it's time to start building. And the first thing I need over here is fluid. I'm going to need a tank for lava, one for some diesel, and we're also going to need water over here. And why would I want a tank for water? Well, I think it'll just look nice. And of course, they all need link into our network, which means I need to get both trucks down here and offload in their fluids into these tanks. And there we go. As you can see, we've now got the tankers coming in, and they're not dropping anything off because we've got no power here yet. So we need to do that next. So now we've got all of our tanks in and a power station that's generating us 131,000 stress units using the superheated blaze burners running off our diesel. So we've got plenty of power. We've got all the fluids we need. We can start working on this. And this here is how we're going to make netherite just from cobblestone. It couldn't be simpler. It's quite complicated. We first of all need a cobble generator. Then we're going to use a recipe to turn that into magma blocks. There is already a recipe to turn lava buckets into magma blocks, but it's not a very good recipe because in my mind if you put lava in crushing wheels you're just going to get lava all over your crushing wheels so i added my own recipe we're going to put lava onto cobblestone press it twice and repeat that five times and there's a 95 percent chance we'll get magma block there's a five percent chance we're going to get cobblestone back so that's how we're going to get the magma then we're going to turn that into obsidian and the way we do that is just to wash the magma and once we've got that we can crush it into obsidian dust and then we need to go down this path here so we're going to take some more of the cobble we're going to wash it into gravel wash it again into sand and then haunt it into soul sand. Then we're going to wash that, which is going to give us gold and quartz, and then we're going to crush that quartz into XP. The gold nuggets we're going to press into gold ingots, and that's going to take us all the way down here. So we better go back over here and figure out what else we're doing with this. Some of this magma that we're getting, we're going to crush it and turn it into netherrack, and then we're going to crush that into cinder flour. Then that's going to be processed with the powdered obsidian into the netherite dust. Then we're going to process that into the netherite scrap, and then we can combine that with the gold into the netherite and we're gonna start with a cobblestone generator but not like you've ever seen before back over at hill valley we've got an immense cobblestone generator in here which is absolutely incredible in fact i think it's one of the most efficient cobblestone generator designs in the whole of create unless you count those glitchy ones that got patched out and we could build something like this but the problem with this is it's incredibly laggy every time the cobble forms and then gets broken the entire thing just slows down the server and we get big old lag spikes so I don't want that. And back over in the snowy area, we've got another cobblestone generator down here. And you need a lot of these to make a reasonable amount of cobble. And this one's also very laggy too, because every time the cobble forms and breaks again, it causes big old lag spikes. So I don't want that either. So how are we going to make a cobblestone generator that provides a reasonable amount of cobble that isn't laggy? Well, I've added a recipe for that too. All we got to do is get a mixer with some water and some lava, and that's going to generate us cobblestone, which will be very slow compared to the other designs. But this is a netherite farm. It's not supposed to be fast. I don't need millions of it. I just need a bit. So we'll start there. So having this set up somewhere near our lava and our water might be a good idea. And I think something like this with maybe four or five of these should do the trick. And we can basically pump in either lava or water from underneath and then the opposite into the sides. So with a little bit of jiggery pokery for that power, I've now got all of the lava and water coming into these basins. So we just need power for these. And I think we'll come across the back here like this. Drop a couple of shafts down there, bring a cog off there, throw a little gearbox on there and bring that across to there. And now we're producing cobblestone. Now we want a few item drains coming out of these. So all of the cobblestone comes out and goes all over the floor, but we don't want it going over the floor. We actually want it to go into these draw controller slaves. They just want a few funnels on the back like that. And then we can connect this up to a storage network, but I'm not 100% sure where this is going to go yet. And even at full speed, I don't think this is going to be fast enough. It's pretty slow. So 
let's have a bunch more of them. And the next one is going to be cobble into magma blocks. So for this, we're going to need a belt, a little bit like this. And we're going to need another belt in front of that, a little bit like that. We're going to need a spout just there and a couple of presses next to that. Now we're actually chewing through this lava faster than our truck can bring it over. So I've reduced this to just having five cobblestone generators. And now we've got lava over here as well. And I've just arranged this setup a little bit better. Add in a little bit of power and some more shaft. We can get this thing actually working so that if I was to throw a bit of cobblestone on here, the system should work. Now it's going to do this five times, which at the moment is very slow for one piece of cobblestone. But again, we've got a speed controller so we can turn that right up and get that going full speed. But again, we're out of lava because my van's just not coming fast enough. So after a little bit of faffing about, I've now got a pipeline all the way from our liquid storage building over there all the way to our lava so that we're constantly pumping in lava from an infinite source and now these are not running out and the good thing about this is I've now got two sets of them and the reason for that is because we're going to need to use it in two different ways so these are going into these storage drawers these are going into those storage drawers and both of those are completely separate and the reason I want them separate is because I don't want half of the process stealing all of the cobblestone and leaving the other one without any anyway back to the magma processing system we've now got two brass funnels on there one to take in the magma and this one is being controlled by a redstone link that will only allow cobblestone stone in there if there's less than one percent of cobblestone in this barrel here so that should work so now that we've got the cobblestone generators and the magma done and we're generating a reasonable amount of magma it's time to turn that into obsidian and crush it and i think we'll stick to this half of the building for doing that for the obsidian washing we're going to have four fans set up like this with a little bit of water in front of each of those i don't think it needs to be water sources but i'm going to do it for completion and we just need to take magma out of there and put obsidian in there and the way we're going to do that is with these funnels that are going to be extended all the way up to the vent blocks this one's going to have a magma block filter and this one's going to have an obsidian filter and with a couple of copy cut panels and a bit of glass we won't get blown all over the place so now this just needs connected to the storage drawers there it is it's going through so we can tick off cobble to magma block we can tick off wash magma to obsidian so now we just need to crush it into some obsidian powder for crushing the obsidian again because we're not using huge quantities we are only going to need one set of crushing wheels with the crushing wheel on there and one on there we'll bring these storage drawers along a little bit bring those up to there bring the drawers underneath this belt which we can actually shorten a little bit bring them up there this one of course is going to be obsidian but this one we're actually going to use an andesite funnel because there is a chance Chance we'll get our obsidian back when we crush it into powdered obsidian so we don't want to filter what's going back in there so what we need now on here is a bit of power connect that with a little bit of shaft and cover it up and now we've got power to that so that should be producing us some obsidian powder so let's throw that in there and now we're generating that too so that's the journey to our obsidian powder complete now we need to work on even more of this magma to create netherrack to crush it into cinder flour so a few minutes later and I've scooched a few things around a bit in order to optimize this layout. So we've still got these drawers here. Over this side now we've got some cobble generators ready for this side of processing and now we've just got four of them over here generating cobble for our obsidian and our nether rack. So I've moved the magma block processing thing next to that and then we've got a split tunnel system here which is going to take our magma blocks split them between both of those tunnels half of them are going to get washed into obsidian and the other half are going to get crushed and that should give us some netherrack. Then we've got these crushing wheels here, which take the obsidian and turn it into the obsidian powder. And now I just need a set of crushing wheels, which is going to take the netherrack from here, which should just be sat there. Yes, it is. Let's shove that in our drawers over there. And that's also going to generate as magma cream as well. And this magma cream, we can also turn into magma blocks. So we need a couple more machines over here. And what I'm trying to do is keep everything for these drawers on this side of the building and everything that's going to be in those drawers are going to be on that side of the building. So so there's the crushing wheels for our nether rack, which is going to give us cinder flour. Let's just give that a draw. And now I just need to squeeze in a tiny little press somewhere. And I think we'll just do that behind this. And there we go. We got a nice little press set up now as well. We just need a little bit more magma cream and we need to spin those round so they're actually going in the right directions. So there we go. Now that's going to produce us more magma blocks from the tiny little bit of magma cream we get, which we're not going to get many of because, well, we're not crushing that much magma. So this is going to be slow. For now, that is one half of this building complete now we've got to do the other half which is going to be cobblestone to gravel to sand to soul sand to quartz to experience how hard could it be
And in no time at all, I've got a whole bunch more machines set up that are doing half of the stuff that we need them to do. So we're crushing cobblestone into gravel, which is then getting crushed into sand. And that's also giving us clay and flint, which I don't really want. And then behind that, we've got this haunting machine, which is haunting the sand into soul sand. And then we've got a washing machine, which is washing the soul sand into quartz and gold. And all of that's working very nicely, and it's all coming through here. So we're generating a good amount of quartz, a good amount of gold, and way too much flint and gravel. I guess we can probably burn it. So checking the list, I have done everything off the XP side of things, apart from crushing the quartz to give us the XP. And I should add, press the gold into gold ingots here as well. So two more little lines, and we've got plenty of space to squeeze it all in. And there's our quartz crushing system, giving us XP already. Let's go find a slot for that. That can go there. And now we've got our gold processing system in place we're taking gold nuggets out of there they're going into there and they're getting pressed into ingots which means we're now generating a whole bunch of ingots in fact we're generating a whole bunch of everything we've got 653 cinder flour 2971 obsidian powder we've got 1532 nuggets of xp and 94 gold ingots which is pretty much everything we need for the next step of the plan so i've ticked off everything off the list apart from mixed powder and cinder flour on a superheated blaze burner to create nether dust and then we just need to take that nether dust and put some XP on it and some more lava. Press it a bit, a few times, and then we're going to get our nether egg scrap. And then we can combine that with the golden material. So there's three more things to do. Right, okay. I want to keep this area at the front of this open. So I think we'll have our little blaze burnery mixy thing just here. We'll pot a basin on top of him. Stick a mixer on top of that. And we'll stick a depot there and one there. With a couple of draw controller slaves there in front of those. We do need to get that diesel over over here so i guess i've got some digging ahead of me now and we get some pipe under the blaze burner run it along the floor down here and then come across all of this junk so i'm going to go under this rather than over it so i can keep it all nice and tidy above it i'm going to stick another depot there so that's going to be our input and i was kind of hoping this would naturally spit out that way but it looks like it wants to go in this direction can i spin it round oh i can okay well that's better then however in order to get the right items into the bowl we're going to need a mechanical arm i don't think i've got any so i'm going to have to craft one but that shouldn't be a problem and this arm needs to take from there and take from there and put it in there put that there and now we've got our mechanical arm powered as well so we need to grab some of this and a little bit of that put one of those on there and one of those on there spin them both round set them to one each and now I just need to connect these ones to these ones. And now this should get into action. It is doing. Is it going to create what we want? It is. We've got netherite dust. There we go. We're now generating a whole bunch of netherite dust. So we've done that bit, which is everything I had on my list. But the next thing to do is set up this processing line. Nuggets of XP, lava and a press. Okie dokie. We'll do that back here. And that's going to be very similar to this one. So this system's about ready, but this one's going to be quite tricky because it needs to be able to talk to both of our storage systems, which means I might have to join them together. The reason for that is it needs nuggets of XP as well as the netherite dust. And if it makes a mistake, it's going to create powdered obsidian or cinder flour instead of netherite scrap. But XP lives on this one and the other ones live on this one. So I need this XP joining to this top section here, but I want everything else joined to this one. Let's first of all, join these ones all the way over to this so now that should allow there we go those little ones to come out so what i think i'm going to do is just come down the back of this try not to interact with these storage drawers and then come underground around this bit here over to this line and that should now allow the nuggets of XP to come out. Yes, we're getting the nuggets of XP on there now. Excellent. So these are now processing. And once it turns into netherite scrap, it should go into that funnel there. Here we go. We're getting it. Netherite scrap is coming through now. So all we need to do is give that a storage draw and possibly sleep. Hey, guys. Now, I should probably put a roof on this building. No, thank you. Oh, I'm in bed. Leave me alone. Ha, gotcha. So we now have all of the ingredients. Shush. So we now have all of the ingredients we need to start making the good stuff. This is very exciting. So I just need one more machine. Will you shut up? You're all dead. How are you still making noises? And all we need is a mixer and some of these. Oh, I bet I can squeeze that in right here. Depot, depot, depot. Block, mixer, basin. You know what I mean. Mixer. 
Spin that round. Storage drawers, storage drawers. Storage drawers, storage drawers. Controller, controller, controller. Power, power, power. Tidy, 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 tidy. Block, block, block. Mechanical arm. Take from there, take from there. Put in there, set up there. Funnel in. Netherite scrap on there. Gold on there. Exactly four at a time. Set that to exactly four. And the items are coming out. But there's a problem here. We shouldn't be able to get gold and ancient debris on the same thing so i must have connected these networks somewhere which isn't necessarily a problem it just means we've got 10,000 cobble in there now and not in there so all that hard work i went to to keep these two things separated and have joined together the other slightly concerning thing is that this has got everything it needs to make what it needs to make but it ain't putting the ancient debris in there for some reason ah this needs to be on forced round robin that's why now let's throw that back in there and throw that back in there and this should start mixing together some netherite which it doesn't appear to be doing Oh, it does. It's done it. There, we've got one. <gasps> Let's put it in the drawers. And now we're generating netherite. We've got four, five, six, seven of them. Oh, this is wonderful. Now, like I said before, we're not going to end up with millions of these things. So I can't see myself making a beacon out of them anytime soon. But this is all working rather splendidly. And what a crazy little factory it is. If only it had a building to live inside of. Wouldn't that be nice? And what would also be nice would be to get rid of all of this clay and flint because i've got way too much play in here already and i've got 3.2 million flint and i don't even need flint and then we can put that on there with that filter on it and then we can send all of that nasty horrible stuff into the flames but we do have 26 netherite ingots now in that case it must definitely be building time And here it is, the Inferno. 100% complete externally and pretty much done on the inside too. <laughs> oh, jeez, there's a lot of mobs. I might wait till morning to show you the rest of it, but I kind of want to show you it in the dark because this entire place has been designed to be dark and dingy, a little bit like the Nether. As you can see around here, we've got some dead trees using various wood. Will you stop it? Okay, imagine it's nighttime and dark. And this place is all sort of in shadow, apart from these bright lights around the outside that say Inferno. See, I actually wanted it to say Netherite, but the wall wasn't long enough to get that in there, so I decided to add Inferno instead. Sticking with the outside, we've got all of this dirt variants and mangrove roots and leaves and things, and we've got the chipped dead leaves to just make it all look like the area around this thing is all dead and decayed. And that's why I've made these trees. This one is using the cypress wood, and these ones are using mangrove mangrove wood and I think they've come out pretty well. Now I only actually built two of these and then I used the schematic cannon to basically twist them around and clone them and move them around a bit and I think it works well and the idea of these was that they were growing over the fence into the building to sort of surround it and I've done that on both sides. It's not exactly the same, everything's slightly different and you can also see around here that I've used a few of the dead coral things, a few lava pools, some dead bushes just to make it all look, well, dead. So let's have a look at the building then. Starting with this fence. Obviously, we want a secure area here if we're keeping all of our netherites in this place, which is why we've got a big old fence with a chain link fence behind it and a whole bunch of barbed wire on the top, which actually does hurt quite a lot if you land on it. It's a bit like cobwebs, but really spiky. On the inside of this little area here, we've got some containers, we've got some gas bottles with some urns, we've got some of these blackstone lamps, some cages, some more gas bottles, a tank of lava and a tank of diesel, just to sort of fill that area up a little bit. So that takes us onto the building and what I wanted was a charred exterior and I wanted to use as many of the nethery blocks as possible but let's start on this side we've got blackstone deep slate and basalt bricks that go all the way around with a few lanterns on and then that comes up to this area here with our big sign and this sign is on both sides of the building and eventually I'll bring the trees around the back of this as well when I extend the platform in the future but for now the platform doesn't go any further than that 
Going up another layer, we've then got the obsidian and warped wood layer. I wanted to sort of incorporate the purple side of things for the obsidian powder that we're creating. And this floor's got lava behind the walls and nice orange windows. And I think with the roof on there, that doesn't look too bad. It's a little bit more fantasy than a lot of the things in this area, but I think it works. And then on to this side. Now, I actually wanted to make this out of nether bricks and netherrack bricks and things like that, but those were just too vibrant. They didn't blend very well, so I just decided to make it out of normal brick with this top on here and put some massive chimneys on there and we've also got these fans as well which we can actually see from inside the building too so now it's time to go inside and the reason it's called inferno is because inside is an inferno it's just covered in lava and magma blocks and we have these skinny little walkways to get around the whole area making the entire thing feel a little bit dangerous but then it should be dangerous because it's creating stuff that's you know shouldn't be created and we've got 515 of them now and then it leads to these stairs here which come up to this little catwalk and into a room that has nothing in it yet but it will in a minute and then there's some more stairs that lead up to another room here which is our obsidian room and i've got plans for this one too this room has got all of the lava visible from the inside as well and I think that kind of worked and it's also got access to in the top of this which there really isn't a great deal in here but we might be able to use this room in future for something as well although I've no idea what that would be so heading back out back into here and back down these stairs there's a couple of things I want to talk about what's going on with this factory and that is that we're creating an absolutely ridiculous amount of powdered obsidian and cinder flower and as you can see we've got a whole bunch of netherite scrap but we're not creating much gold in fact we're hardly creating any xp and any gold at all which means the actual process of turning that into that is really really slow so what i've done to try and alleviate this a little bit is i've slowed down this magma processing facility as much as possible and that should hopefully mean that more of the cobble can get sent over here to be turned into gravel and sand and then quartz then experience and gold but i've got another plan for experience too thanks to all of you guys in the comments you see it turns out you can haunt stone into infested stone and then when you place that and break it with a drill the silverfish pop out and then you can crush those and turn them into nookies of xp and because this episode has already gone on way too long i'm just gonna cut to it being done this isn't my world this is my creative test world and i have built a silverfish xp farm and how it works is we've got a cobble gen here that's getting blasted into stone that's getting haunted into infested stone it's going in here it's coming up there it's getting deployed there it's getting broken by that drill the silverfish fall out they go through the crushing wheels and very very occasionally they will drop a nugget of xp but really not very often i've got 22 in here and this has been running for about five minutes now i could make this entire thing a whole bunch bigger have more cobble being generated and processed then deployed and broken but to be honest with you the size of that and all of the resources it would cost in terms of crushing wheels and all that sort of stuff i just don't think it would be worth it because you really don't get very much at all so i think we'll leave this room of requirement to require something else and the one that i've got plans for upstairs i'm just not going to have time to do today because that's going to be a big project that involves going through the nether roof would you believe so tune in for the next episode to check that one out but now what i'm going to do is grab a bunch of this netherite head over to the library press the elevator button and wait for the elevator take the elevator upstairs and then i'm going to grab myself a smithing table a bunch of smithing templates and some diamonds i only got 28 that really i must have more diamonds than that i've got what i've only got 28 diamonds oh geez well i'm not going to be able to make as many of these as i thought and here we go we've got seven of them which means i've got one for spares seven diamonds left and now we're going to pump all of this hyper experience into all of my enchanting things let's turn it on and send it through that should go down pretty quickly there we go and now all of these should be nice and blue excellent so i think first of all we want unbreaking four on everything so let's click our pickaxe on there and now my axe and now my shovel and my helmet and my chest plate and my trousers and my boots and now i'm going to add a bit of protection five to everything get an upgrade on feather falling and respiration and swift sneak and now i'm going to enchant my sword as well now i've got no smite book and i've got no depth strider book i may have accidentally broke a pipe and given myself a whole bunch of levels and i've been studying here for 10 minutes already and they're still going into the disenchanter but good news it's given us a lot of xp so now that i've got some tools and equipment with ridiculous enchantments on them let's make them even better 
And there we go. I am now 100% fully netherited. But I hate the colour of it. I have got some trims though. I've even got the silence trim. But I've got no more diamonds. 